And where we start is a lecture hall. As we look around, this is a packed building currently. There are academics from all over the rings here. Uh, individuals from the Dark Ring, Primordial Ring. So they are wearing like long flowing robes. People from Zell, Arquette, Beacon, Rayoa, even some members from Kovarov. Not many, one or two. Their thick beards and, you know, uh, hide covered coats covering them and making them stand out in an otherwise very academic atmosphere. But here and now, a person begins to walk across the stage. It is the goddess Karania, mother of invention. And as she does, there is a polite applause that goes throughout this area. And Karania just kind of raises a hand. Thank you all. Thank you all. But as this event begins to wind to a closing, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker. Please, all of you, put your hands together for Professor Naylor Ramos. And the crowd begins to clap as the acclaimed professor of magic walks across the stage. It's a standing ovation that he gets as he makes his way to a central podium. You can see that he ruffles some papers and smiles out at the audience. My great thanks to you, your highness, for the invitation to this grand meeting. The greatest minds on this or any ring. I am truly honored. <clears throat> um, esteemed colleagues, today I invite you to delve with me into a realm where the arcane entwines with the inexorable forces of the cosmos. A realm where the very fabric of reality is stretched and torn by the unfathomable intricacies of the red spiral phenomena. Imagine, if you will, three sources of magic. The ancient primordial magic of change, the hungering arcana of low magic, and the elusive, ever-shifting enigma that is high magic. Each force, formidable in its own right, casts a web of influence that can bend and warp the essence of existence itself. Now consider low magic that pulses with all-consuming hunger to sustain its very existence. It reaches out with tendrils, seeking to ensnare and consume any energy present before it. Our low magic, if left to its own devices, would, at the moment, destroy and consume. It would utilize a phlogiston and emulsify any latent potential, for it would collapse in a vain effort to sustain its own power. Yet, it is not alone in this cosmic dance. Opposing it, the primordial source. It surges with raw power. The power of earth and sky and ever-moving potential and change. It lashes out in violent bursts, driven by an ancient will to preserve its dominion against the encroaching shadows of low magic. The primal force does not bow or break. It rages. Nay, it roars. <laughs> it is a tempest 
against the abyss. And then there is high magic, a celestial force that shifts and shimmers, forever eluding comprehension. All we can hope is that the will of greater beings pass us a small sliver of its possibility. Its motives are inscrutable, its movements unpredictable, a phantom threading through the chaos. Each of these forces, driven by their own inscrutable natures, exert an athoric pull on the world around us. Mm. They twist. They turn. Drawn together in a waltz that defies prediction and comprehension. The balance of power is ever-changing, each force influencing the others in ways that are beautiful as they are terrifying. This is the essence of a three-body problem. A ceaseless, chaotic struggle where no force remains dominant for long. The outcome is never certain, and the equilibrium, if it can be called that, is a fragile whisper in the wind. They will fight, wrestle, and grow while avoiding any certainty. It is chaos, limitless chaos that feeds itself. Imagine these forces let loose upon the tapestry of reality. The shadows claw and grasp, the elements rage and storm, and arcane disruptions distort the truth of our very nature, our very perception. Together they create a landscape where the ground beneath you could vanish, where the air could ignite, and where you could, well, you could have your very senses betray you, your very memory. This uncontrollable dance, this eternal struggle, leaves no room for certainty or safety. It is a reminder of the fragile balance upon which our world teeters. A balance that can be shattered at any moment by the unpredictable, the unknown, and the uncontrollable. As we peer into this abyss of magic and chaos, let us remember that we are but mere mortals standing on the precipice of forces that we scarcely comprehend. The red spiral phenomena is not just a theoretical puzzle. No, it is a chilling testament to the limits of our understanding and the boundless, terrifying potential of when magical sources combine. And yet, I hope to elucidate today some understanding of the inner workings of the Red Spiral. We will discuss origins, theoretical effects of such events, and perhaps ways to foil such an event if it should ever ignite. Now I'd like all of you to turn to page nine in your packet. We will start on diagram three. And it is in this moment that Paper stirs you, Isa, as you see Freyer flipping through a book in a small waiting room where you find yourself. Athena and Peter, can I please have you describe your characters? <clears throat> you want to go first? Um, her. Um, Freyer is a, like, skinnier a uh, more angular, angular young man uh, in his mid to late 20s. Um, he has this uh, mid-back length blue-hued hair uh, that's braided at the very end, so the top kind of drapes over his shoulders a little bit. Um, his skin is a little pale, uh, not as pale as his brother's, um, and he has this deep ocean blue eyes um and yeah that's and he has kind of noble garb garb that he wears and carries himself with a air of refinement Isa is 
quite pale. Um, it kind of looks like as he breathes, air condenses from his mouth. It's kind of foggy. He has gray eyes and blue hair pulled into a high ponytail that would probably end at his waist. Um, he looks bored, but interested in what's going on. Um, gotcha. He's, yeah. Both of you have been brought here as you've signed up to be a part of the mercenary party going to explore Cantor. At the moment, you've been here for probably 30 minutes alone. Isa and your brother seems to be getting a little bored. What you looking at? Oh, I honestly have just been reading the same chapter over and over again. Do you want to give it a go? Uh, yeah. What is, what are you looking at? Hmm. Okay. Um, I probably would actually be a, uh, book on just local wildlife since we're in an area we've never been in before that probably is what i'd be checking out mm -hmm. mm. they definitely have different animals here it's cool i suppose have you ever seen an animal that didn't have fur before like I don't, I don't even understand how it can live like that. Mm. It's pretty warm here. Yeah, are you doing okay? I know it's not what we're used to. The farther we get from home, it's different. I'm keeping myself cool. That's good. I'm glad we're inside now, at least. Yeah. Are you sure you want to do this, Isa? I mean, we don't know what we're going into. I know you want to, I know you really want to get into that school, but. Do you have doubts? Um, well, I'm more so worried than anything. We've I mean, never done something like this before. I think Nora has put us through worse. If you really want to leave, I, I wouldn't stop you, but... Isa, I would never leave you like that, you know that. I... Bill? I figure... It would have to be dangerous either way to get in with any mage above my level. No, that's that's true. That's true. Mm. And as you are speaking, the door to this chamber opens as two new figures begin to enter into the chamber. Jonah and Caleb, can you please describe your characters? You can go first, Caleb. Okay. Yeah. Um, you would see a human man uh, fairly short, like around 5'5". Five five. Um, kind of hard to pin down his age, but he seems to be in his early 20s or maybe even late teens. Um, He's got these blue eyes and kind of short, curly blonde hair, but you can see the roots are a bit darker. Um, he's dressed pretty simply and um, seems pretty enthusiastic as he's looking around. Then sort of hovering behind him, uh, you would see a figure dressed in greens and browns, a hood pulled over his head, uh, some shaggy brown hair air peeking out, and then right under the lip of the hood, covered in shadows, there are some brown eyes. Uh, very dull and staring back at all of you, one at a time. Uh, 
Uh, he still stand uh, up and offer his hand out. Uh, hello. I suppose uh, you're also here for the mercenary group? Uh, it's Wayne Cantor. Yes. Issa Nielsen. Um, prayer Nielsen. Good to meet you. I'm Piper Clearbrook. Hmm. And you are? Alden Zander. He does not shake your hand. I see. Well, it is nice to meet you, I suppose. What do you all hope to find here? Well, you know, I think same as I assume you guys are here for. We heard there was something weird going on in, in Cantor, and we figured we would give our best shot at helping. Uh, I yeah. guess I shouldn't assume, though. Is that what brings you here? I'm interested in the magic. I suppose helping people is a nice bonus. Ah, what kind of magic do you practice? Did you shake Issa's hand? Uh, Piper would have, yeah. It was freezing cold. Interesting. Fire. I think he would have. <laughs> I see. You seem to be full of surprises then. <sighs> I think he said smirks at that a bit. <laughs> uh, Fair will just roll their eyes. Um, no, uh, Pryomancy uh, for him, and Hydromancy for myself. You're both mages. Quite interesting. Yes, it uh, runs in the family. And at this point, you begin to hear a kind of click clack tapping sound as the door opens again and a fifth member enters this chamber. Ryan, can you describe your character? Uh, you would see walking through the door is a pure white Aarakocra with blue eyes, these priestly vestments. Those from the area might be able to recognize from Laurel and a quarter staff that he is currently walking with as he is kind of walking into the door. Ah, blessings of Ateus on all of you. Ateus? Is that what you said? Ateus, yes. Mm. Ah, you must not be from around here. You must be mercenaries from far afield. Yes, I'm... I hail from Brewa. That land. Yes. Well, fear not, ignorant one. Ateus, material god of the Laurel. I am Irk. Issa. Claire. Okay. I'm Piper. Good to meet you. Alden. Pleasure. Pleasure. And, uh, I'm sure our journey will have good omens, whether the gods is with us after all. But, uh, for whom do we wait for? You wait for me, but no longer. And you hear the voice of a Zell captain who begins to make his way into this chamber. A longer black hair wearing traditional armor of Zell. I am Captain Taizo Vigini. You call me Captain Vigini. 
I am overseeing this operation for the Empire of Zell. You have all chosen to be conscripted into this mission. So, let us begin. And he will go and he will kind of sit down at a table within this room. Please, sit down. Um, yeah. Eric will sit down. Mm -hmm. So fair. Yeah. Piper will take a seat. As I hope all of you know, there has been a disturbance in the town of Cantor. This town is highly prized for its horse breeding in the region, which is necessary for the economy of Ker Bospora. Now, the town and their people have been sending emissaries to the nearby towns, indicating of some arcane problem. There is a definitive five-mile exclusion zone around Cantor, where we have cleared out all civilians and are preventing travel within. We do not exactly know the nature of this phenomena. This is where all of you enter the picture. The goal of this expedition is to determine the nature of the disturbance within Cantor. Nothing more, nothing less. There are two legions building within Kerbospora, along with a series of saints. They will get involved if the situation necessitates. The base pay for each of you is 500 gold pieces. That is, if you discover the nature of the disturbance. However, if you are able to gather the resources and solve the disturbance within the region of Cantor, the government of Zell is prepared to give each member of your group 500 acres of land, 12,000 gold pieces, which shall be dispensed in 28 payments over 14 years, and medals of honor. So that is placed on the table. And you can see that to show he is serious, he puts a box on the table and opens it. And inside, each of you can see a glittering gold medal for each of you. Ooh. Any questions? What more do you know that's coming out of the area? The uh, magical disturbance seems to be affecting all in uh, types of circumstances. Um, we've had 10 individuals attempt to uh, divine what is occurring within the zone, uh, five who are practicers of the arcane, and five who are devotees of the gods. Seven died. Three were put down. Oh. Mm. Oh, and uh, you think we'll fare a better chance? You have signed up for this mission. And judging by all records, you are all Aether Souls. I would hope you would fare better. And in the instance you fail, the Empire of Zell is willing to send the legions towards Cantor and Urk. You know what this means. Uh, Laurel and Zell are already not on the best terms politically due to recent events. And this would likely ignite a war with Zell's legion straying far too close to Laurel's territory. I would not worry. We will discover the cause behind this disturbance. And, uh, should the gods will it, put an end to it. 
I see. Yes, of course. If the gods will it. And those practitioners, none of them were Aether Souls? Or? Eight of them were. And how many of those eight passed? Well, at the moment, I... I they all did. They are unfortunately all deceased, yes. Um, five died of, uh, of natural causes. Hmm. However, in better news, I am authorized by the Legion to provide each of you with a purebred Bosporan horse that if you succeed in your mission, you may also keep. Oh. Huzzah. I've heard good things. They are only the best. Please. Shall we be off? This conversation has turned rather sour. Yeah, let's go. Mm -hmm. Give a nod. And after that, uh, Captain Vigini would lead all of you out into the streets of Ker Bospora and over to a nearby stable. There, within this stable, can see that there are all types of huge Bosporan horses. Uh, the average Bosporan horse stands 10 to 11 feet tall at the shoulder, like an absolutely massive creature that can run for days on end. They're the best horses in the, the country of Zell on the continent of Ramesh. Some would even argue in the rings of Merapis. The mm. Helm Youth of Horses. Hmm? The Helm Youth of Horses. The Helm Youth of Horses. And all of you have the opportunity to pick out your horsey. <gasps> Yay! Yo, they have all different patterns and, you know, like other kinds to them. Some have long hair, others have short. You know, they're, this is a massive stable, so... Basically, just say what your horse looks like and what's its name. I'm gonna kill the horses. Me kill the horses? No. <laughs> horses mm. are not going to survive. <laughs> That's a pessimistic <laughs> attitude. I'm a pessimistic character. <laughs> um, my horse is going to be pure white. <laughs> mm. I see. And, uh... <clears throat> his name is going to be Herc. Okay. <laughs> Herc and Herc. What a combo. I never said Herc was the most creative person in the world. <laughs> uh, that Yeah, that's really our bad. It's hard. Um, I think Issa would pick maybe one of the blondish ones with mm. like white. Blonde and... with white spots. Yeah, something like that. Um. What's your horsey's name? Hmm. Good question. Issa's like staring really hard at the horse right now. <clears throat> you watch as this horse kind of turns to you and you can see its left eye focuses on you and the right eye like lazily looks off into space. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to name it Mead. Mead? Okay. Yeah. 
Gotcha, um, gotcha. I'll get um, a horse that's... Um, I'm going to say, like, it has, like, brown fur with some white speckles. Um, and noticeably it has, like, some marks here or there. Uh, one, like, over one eye that is, like, indicative of, like, a birthmark. And I'll take that one. Okay. What do you want to name it? Butters. Butters? <laughs> okay. Butters. Herc, Herc Mead, and Butters. Jonah, what's your horsey? Uh, Alden would choose uh, just like Matt Brown horse, um, as unassuming as he can find amongst these world class horses. <laughs> gotcha. Probably name it Toby. Toby, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Very cool. And then. What about your horse, Caleb? Uh, probably a, um, like a dappled gray horse. Um, and I think, I think just for kicks, he'll name it Dog. I see. <laughs> then... You get your horses, and they're assembled, saddled, and ready. It is the 55th of Lion Ear. The moon is full. It's about 7.30 at night. Do you wish to take the night and rest in Karabas Bora, or are you trying to get an early start under this full moon? How long would it take us to get to Cantor from here? Cantor... Well, it's about a 500-mile journey, all things being equal. And with that on some uh, Bosporan horses purebred, eh, probably four or five days. They can cover pretty easily 100 miles a day, maybe a little bit more. Mm. We'd be camping either way. It doesn't really bother me. Kirk would push to leave immediately. I think Alden would too. Okay. Um, Greer, as long as Issa's okay with going now, would be accommodating. I have nothing here. Gotcha. Then you I'm are. I'm not opposed to it. And y'all are moving out now? Mm hmm Yeah, as long as we have food and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You got that. Given to okay. you by the legions of Zell. Congratulations. You're well-treated employees. Given everything you need for success. Huh. I believe you. You should. You should. Uh, let's see. Alden, can you please roll a d6 for me? Okay, great. First roll. Two. Two. Very interesting. Okay. Then... Did you clear the chat? I did. Is that what just happened? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But as you, it's like it's all gone. Fresh start. As you make your way out of Care Bospora on this first night, a few hours later you come to a hill and begin to rest. Is there anything you're doing before you tuck in for the night? Or are you just all kind of chilling? Mm. Irk is going to pray. Okay. Just a simple prayer, then? Yeah, a simple prayer. Okay. I'm gonna braid my horse's hair. Hmm. Very nice. It's bonding. Bonding? Then make a spirit check for me. See how oh. much you bond with mead. Oh, God. <laughs> 
uh, uh, what is my... Hmm. One success. One success. In that case, like, Mead is warming up to you a bit. They don't seem to mind the braiding, and they are a very good horse, allowing you to braid them and do whatever you like. I know. Whisper to it, and like whatever the Brao and equivalent of like baby talking is, like really quietly. I mean, that, it's just baby talking. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I'll handle cooking for the night. I'll make us a stew. A stew. Okay, then mm -hmm. make a mental check. Uh, three successes. It's, it's a, a damn good stew. It's a damn good stew. You can take a hero <laughs> point for good stew. Let's go. <laughs> as everyone begins to settle down around the campfire and as you take the stew and begin to sip, this frayer guy really knows how to cook. Uh, this is I really good. Are, uh, I'm glad that you like it. Um, it's a uh, Bruin traditional legacy, I guess. Uh, glad you like it. It is as good as it always is. <laughs> Thank Which you, is very... Seth. Um, Alden, Irk, is it to your liking? Yeah. Very good. Which god did you pray to to get this? I must know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I don't pray to any god, really. Yeah, you don't. And er Erica's gonna move closer. Oh, hey, have uh, you heard of Mateus? No, I, I haven't. Um, I'm assuming you worship them? <laughs> I do indeed. Let me tell you about them. Yes, oh, oh, we're oh, going oh, to okay. go to Laurel. And using this distraction, Alden will sort of slip off the ways. <laughs> and I'll say that you very successfully slip away. <laughs> I'm entirely just, oh, okay, uh, yeah, sure. Ah, so Ateus is the material god of Laurel. You've never been to Laurel, right? No, this would be a first for me. Ah, then you should know all about all 72 precepts. There's se se 72? Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> no, there's far more, but 72 important ones. Ah, okay. Fantastic. <laughs> How many do you have memorized? Your I eyes kind of go classy. Yeah. <laughs> He's ah, going through his, like, mental Rolodex. <laughs> Piper also appears to be listening with rapt attention. Um, although he'll cast a glance back at Alden to see if Alden needs anything. No, he's just looking on the lookout. Fair enough. Gotcha. Uh, you can take a hero point, then, Urk, for religious fervor. <laughs> <laughs> we love a man of religion here I, I need to educate them they just don't know better they just Teacher don't know better Moralites, yeah. <clears throat> oh goodness then after you're done evangelizing <laughs> is, is everyone good for bed yeah. Do we need to um do watches? It would be wise out here. Baspora isn't as safe as it once was. It was never really that safe to begin with. Oh, I'll take um, first one. I'll I'll take second. Wake me up after. We'll do. If all goes well, I'll take last watch. 
<laughs> if. Very good, very good. Then... <laughs> everybody who's on watch, just roll 2d6 for me. Would my um, eagle eyes help with this? Yeah, you can only roll 1d6 then. Oh, oh wow. That's crazy. <laughs> so I only roll 1d6? Mm hmm. Oh, that's. Sounds like higher fantastic. numbers, not good. Uh, six. <laughs> wow. Six, so seven, and eight. Success. Or six, seven, eight, twelve. Mm hmm. <laughs> Peter, you're really a trendsetter. Woo! Then, as everyone is on watch, the night happily passes without incident. You know, you pass off the watch, it is a well oiled machine. You guys work well together. It's all good. And then you all wake up the next morning and all of you gain a hero point. Yippee. It scares me. It scares me how many hero points you're giving out, Colin. It, it, it's almost like we're going to have to re-roll a whole lot. <laughs> I do not know I, what you uh, mean. Does, I didn't eat any flowers, did I? <laughs> <laughs> does that include people who are not on watch? It does. Okay. For you, it's a hero point for a good night's sleep. Yay, that's not concerning. <laughs> Honk me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, as you are all waking up, you have a journey ahead of you. So I'd like all of you to make a physical, mental, or spirit check and justify it, as this is a check to see how well you do on your journey, how rough it is. So what are you making, Caleb? Uh, Piper will probably make a physical check. Um, I think especially because he's relatively small and it's a very large horse. Um, I think keeping control of the horse will be a large part of his struggle. All right. Make a physical check then for good old Piper. Hmm. Uh, two successes. Piper handles the horse well. It's a well-trained Bosporan horse, and even the subtlest commands the horse abides by. What is Freyr doing, on the other hand? Um, while we ride, can I keep track of the positions of like the constellations and whatnot to make sure we're heading in the right direction? Of course. That I'll be would... doing that as a mental. Yep, that would be mental. Uh, one success. One success. It's the darndest thing, Freyr. The sky seems to... It's just not cooperating with you. Like, you're like, man, where's that constellation? You found it hundreds of times, thousands even, as you're traveling. It's just a little finicky... You still make your way along, though, as you have a map and things. You're just not on your A-game this time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whack. What about Alden? Um. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna... Uh, Alden will probably be continuing to be on a swivel, distrustful of the place around him looking to see make sure there's nothing going on around and I'm justifying physical okay that's a good justification uh two successes two successes gotcha um it seems like there is a steady tide of people heading towards care Bospora not really anybody going your direction but otherwise you keep a good lookout what about Urk? How's him and Herc doing? 
Well, so what Urk is doing is periodically throughout the day, he's going to use his fly, he's going to use his wings to fly up into the air and take note of the surrounding landscape and like basically bring all that back to the party so that they know like, oh, here's like a rough patch. We should go this way. I'm justifying mental. Mental? That tracks. Go ahead and make a mental check. Okay. Three successes. Three successes. Your help is invaluable then, Irk. As, you know, when the stars fail, mm -hmm. just the physical landscape around you can be trusted. But true. Yeah. Normally the other way around. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> Odd one may or may not say but eh, it's probably fine what about isa what are they up to mm, could i ask what the kind of temperature is about well it's summer in you know zell so you're looking at you know day temperatures between 85 and 90 nighttime temperatures 50 to 60. um would it be possible for me to justify mental using um, my cryomancy to, you know, add ice to our water and help us continue going on by not overheating? Hmm. I like that. Yeah, go ahead and make a mental check. Could I add my exceptional mind? You could. Ah, uh, one success. Well, it is very hot. So, while it helps a little bit, everyone's still cooking a bit under this heat. But, at this point, we find you about 482 miles in, as it is the night before you are set to reach the town of Cantor. At this point, pretty much all the roads are empty and deserted, and all of you are just enjoying some time around the fire. Anything you guys wish to do, or are you just getting some more rest before, you know, the, your big day tomorrow? Hmm. Um... Uh, not to pry into your backgrounds if you don't want to talk about them, but, um, what do you all specialize in? If, um, who knows what we might have to deal with when we get there. You see Urk kind of looks up from his, like, codex of laurel religious rites, looks at prayer. Well, I'm a cleric, I heal. Oh, oh, that's, that's amazing. Okay. Perfect. Um, and, uh, and Piper? Oh, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm not talented in magic like any of you guys. Um, I prefer to fight kind of up close and personal. And, um, he'll kind of reach probably like into his code and, kind of show you these um these chakram um these bladed discs uh, and he'll bring them out so you can get a look um oh those look those look amazing too mm -hmm. behind every good mage is a it's a good hand-to-hand -hand combatant i think that's a good thing for any party um at least that's what i read what you oh have you not done too much mercenary work yourself then no no this is uh this is a first for both isa and i um we've done some well delegation type work um but nothing like this before 
Ah, well, you'll get the hang of it soon, I'm sure. You guys seem like you're capable of learning on your feet. You're more experienced, then? Uh, a little, yeah. Alden and I have been uh, working together um, for a couple months now. We've done a few jobs here and there before this. Uh, nothing weird like this, though. Mm. Well, if it's the magic that's weird, I think you'll probably be an asset. Um, since you two have been working for a couple of months, um, what's been your favorite mission so far? Uh, you know, there was this little town we, um, ran by called, a uh, Stone Hollow. There, um, there had been some bandits causing trouble for the town's folk there, so we, you know, we helped clear them out, um. But the townsfolk were very sweet. They gifted us with um, uh, a lot of the... They specialized in kind of like um, baking different sweets and stuff. And so they uh, um, gave us a lot of those to part with. Sounds like a sweet ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. That was my favorite anyway. And, uh, Alden, uh, what about you? What was your favorite? Mm. Yeah, the sweets were good. Uh, I don't take much joy in the work. It pays the bills. Hmm. So, um, I'm assuming mercenary work isn't your first choice. What would your first choice be? I didn't say that. I just said I don't take joy in it. <laughs> ah, I see. Been doing it a long time then? More or less. Longer than I like to admit. Mm. Mm. How about Are you, you two from the same region? Vaguely. I just met by chance. And we seem to work together decently well. How about you, Freyr, was it? Uh, yes. Answer. What do you do? Um, and, uh, uh, Freyr will, like, tilt their water jug a little bit and just kind of whirl the water around. Uh, hydromancy, that's, that's what I can do, at least. Nice. with that. Oh, I didn't quite catch that. Did you ask the question? No. Uh, just saying there was probably some relation with that. I, it makes sense. Mm. Water and ice and all that. Yeah, you know that uh, it would be nice to think that. Just a small structural change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so small. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take first watch again. We should get some rest <clears throat> before we get into the main area. We're oh, um, uh, you took first watch last time. I can start off this time if you'd like. I'll take first watch. Okay, I'll uh, I'll follow up after you then. 
can just go in the I same order. Uh, oh, no, that's fine. Okay. Gotcha. Then all of you are going to watches. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very fair. Very fair. In that case, Alden, you can go ahead and make a physical check. Cool. <laughs> uh, one success. One success. Keep in watch. Everything looks fine. Anything you're doing on your watch, or you just content to pass it off to Freyer? Um, not really doing anything. Just watching around, but also watching the party members. Okay. Everything seems fairly normal. Um, horses are doing good. Kind of a, a just a very peaceful night. Then, uh, then that's it. All right. Then, Freyr, it is your watch. What you doing on your watch? Um, honestly, I the not being able to find that constellation probably would be really bugging me. I probably would be looking to the sky a bit more than usual to map it out if I can. Gotcha. Then make a mental check as you attempt to map out that weird sky problem you're dealing with. Uh, one success. One success. Okay. You eventually find it. It's in a different location in the sky than it should be this year. Um, and you are noticing more and more there are other spots in the sky where things are off. So... Yeah, it, it's just really weird, Freyr. Um, I think it's especially more weird uh, when the knife whoosh, comes to the side of your throat. And as this happens, you slowly turn to the side as a large man has slipped into camp next to you. You can see that there are more shadows around the area. My name's Devet of the Dread Thieves. We want your money, not your life. Give us your gold, your food, and your boots, and we'll be on our way. You're taxed every day of your lives, so this shouldn't be anything new for you. Okay? Uh, 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 um... Yep, all your uh, money has... and your boots. Go on, kick them off. Come on, pretty boy. Um, has everyone else, like, woken up from this, or are they still sleeping? Uh, everybody is now waking up, yeah. Uh, um, I didn't um, for I... my money. Uh, I, 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 uh, 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 don't... uh, come on. We... Uh, need uh, our supplies. I, I'm happy to give you my gold. I don't really need that, but we need our supplies. We have to help. Well, it's uh, taxes. Cancer. It's taxes, buddy. Taxes. And he's going to just kind of ruffle your hair. Come on. Don't want to commit tax fraud, do you? Orabe. And he calls off to a woman kind of behind him with cheese human or you think maybe more half elf with kind of this ragged red hair <laughs> yeah yeah boss you don't want to show this poor lad what happens when you skimp on the taxes <laughs> no boss no he looks perfectly nice looks perfectly nice wouldn't want to scar him up scar um i do um yeah, uh, and probably, um, uh, I would try to take, like, a step back a little bit. Oh, he's, he's holding you there with the, oh. the knife there. Come on, okay. boots first. Boot, those are nice boots. Where'd you get them? 
Um, okay, without him noticing, can I open up my little pocket dimension thing uh, in preparation to use my hydromancy? Sure. Okay. Um, Did Alden want to do something? Uh, <laughs> he's going to look over at Piper to gauge what Piper wants to do in this situation. Uh, Piper's hands have probably drifted towards where he keeps his weapons. He's probably peeking out to see what's going on. How heavily armed do these people look? Do do they seem like we could probably take them in a fight? Devet has you know some armor on him. Looks like some old chainmail. And apart from the knife, has pretty hefty looking greatsword. The others have short blades and bows. You know. Just run-of-the-mill roadside bandits. Are they Aether Souls? Uh, no, none of them are. None of... Ah... Mm. Mm. <sighs> Okay, buddy, come on, out of your boots, and oh, is, is this jerky? Do you have jerky for us today, pretty boy? Uh, um, sh 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 sure, sure. Okay, come on, get uh, it out, get it out, get it out of the bag for us, come on. Um, I'll grab out some jerky. Um, if, 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 if you are all hungry, I can make a mean stew, we could all... We could all sit and uh, just eat food together, and you know. No, no, no. It's it's a little bit late for for food, but you know we'll we'll take it to go. We'll take it to go. Uh, ooh, that's that's some some nice jerky there. And uh, okay, now where's your coin pouch? I'm gonna need that. Um, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. My magic is it. Do I need to make noise to be able to do it? Depends on which magic. Uh, freeze. Freeze? I'd have to check your character sheet. Oh. Ooh, I don't think it before. had a... I think it's yeah. just hands. I don't even think it's hands. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. I think it just is, because I know Frostbite has the requirement for... Speaking. So for good old freeze. Uh, nope, no prerequisites. You can do it silently. Um, <clears throat> Issa is visibly shaking, like, kind of slack faced. Mm hmm. It doesn't seem anxious. Maybe more angry. Um, did the uh, bandit approach or er irk irk? Mm hmm. Yep, they approach. You can see. He looks like a, a normal <laughs> human guy. Maybe like a little bit overweight, balding on top, and he just kind of smiles. Hey, it's all right. We're actually pretty nice once you get to know us. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just how things kind of have to be, sir. If you could just pass over uh, your goods, that would not be great. Irk kind of like shakes his hand. Fantastic, fantastic. What's your name, sir? Oh, my name's Toby. What's your name? Toby, Toby. Fantastic, fantastic. My name is Irk. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, no, you, those are, those are bird person shoes, right? Yes, I'm afraid they probably wouldn't fit you. No, they, they probably wouldn't fit any of us. Yeah, so you can yeah. keep those boots. Look, we're, we're pretty reasonable. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna but, need the, uh, we're gonna need the food, though, and, and your gold, probably. If, if I might ask, good sir, what, what brought upon this, uh, lifestyle? I thought it would be fun. You thought it would be fun? Um, there's not many people out here. This can't be a very... 
Well, the... Not protective zone anymore. Well, yeah, anymore. We're gonna kind of... I mean, we might be moving out after this. But also, it's kind of a tense area between Laurel and Zell. They're, they're not really, um... Doing... Hey! And at this point, Toby is going to, like, stop as... He sees Piper moving and is going to draw a blade as everyone else is now looking at you, Piper. Well, that's fine. And you can see... The captain is kind of like drawing their great sword. And now, don't want any funny business. Hey, hey, whoever you are, we're let's not make this any more difficult than it needs to be. Look, you guys have been doing so good so far. And look, yeah, sure, this sucks, but it's a character building experience, really. Piper, look like he's yes, about I understand to do something. It. Do you look like you're about to do something? Or are you just kind of uh, standing? Piper was moving forward. He would have stopped when the guy drew his great sword. Um, is he is he still threatening Freya, or is he kind of let go of him? Um, I mean, he's still right next to Freya with another person. Uh, mm -hmm. it seems to be. A more muscular tiefling behind. It's kind of like jet black skin. Gotcha. Um. And yeah, I think uh, Piper will say, um, look, we don't really want any trouble either. I'm sure you all have much better places you could be right now. We, uh, we don't really have much to offer you. Yeah, but, let's see, right here, I see jerky, I see good boots, this pretty boy's got money, sure, you got money, too. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you've got a little of all those things, but, you know, we saw this awfully rich caravan head in the way we came earlier. I bet you could still catch up with them if you got to move on now. It'd surely be a better haul than us. Make a spirit check. All right. Uh, I'll use a hero point for one of those. Okay. Now that's two successes. And where'd you see this caravan? Uh, what direction did we come from? Came from that away, from the east. Uh, we came from the east. Ah, um, we passed them when we were coming from that direction. And I'll point, uh, over east, um, oh, maybe about an hour or two ago. It's two o'clock in the morning. And you've been camped here for a few hours. Ah, you know, silly me, I a little bit of time blurriness. It's you know, it's difficult when you wake us up in the middle of the night. They were really close to here though. It wasn't long before we set up camp that we passed them. Make another spirit check. See if you can recover this. <laughs> uh, I'll use my other hero point. Uh, just one success this time. Just one success this time? Okay. We'll see then. Alright, just roll a d6 for me. Four. Four? Hmm. <laughs> Look. Our boots a little worn out. Give us your boots, and we'll be out of here. And thanks for the tip, kid. Does he seem like he's being honest? Who knows? Who knows? Ah. 
<laughs> sure. I think Piper will be ready to draw his weapons, um, but he'll take off his boots. All right. You can see that the strange woman's going to run over and pick him up. I was going to kind of head back. What's up with the bozo next to me? Oh, uh, she is kind of standing behind looking at this particular woman. Um, like she's a dragonborn woman, about six, two, six, three, got a battle axe over her back. And she's just keeping an eye on you. And she goes, boots off. Can't you buy your own? Not many stores out here. I don't even think my boots would fit you. Yeah, but they'd probably fit bats over there. Hmm. <sighs> you know, it's going to be a real pain in the ass to get boots all the way out here. You guys are going back east. Don't. Easily get them there. We're losing the rich people. Don't make us have to get violent. Holden is once again going to look at Piper, trying to gauge if are we really allowing them to take our boots. <laughs> I mean, Piper's gonna shrug. It seems like the easiest way out of this. We don't have spare boots, do we? No, you I do not. I assume not. <laughs> Excuse you. But. But I do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, okay, uh, um, instead of boots, what, 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 what do you normally get, uh, uh, in terms of money from your taxes? Uh, everything a person has, usually. But if you keep on making this hole up here, um, might need to, yeah, look, we're giving you a tax break from your friend, but if you continue to waste our time, we're going to have to repeal that so that we can recoup losses. We are the Dread Thieves. We have a reputation to uphold here. Uh, anyone looking at Alden can tell he is about at the end of his rope and he's going to do something violent. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, no, I agree. Uh, I can still give you all my gold, uh, the boots we kind of need, but I can give you all the gold without a fight. If you'll accept that instead. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, and Fair Nielsen will give him uh, uh, all my gold, 132 gold. <laughs> Rich, pretty boy. Okay, all right. Okay, gang. We got enough here. Get the boots. We'll be gone. Except for you. You're, you're good. And they're gonna start to head out. Um, you can see Toby next to you, Eric, will say, It's alright, man. You don't need to give me your boots. Your boots are good. You just have a great night, sir. Okay? You do too, sir. Um, I hope you uh, have a good time out east. I hope we will. Hope we will. Man, uh, did you know they got sulfur mines out there? Do they? Yeah, it's great for satanic worship. And he's going to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see on his back there is like this devilish brand on his armor. Mm. <laughs> Everyone's kind of starting to walk. <laughs> uh, Do the rest of them have that? No, just him. Okay. He's just weird. He's just weird like that. Isa, are you can I actually to... can I actually throw a quizzical look at the Vey? <laughs> yeah. About that? Yeah, you can see he just kind of shrugs. I don't know, man. We we picked he had just like 
sacrificed a family in a barn. It was kind of crazy. Hmm. Hey, but... Yeah, he's a skilled member of the Dread Thieves. Uh, once blew up an orphanage. <laughs> oh my god! Right. His eyes are wide. <laughs> Alright, uh, he'll kind of walk up to you. Boots or money? Which one you want to give, sir? Uh, fuck. Um, and he will uh, start going through his pockets trying to find his money because he doesn't actually use it all that often. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's all right. It's all right. Take your time. Take your time. And while he's doing that, can he, like, count out a sum, but not actually give all of it? How much are you trying to give? Uh, let's see. Um. Do we have a gold to USD exchange rate? <laughs> Uh, the average peasant makes between 80 and 120 gold pieces a year. It. <laughs> uh, yeah, since he looks kind of raggedy, he'll try and cough up like 30. Yeah, he'll take it and move on. And Isa, are you giving boots or money to the woman? How much does it cost for you to get a nice pair of boots? Mm. We'll call it 30 gold pieces. Is that with tailoring or without? With. Hmm. Issa's gonna kind of reach into his robes and pull out like a small bag. I imagine Issa probably has them, his money stored in several small bags. Mm -hmm. um, I think Eleonora would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Here, make him look nice. And will it be 30? 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can see, well, we'll take it, can down. A pleasure. And then the Dread Thieves will leave. Hmm. Hmm. Does Piper have boots? Piper is bootless now. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Piper. Uh, would you like to wear my boots? Oh no, I'll be fine. I. Are you okay though? You, you did not look very comfortable there. Uh, uh um. Did he hurt you? No, no. I, I, you? I, I, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, it, the, it was a close call. I'm glad we didn't have to fight. Um, Issa stomps yeah. over to look at his throat, make sure it wasn't cut. Was not. There is a little bit of a redness around the throat, though, but otherwise, he's fine. If we ever see those people again... Or kind of oh. looks at them. I, as long as they're out of your shot, but Eric's just kind of like, I wouldn't be too concerned. That way is the uh, legions of Zell. Hmm. Good. And anyway, if we'll succeed, we'll make back that money and more. Yeah, my boots kind of sucked. Anyway, I'll be able to get a great new pair with our payout. Mm -hmm. They just want my boots. You do you wear boots? I'm, I'm looking at you. Do you wear boots? Eric is wearing boots right now. Mm -hmm. 
They're special they, like, era huge? cobra boots. Yeah, they're like they accommodate bird feet. Are they so. like fucking water flippers? <laughs> there are a lot of Aarakocra in this area, so yeah. like... But are there Aarakocra in Brio? The occasional one. The mountain that most of them come from is directly to the north, so... Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, we're on. Uh... Homeland. <clears throat> if anywhere would accommodate for an Aarakocra it would be this area of Zell and Laurel. Mm-hmm. But... Hmm. The devil worshippers seem nice. <laughs> yeah, the, the one that down, killed though. kids. Mm, the gods will strike him down for this. If I don't first. Well, who's to say that's not the gods? It's yeah. Fine. It's wise that we save our strength whatever lies ahead of us. Mm. We want to move our camp. I don't know if we want to be around when they find out I lied to them. Yeah. What time is it? Like two in the morning? It's now three o'clock in the morning. Let's yes, just we should out. probably leave. <clears throat> gotcha. Then you're just setting out? Have like a really quick like break to eat and then go. Okay. Then, after a quick break to eat, you all set off, moving towards Canter. Your horses pick up a nice trot as eventually the sun begins to rise over this landscape. And checking the map now, Isa, you're about seven miles away when... The area before you seems to all of a sudden possess this red shimmering effect. It's like there is this haze in front of you. And at this point, all of you kind of stop your horses as you're just kind of looking at it now. I thought the... <clears throat> Captain told us that the occlusion dome was five miles. You can take a hero point for remembering history correctly. It's growing. That's not good. Okay. Um. I think Issa will Ooh. take off one of his sashes and kind of fashion like a mask around his lower face. I don't know if it's particularly airborne, but... Well, could be anything. It Upon could eyes. be anything. Heart. You don't see anything. People out there. Movement. Just in the distance. I mean, Urk will check. You don't see anything. It seems just to be the yeah. rolling grassland and some mountainous outcroppings here and there, but no people. Nothing. Makes sense. This area was cleared. Cleared of living people. That's we don't know what was that. left. Let's proceed carefully. Stay with an eye shot of everyone. Yes. Unless there's any final checks others wish to do before we enter into the shimmering field. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to just um, at Butters. Um, you know... Make sure that they're calm when we go into this weirdness. Yeah, Butters is... He's kind of patting his feet here and there a bit, but he's being a brave boy. Okay, Butters. We, 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 we got this. Yeah, okay. Where... Are we right up against 
kind of the red haze. Mm -hmm. They said magic is weird in there. Should I try it while we're out here? <clears throat> Worth a shot. Um, I think moving everyone back a bit, Issa will... Hmm. Am I able to... Hmm. I guess frostbite is five feet. I think freeze a plant or something. Yeah. I'll just set my eyes on... I don't know. A patch of grass. And... I'll use freeze to try and freeze whatever moisture is there on the inside of the haze. Okay. And as you release the magic, it spirals forward and it begins to attempt to collect around the plant. And then you can see the magic kind of shimmer and flicker. And the plant does freeze... Um, but you are beginning to watch that frozen nature start to spread further out. And as it begins to flicker and change, uh, you watch as the plant all of a sudden becomes what appears to be a wagon made out of like this solid gray metal. Hmm. Do you think, well, maybe, uh, do you think this, no, no, that can't be it, never mind. We, at least Freya and I, were we listening to Remus's, um, no, uh, we weren't? Okay. You were not there. No, not that was okay. happening over in Laurel. No. Okay. Right. No, no, that wasn't happening we were in Laura. Not we don't... in Laura. We were in Carabasphora. Well, I know we were, but the um, it was the lecture. A different time. Just a different time. Gotcha. <clears throat> Point of note: Shimmer is not edge of magical anomaly. Hmm. Advanced. Well. So, to expand exclusion zone, when we return. Well, magic is already weird out here. I was ready to see how much weird it we got from we get inside. It sounds fun. What we're here to do? I'll, uh, I think I should head in first as a magic user. Just make sure that, I don't know, the rest of you don't explode. Um, well, if, I mean, if that, I mean, if that, 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 that's the case, I'll going with you at the same time. I'm not going to make you go in alone. I didn't say you had to go. It just seems to be a safer option than letting all of us explode. He's just going to head in without mead first. Okay. Then you head on in and as you pass through... You feel normal. You feel fine. Okay. I think people should be fine. Okay. Call need forward and get back on. Gotcha. Need will slowly move forward and will pass through 
that shimmering red. And you'll get back on him. Try not to use magic if you can. And all of them will head in as well. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I think our quiet friend speaks truth. Or will I head in after Alden? Okay. Is everyone heading in then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. You all begin to make your way forward in this space. There is the road that is still continuing forward. Are you trying to follow that? I believe the canter, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. All roads lead mm. to canter. Probably roads uh, to um, investigation. Hmm. Keep to the road. We probably don't know what latent magic is around here. We'll avoid running into anything. Well, at least we won't get lost. And helps. Why did you say that? I agree, Cancer is our best bet. Mm. First person to see anything, we all stop. Sure. Let us know, and we won't continue forward until we know what it is. And, um, Colin? Mm -hmm. With the patch of grass that was frozen, um, the way you described it, it began freezing over and then it kind of shimmered, and then in its place was like a frozen over metal, like a gray metal wagon. Yep, turned into a gray metal wagon. Hmm, okay. Mm hmm. Um, hmm. Well, mm. what I'm thinking is, is. Could it be that the wagon was always there and the ice magic just made it so we could see it again? Or do you think it actually turned into a wagon or something well, of the like? It could be a strange form of transmutation. I'm not really sure what would connect ice to metal like that, especially in this form. It's kind of like it just went down a list and stuck its finger on something. <clears throat> Let's assume our knowledge of magic is not comprehensive enough to understand this phenomenon. No, definitely not. There's, like, nothing that Issa would have learned adjacent to any of this other than, like, some sort of transmutation, right? Hmm. Unknown. Okay. I say we continue forward. Oh, okay. Tiki, what's about you? Gotcha. Then who's taking the lead? Shit, I will. Cool. Um... Then, as you all, I'm assuming, riding across this landscape, it appears relatively normal, as there is still the rolling hills. You don't see any houses or things, but here in the openness of the Bosporan wilderness, you don't see houses or people for hours at a time normally. There is still that strange shimmer that covers the area now and then. So, Athena, can you please roll a d100 for me? Yeah, that's a um, big number. I also want to ask before doing that, did the temperature change at all when we entered this area, or is it still, like, pretty summer temp? It's still summer temp. It feels normal. Okay. Da, 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 da. I want to watch the big die go. 
Aw, I thought it was going to be a big one. 45. I like that number. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Then, as you make your way forward, all of a sudden, like, Mead starts, like, prancing around like they're nervous. Hey, we should stop for a second. And what's up? That's when the ground whoosh, tears open like paper as all of you begin to fall into this massive void. No, it's it's not actually a void, you realize as you tumble down from on high you begin to impact these large leaves as you have just fallen through moist jungle clouds your horses bounce as well they are bosporan horses so despite you feeling mead hit the ground very very hard isa you watch as the horse quickly kind of gets back up and you're like damn that's a strong horse um, oh i'm gonna get off and like check its legs just make sure yeah um continues to prance around a bit but otherwise quite honestly looks fine that's probably a good thing is everyone else okay um y y yeah yeah I'll get over here Urkaz just wings out, and it's kind of like flying down to the ground. Mm -hmm. Nothing broken? Hmm. Doesn't seem like it. It was more to bust boring horses. Uh, looking up, is there a visible entry, or is it just sky now? Oh, yeah, as you look up, about 500 feet above you, there's a rip in the cloud cover. That, like, that's the place you fell into. Like, this weird paper rip. Uh, cool. Do we hear animal life around us? Uh, make a physical check. Zero successes. Zero successes. Um, you kind of tell everyone to, to halt for a minute and begin to sit back and try to listen. Um, you do hear the sounds of the jungle around you, but it's weird. Like, you're not sure how, but it... It's like the sound isn't coming from all around you, but it's, like, coming from, like, the center of your head. It's not like you're in a 3D space with this sound. Mm. Uh, would Piper have shared that info? I mean, we can listen. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have yeah, ears. Piper kind of. Oh, I mean, that, that's true. That's true. But like, like <laughs> Piper was the first one to come to the realization. Um, it's uh, I guess almost like it's projecting our idea of what a jungle is or rainforest.
I assume none of us are skilled in climbing trees. Not exactly. Um... Herc looks offended. <laughs> Other than the one who can fly. I think, Urk, though, you would begin to hear and really feel these thuds on the ground as a voice goes, Run! Run! Oh. <laughs> Turn to run. the run. <laughs> and you, have to tell me twice. You hear more, like, pronounced sounds or doom 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 time to go hop on the horse keep heading in the path that we were heading above ground where are the thudding sounds coming from they're coming from the like technically like an eastern direction but like where is anything in here Gotcha. We just head, hopefully continuing down that path, but like avoiding that sound. Gotcha. Um, at this point, then, Alden, you begin to see a shape kind of emerging over the canopy. A shape that is two, maybe three hundred feet tall. It's humanoid, Alden. And you can see this, what appears to be normal, like, dwarvish man. Uh, it's got, he's got a mustache, like a brown mustache, no beard, though, wearing kind of this tropical, like, brown uniform. Um, he's got a, a tool belt on him with all different types of jars and pockets, and in the hand of this massive dwarf, you can see this tiny little Goliath going, Help me! Help! And in a booming voice, you hear the dwarf go, Crikey! You're a beaut! Pops open a jar and puts this little Goliath inside. And then... You watch as the eyes kind of follow the tree cover and you make direct eye contact with this dwarf, Alden. Wow. Great find. Gotta get you in a jaw. And all of you I see mean... this dwarf begin to make his way towards all of you. I don't want to. I don't want to be yeah, put on the radiator. Go. I don't want to be put on the radiator. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Yeah, we're already There's fucking going. Horse on go. <laughs> All right, we are going to be entering a skill challenge then, as you try and escape this dwarf. Phenomenal. Um. Oh, <laughs> uh, Colin and um. Isa and I do, like, a combined effort for the skill challenge? Perhaps. Okay. I mean, if you um, suck as much water out of the plants as you can and, like, fire well, it at them, I like can ice it over. Suck, like I a... actually can't suck water out of plants, which is uh, interesting. What? Yeah, no, I can't suck water out of plants or creatures. That's out of bounds. I can only do what I can see. But we're in a rainforest, so I'm assuming, Colin, there's water around us. Yes, they're on leaves and trees and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Uh, Isa, uh, two. Um, <laughs> uh, and um, I'm going to start, like, pooling water, uh, like a sheet of it, at the base of, like, in front of the giant dwarf in preparation for Isa to freeze it and make it, like, a slippery footing for the dwarf so he trips cool make a mental check at detriment one okay <clears throat> okay I'll, I'll use the uh, i'll use one hero point uh 
I'll I'll leave it at that. Okay. Then as you like reach out a hand and you attempt to focus pooling the water in front of this dwarf you can see the water starts to shimmer and then you watch it become uh, a three-story mansion and you watch as the dwarf like his foot comes crashing through it and goes whoa we got a fire over here and you can see a big smile emerges uh, across this guy's face. He's loving it. Okay, he said, never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, no shit, never mind. <laughs> Come on you, you buttes, let me see ya. Cool. Uh, can Alden, um, try and guide the group through a path that will like make us lose eye or um, eye line with the giant trying to hide us make him lose us you could go ahead and make a physical check cool can I use stealthy guide for this I would say no because he does have direct eyesight on you here. And he's and very then, like, big. Wind through trees and... Oh yes, but he's he's literally staring right at you. Okay. <sighs> like you can way. try and weave through, but it, it's very difficult to break eye contact. Uh, two successes. Two successes. Then you help your party mates wind through some of these trees, helping to make a little bit of distance. Yay. Um, Can I make a mental check? To basically, while we're going, uh, I'm assuming there's not really a path. There's like roots and stuff. Yeah. Can I, can I make a mental check to help us um determine like see see roots and like determine paths that would be really difficult for the horses to go down yeah you could do that Ooh. Ooh. um what the hell of it i'll do use a hero point hmm well, three successes. Three successes is still pretty good, as combining with Alden, uh, you make sure like the twisted routes are still possible for the horses to get through. And with you two together, you are making more distance as you hear the dwarf go, Crikey! An air cockra! Haven't seen one of you in ages! What are you doing down here, little fella? Your mom. Um, uh, would you believe me if I said trying to figure out a problem? And you can and see he's just still coming after you and kind of like skipping along. Oh, good God. Um, so was that detriment that, uh, Freyer took. Was that because it was magic? Who knows? Okay. He's just gonna do what he knows. Um, can I use freeze on him? Sure. Uh, Is it with a, in a 100 feet of us? That seems uh, pretty close. If you want to kind of stop and wait till he gets within 100 feet, you can do that. Okay. <sighs> Risk it for a biscuit. What's his reach look like? Well, he's about a 300 foot tall dwarf, so. He's got quite a wingspan on him. But if you're diving and ducking through the trees, it should be fine. Alright, Mead, let's test this shit out. I'm gonna do it. Okay, then make a mental check at detriment one. For this, do I get 
Uh, roleplay ability or no? No. Okay. And detriment is one less die. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I will use a hero point. Uh. Bullshit. Okay. All right, then... As you kind of hold out your hand, um, I'm going to roll a d6. On a one, he's going to pick you up. Okay. Bruh. Well, okay then. As you reach out your hand, instead of ice, this red flare emerges from your fingertips and fires into the dwarf, and he goes, Oh, pretty color! And he, dunk, picks you up off of mead with these massive deft fingers as all of you watch as Issa is being carried above the ground now as the dwarf is looking at you. Oh, gonna add you to my collection. Oh, oh God. Um, Should I fucking bite his finger? <laughs> he, he, he starts to like gnaw on the finger. Okay. I, um, before I get picked up, I, I like shout for me to keep going. Okay, th- yeah, the horse keeps on going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. Uh, Bear is gonna, like, turn around. Isa! And, um... Well, we... Yeah, I'm... Oh, yeah? Piper, it's your go. Got one. Oh, oh, yeah! We have one more. It's... Um... Fuck. I mean, I could throw one of my weapons at him to try to get him to drop Issa, but I don't think I can make a dent in him. I will say, um, you'll need to get two successes instead of one. One success will allow you to, for the rest of you to escape this dwarf. Two will allow you to have him drop Issa. I won't be mad at you. I have two hero points that I can give for a reroll. <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead and try to make the check. Um, okay, what you doing? <sighs> yeah, I guess trying to throw one of my blades at... Oh, they don't even have a very good... I don't know if I could do that with the range. Um... I don't suppose I... Could I try to lead him through, like, a more tangled area? Kind of see if I can maybe get him to trip and fall? I mean, potentially. Right now, he's more so focused on the prize that he's got. So, there will be a detriment on that, but you can certainly try. Could I toss him my longbow? You could, sure. That would help you re- make the shot, maybe. Go cool, yeah. 300, I'll... 500. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is much better than 30 to 50 feet. Um, yeah, I guess I'll take his longbow and attempt to make the shot. Um, just even if I can kind of startle him enough to make him drop Isa or shake his attention a bit. I'm, I'm going to say, again, like... You, this is a little longbow against a massive dwarf. I'm going to say make this at detriment one. Because it, it's a small little arrow. You have to hit kind of a miracle shot. Like in an eye or something. That is fair. Um, Get it like right under little... his like nail. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, still the best idea I got, unfortunately. Um, God damn it. I've got one reroll I can give you. I will take that reroll. Thank you. Bruh. I hate it here. All right. Then let's see what happens. Oh, I'll give. Hmm? Sorry, I saw. I I just realized me. I saw. Give him two for another reroll. Okay. Just to see. Thank you. I love you. That's gay. God damn it. See, it was the I love you, it was you being gay. 
One, Damn. two, three, four. In order in the Discord. Uh, okay. Then you watch as the jar is opened up and <laughs> Issa is deposited inside. <laughs> and then the dwarf looks and goes, Oh, there you are, little Erkokra. And will reach down and <laughs> plucks Erk from the back of a horse in the trees as he begins to like fish you up Erk and <laughs> opens another jar and <laughs> puts you in. Uh, now we have Piper, Alden, and Freyer. You're still running. You need one success to break this chase. Cool. <laughs> um, and there's no way we're getting them out. Uh, they're in big jars now. Yeah, okay. How thick is this glass? I mean, it's average-sized glass, but to an ant, glass is pretty thick. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Um... Hmm. Would I? Ugh. Um. Would I be able to see any, um, like, loose threads on any, like, pouches he has or, like, a belt that's about to break or anything that could, like, be pushed and fall off? I mean, a distraction. maybe like like his belt isn't like new, and maybe he's got one pocket like on his shirt that's fraying a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you were to somehow get one of those to break, it would be a little bit of a distraction. Mm -hmm. Also, toss yeah. Dalton's bow back to him. I don't. I don't like being an ant. Um, <laughs> oh, good lord. Anyone else have any bright ideas? <laughs> I'll use magic inside this fucking jar. <laughs> I'm gonna blow this Honestly, piece! <laughs> could be the best shot. Hmm. Which one, the magic or the bow? <laughs> oh, the, the magic. I mean, if you... Oh, and we have a timer now. That's great. Are they great. allowed to? Yeah. Are they allowed to do things in the jars? <laughs> you could. It's it's you three though, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just go for the bow. Um, That's what you got. You right. got time. Yeah, I'll I'll try and um. Knock something loose off of him so that it falls and distracts him for a bit. All right. Make a physical check at detriment one. Cool. Can, um, can I use Peter, my... Can I, I need to listen to Jonah. Sorry. One success. One success. Then, as you fire this arrow, it arcs through the air, and you watch as it impacts kind of like the hand of this large dwarf who kind of, like... Definitely feels like a prick and goes, ah, ah, whipped y'all up into a frenzy. Sorry, little critters. My apologies. See you tomorrow. And he's going to begin to leave you guys be. He didn't mean to scare y'all. <clears throat> just kidnap our friends. <laughs> he's just going to, to look at him to appreciate nature. And so you hear the doom, 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 doom. 
make their way quickly in the other direction. Should we go after it? Um, yeah, from what he said, it seems like he must be camping out here. Oh, no, he was talking to Piper. <laughs> <laughs> We probably should. I, If we can find his camp and sneak in while he's sleeping, that might be our best option. I don't think a head-on confrontation would help at all. Okay. And I'm assuming since this thing is so large, it leaves a pretty noticeable trail. <laughs> it does, yes. Alden will start tracking it. Okay. And, I mean, that is not hard for you to do, Alden. Again, leaving a, a pretty sizable trail. Um, as you go, like, this thing is covering, you know, hundreds of feet in a single stride, so you have to really pick up the pace. However, as you are going, the terrain starts to get a little bit more swampy. And, like, you're finding that, even though you can still follow the tracks, it's a little bit more difficult to do. And it gets to the point where the, the nature around you seems to grow in intensity and lushness. You hear owls in the distance. And then you see a path, Alden, with a tiny cabin ahead of you. Like our size cabin? Mm hmm. Does the giant's path lead here or does it go further? It goes further. Okay. Um. He'll try and stealthily approach the cabin to see if he can see anything. Gotcha. Um, upon stealthy approach you would actually see this strange little origami bird kind of fluttering around the main entrance to this cabin. Mm -hmm. And there is like this slight humming coming from the inside and the smell of meat or stew. Hmm. He'll go back to the rest and try and figure out what we want to do. I don't trust it. Things have been too weird. Well, um, I mean, if the person lives here, maybe they know something. Can explain a little bit. Yeah, I don't know it. Maybe they could help. Though I do worry they. I don't know if they're they're in cahoots with that thing. This does seem like kind of a, well, a weird place to have a cabin. And everything's weird. I, I don't know. Um, well, um, if we're not going to go in, then we should just keep heading forward quickly um oh i wonder the um you said alden saw an origami bird right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's still kind of fluttering around 
Does it seem like it's observing us? No. Is it like hitting the door like a moth to a light? <laughs> Not really. Hmm. The little paper bird doesn't seem like it's spying or anything. Maybe we, maybe we better check inside. Ooh. And Fine. we'll have to be careful, but... Time's up, guys. The yep. world explodes. As you oh. watch as everything is consumed in this red light, as your very being and essence is torn apart, there is a scream as all of you feel yourself torn to shreds. And then, Freyr, you flutter your eyes open, and to your chagrin, you hear, My name's Devet of the Dread Thieves. We want your money, not your life. Give us your gold, your food, and your boots, and we'll be on our way. You're taxed every day of your lives, so this isn't anything new for you. And you feel the knife pressed to your throat once again, Freyr. Naylor Ramos continues his lecture. As you can see from the aforementioned diagrams, the red spiral events impact all of reality. From the greatest of beasts down to the smallest stones. The fundamental building blocks of the cosmic stack become but trifles, playthings. The disruption has next to no limits. There is no logical limit to a red spiral event. Because there is no logic. And I mean that very literally. Yes, my dear colleagues, the Red Spiral event can affect even the High God's tether to reality. I call this... He turns around and begins to scrawl something on a chalkboard behind him. The Law of Disconnection. The Red Spiral event and the clashing of magic is so great, it's sheer, such a razor's edge. The space stops being organized. And... What could that mean? But that the organizers are gone. And there are some yelling, some conjecture, and Naylor Ramos just kind of raises a hand. I understand that this might seem counterintuitive, but isn't that just the point? <laughs> In this space where our laws of reality break down where our guardians have left and have created a space unattended a space governed by nobody well even the impossible would be possible but who's to control such a thing there would be none what would a world look like that is beginning to undergo disconnection could we even conceptualize a world without creativity logic or time. And with that, we find a group of individuals back around a campfire. As at the moment, Freyr, what are you doing as the bandit captain Devet has a knife to your throat? Um, uh, this, this doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> Makes perfect sense. You're out here in the open. Now, 
Just give over your gold, your food, and your boots. Very simple, friend. You look like a pretty boy, a rich boy. You can buy new boots. Um, feeling like the area where I would keep my gold, does it still feel like all of the original stuff? Mm-hmm. Huh. I'm, am I the only one that's confused right now? No. No. Uh, okay, so we weren't streaming all that. That all happened. Hey, I don't know how all of you think this usually goes, but talking later. You can talk about whatever this is. I'm gonna need your gold, kid. Nothing personal, but... Um... Can I ask you a question first? What is with you people? Sure, go ahead. Have you been in that res red haze? No. Have you seen it? The evacuated zone? No, I, I haven't seen it. It's evacuated for a reason. I could okay, look to but... his other goons. None of you been in it? You can see a few of them shake their head, and one of the individuals, Toby, just kind of like shakes his head as well. No, none of us have been over there. Um, seems pretty dangerous. Um, you wouldn't be happen to uh, be heading there, uh, would you? I, I mean, you, you can. Um, you know, maybe, maybe we won't take it. You know, we're not going to take your weapons because that we're we're pretty good people. All, all things considering, I mean, you know, I I wouldn't suggest using your weapons now, though. That would um, that would probably be a bad decision. I mean, didn't you burn down an orphanage? Kill your family. Yes, I seem to recall devil worship. Whoa, am I famous now or something? That's crazy. No, you told us already. The sad part is you aren't. <clears throat> I, mean, I didn't really ever want to be famous, so yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> okay, um... Oof. Uh, All right. I'm sorry. Your tricks are a little bit freaky, but we're not into this hoodoo voodoo stuff. So, boots, gold, no, uh, food. Urk is gonna turn to Toby. Did you hear that? Uh, yeah, I I did. Um, I mean, he doesn't yeah. really speak for us, but like he seemed like a pretty reasonable fellow. So. No, th this is really just kind of business relationship and transaction. We can just be done with this pretty quickly, I think. I'm, I'm not... Never mind, it must have been the wind. Um... <clears throat> okay, yeah, um... I mean, you, you're you a bird. You probably know what the wind's saying better than me. Yes, yes. Um... I mean, you don't need to give over your boots. Those boots are... I was it's like, yeah, you can keep those, man. Um, I, probably your golden food, though. That's... Um, I'm probably going to need that. Um, yeah, yeah. Um... Right. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. Here, have fifty gold. Oh yeah, man. Hey, thanks. You you know, this is some good stuff. Uh, you can keep the food. Um. Yeah. Have a nice night. Uh. Rich guy. Rich guy over here. <laughs> Toby's gonna start walking. <laughs> Urk is like not even focusing on Toby. 
Um, I'll wave the one near me over. You can see the dragonborn woman makes her way over and looks down at you. I already know my shoes won't fit you. I pull out 30 gold. Get yourself something tailored. She'll smile and nod. Ah, I knew I liked you. And she'll take the gold and be on her way. Now, all of you, this was a rough start, but it has turned into one of the most efficient robberies that we've ever been a part of. It's okay. You already did it once. Um, well, that's totally not ominous at all. Come on, pretty boy. Okay. Uh, Devit. Right? Devit? Uh, Devet, yeah. Devit? Devet. <laughs> um, I mean, if you've uh, met me before, you probably know my name, right? Yeah, uh, okay. Um, have you ever had one of those, like, conversations with your friends where you're like, hey, if we were ever stuck in a time loop, what would you tell me so I knew we were in a time loop? Uh, have you ever done that before? No, that sounds really dumb. Okay, okay, but if you were in a time loop, what could I tell you to convince you you were in a time loop? Uh, man, I don't know. I Probably my brother's name. Okay, and what is your brother's name? Peter. Oh, P Peter's your brother's name. Huh? Okay, okay, good, 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 good. Um, well, I, I doubt you will believe me this time around, and hopefully it is the last time, but, uh, okay. Uh, here, here is my gold, um, and I'll hand them all of my gold, which I don't know the amount from before, and I think it was like 132 gold. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> pleasure doing business, then. Okay, yes, um, good luck. I hope that this is the last time we see each other, hopefully. Yeah, okay, that, that's cool. And at the moment, Piper, you can see this jet black tiefling has walked over to you. Gold, boots food I think Piper will just kind of probably hold out his 40 gold and say um, if I give you 40 can you spare me the boots and the food nah good enough and will snatch the 40 gold and begin to make their way out <laughs> Well, did, did my Midas touch affect the like pouch of gold at all? How does that? Did you? To what extent does that work? So, how did you grab the gold? Are are you? I mean, did you like just like gingerly like reach in and only grab the gold, or did you fumble open the bag and? Uh, secondary question. Just... Mm -hmm. Are we aware of these powers? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, um, since we're not aware, um, I mean, Piper probably has the patch of coins in, like, a bag for somewhere easily accessible. Mm -hmm. Um, so he would have handed it over, um, since he doesn't know, he probably wouldn't have been careful not to touch the tiefling, though. He probably wouldn't have really been thinking about that contact. Gotcha. Then as you pass it over, all of you watch as, like, the tiefling gets, like, momentarily knocked by Piper, begins to take a few steps, and then just turns solid gold. <laughs> hey! Oh. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, what? Looks like you've got gold there. That's not normal. That's very not normal. What did you do? How did you do? You didn't do that before. Piper's just looking at his hands and he'll go, I, I, I really don't know. Shit, guys! 
That's turned into gold. Let's get out of here. <laughs> and they're going to start to run. <laughs> Did they take that with them? Yes, or? absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> of course they did. See, the real I like how they is, started to run off they... without him and then realized he couldn't follow and had to turn and pick him up. See, for me, I'm thinking of it as like, they're not leaving because they're afraid. They're leaving because they got just a <laughs> statue of gold now. They absolutely. They don't care anymore. <laughs> oh my god. Poor Bat. They didn't care at all. <laughs> Um, Damn, the bandits okay. didn't care. That's crazy. I think the important thing in this con situation is not to touch anything, Piper. Okay. Um, my horse, my problem. Then hold up. Uh, well, and um, I'm gonna try to use hydromancy. I don't have hydromancy anymore, so nothing happens. I bet you have no hydromancy. Okay. That's problematic. I don't have my magic anymore, guys. Um, so, Peter, what's the first thing you touch? <laughs> um, I actually would have been gingerly about my gold with the bandit and made sure not to touch him, just simply because I'm afraid of him. Alrighty, I'll, I'll, I'll touch a stone on the ground to test this. Mm-hmm. Does it turn to gold? It does. Oh, <laughs> crap. Okay, uh, guys, maybe everyone wants to test this out a little. Um, so... Alright, I'll pick up a rock. Gotcha. So, you pick up a rock. I'm clear. Earth walls, though. Urk will also do the same. Gotcha. Pick up a rock. As you pick up the rock, if you set down this rock, the world will end. Urk. Urk is just going to hold onto the rock. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's the schizo. <laughs> oh, there we go. It must have I been the wind. I forgot about that. Um, I didn't. Okay. Can someone who's not my brother or Piper feel my forehead really fast? I feel really hot. Um, sure. Um, and Urk will run over and feel his forehead with one hand and hold onto the rock with the other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Isa feels perfectly normal. No temperature disparities. Like, like, I'm cold, like usual? Normal temperature, right? Yeah, just, just normal, like, humanoid body temperature. No, you have a perfectly normal body temperature. Shit. Okay. Okay, I think we can assume that whatever happened, um, messed with our abilities. Okay. I agree. Um, Colin, based off of what I know now with this being like a weird time loop thing, do the constellations make more sense? Like, does it look like they're appearing at like later times of the year versus their, what they should be this time of year? Uh, in a way, yeah. I mean, they're they're okay. definitely in different positions. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, the bandit said that they hadn't gone into the red haze, so I guess the red haze isn't actually the border of this mess, but it's still stronger there. Um. If probably none of them were Aether souls, do you think that's why they couldn't remember? I think they don't remember because they weren't there. That could be it too. Hmm. Mm. 
their lives are just the same. <clears throat> we shouldn't go that way again. We have to no. go again. I know. We but can try that's... and go around, but it'll be slower going. Especially I... when two of our number can't touch their horses. Yeah. Well, you're standing on the ground just fine. Um, Your shoes and clothes haven't changed. Maybe if we can get... I don't know, do any of you have gloves I can borrow? Mm. <sighs> no, but if we get to town, we might be able to go through people's stuff. Yeah, the pretty big if at this point. Yeah, um... Uh, Alright, well... Uh, can I? Uh, okay, um, hold up. Uh, Issa, would you reach into my bag real quick? Mm, yeah. Okay, uh, could you tear out, like, four pieces of paper for my journal? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, here, can you place them just folded over the reins of the horse for me, please. And uh, I'll, I'll touch it, and it should turn to gold, and then I should be able to just hold on to those, like, handles. Ah, good call. I'll try and, um, wrap the paper in, like, cuffs, sort of, as best as I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you um, want me to lift you up there? Probably. Um, yeah. Um, I'm not entirely sure that's the best idea. Sorry. It should work. Should. I don't Again. know if should be gambling with people. Can we also test this theory, like, on a stick? Whether it goes through the paper or not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes more sense. Let's test that Instead of, test you know, then. the horse. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, fuck that horse. So horse. <laughs> so, uh, what happens when you test this, like, on a stick? Yeah, the, the paper becomes gold leaf, but the stick underneath is fine. Okay. Now, by gold leaf, is it, like, very, very, like, thin and fragile, or is it enough to, like, hold its shape? Gold leaf is thin and malleable, um, but it can hold its shape as long as you don't tear it. Okay. With my studies of magic, does this ring any bells to me at all? No. What's going on? None. <laughs> you good, okay. Jonah? No, I'm dying. Philly <laughs> was not kind to me. Oh, God. Hold um, no. <laughs> Philadelphia isn't um, kind to anybody. That's kind of their MO, bro. Hmm. They booed Santa Claus. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe that. No, it's a famous That's event. Wild. That's wild. Booing Santa Claus. They threw beer Same. bottles at him. <laughs> God, all on the Santa night. Claus has had it too good for too long. <laughs> <laughs> for too long. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I think we need to start making our way to Cantor. Um, can I just layer multiple pieces of paper over it just in case one tear is the one of an equal hold? Sure. Okay, and I'll. Uh, can we do the same for Piper if Piper is interested in doing it that way? Piper. Yeah. Uh, Freyer, could I have some of that paper too? No, of course, of course. I can just rip some sleeves off my jacket, or my robes, and. Oh no, that was a gift from Aunt. No, uh, mm. I mean. I think she'd understand. I mean, would she? <laughs> I don't want to upset anyone. Just the paper should be fine. Mm. Mm. Okay. Fine. And then I'll uh, follow suit with uh, what Freyr did. Um, 
Yeah, go for it. Yep. Since it seems our cook cannot do that anymore, I can make us breakfast before we leave. Sure, that sounds nice. Thank you. Burke's eyes are darting around, but he says, Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Are you feeling all right, Urk? I, I'm feeling fine. I'm just a little on edge. It's a weird situation. Mm. Yeah, you could say that again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Breakfast sounds good. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'll I'll just give Issa some like winters with breakfast. Issa is not happy sitting next to the fire. Yeah. I feel like I'm burning. It'll. It, uh, I'm sorry. Um. We'll it's figure this fine. out quickly. It'll change again, probably. Gotcha. So, just a, a simple breakfast being cooked up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, probably. Oh, well, it's like three. Yeah, two or three. Yeah, and while it's cooking, Colin, can I test out the Midas touch thing a bit more, where it's like, is it just my hand? Is it any skin contact? It seems to be just, like, your fingertips. Just the fingertips. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. So if I like held a spoon in between my like thumb and index finger, it's, I, it would still be a regular spoon. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Piper, what do you think would happen if we touched our two fingers together? Uh, Not going to lie, I was just thinking about that. Yeah, would it like cancel cancel it out, or would we just both turn to stone? Do you think I if you think cut off your would... finger, it would still do that? I don't know if I want to try that yet. Hey, Freya, you turn into a <laughs> werewolf. As <laughs> mid sentence, you watch as in the blink of an eye, Freya's skin rips off as this. Massive eight foot tall black werewolf is now standing there. Can can we can werewolves talk when we're transformed? Uh this one cannot. Can <laughs> <laughs> I understand him though, because that's an animal? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Take a deep happening. breath. Holy crap! That's a wolf, man! <laughs> it, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's, oh my god! Fine. Who said that? <laughs> I, Isa, you hearing the horses go crazy. <laughs> um, uh, okay, I... Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Holy fucking shit! <laughs> It's just, I've heard I stories about this. I turn, I, I turn around to the. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Can, can we all Prayer calm down and like stop pacing, talking? Pacing, pacing wildly. <laughs> Isa, um, you're asking us to calm down. Um, if I'm not mistaken, your brother just turned into a werewolf. I think we're understandably a little freaked out. <laughs> yes, but if everyone keeps talking, my head is going to explode. Prayer is now in a fetal position on the ground. Okay. Hey, it's down! Stomp him to death! <laughs> no, 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 no. No. <laughs> Freya, it's... It's fine. This is just... Probably another side effect. Uh... Okay, I didn't study lycanthropy at all. Um... 
Um, He's just gonna go over and, like, I don't know, do a check over. Freya turns back to a human. <laughs> Call it just transforming her. I, it hurt for a second, but then it was fine. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Wow, I'm back. Mm. Okay. We should get going before something else weird happens. Please. Hey, Isa, were you talking to those horses? What? That wasn't... I guess... Hey, yo, what happened to him? Do you have any it, carrots? Just, well... No! No, not right. Ugh. Yes, yes we do. Hold on. Your your horse is hungry. You can see all the oh, horses uh, kind of start to line up. <laughs> they're all, they're hungry. all hungry. I... I... I'll I think take care bag of bag is kind of difficult right now. I'll, I'll take care of yours. Okay, I think, thank you. I think it's best if we move on. Uh, before anything gets weirder, I'm going to fly up and get a vantage point, and Urk is going to try and fly and fail miserably. <laughs> I'm just face first. <laughs> Urk, are you okay? No, no, this makes sense. It really doesn't, but okay. <laughs> Your okay. wings aren't broken, are they? You can see Urk mm. has spread his wings, and uh, you can see the feathers are now very nicely painted ceramic, Urk. Oh my gosh. How? Oh. Why are they ceramic, ceramic for me? Or are they feathers? Oh yeah, they're they're ceramic for you. Do you... I guess my wings are ceramic now. Do, do you mind if I take a look? Well, um, sure. Um, Issa will go over and, I guess, feel up at, like, the top where the bone connection would be and then down onto the feathers. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you go and you're feeling up where the bone connection should be. And on each bone connection, as you kind of like squeeze and pry, you hear a... Uh -uh. It's like a weird like honking noise. It's not supposed Is to it... be there. Not that I'm going to try, but do they feel like they could be... The feathers could be snapped off easily? Like, are they movable or are they kind of they can wiggle but you don't think snapped off easily okay I mean I don't think your anatomy is supposed to do this and I think your bones know that your um... bones agree Oh god. Your bones agree, Irk. Yeah, yeah, you hear them agree. Yes, Perhaps I think, that's true. I think that's true. The bones are telling me that they shouldn't work like that. Okay, I don't <laughs> no we can talk about that on the ride there. Um I'm gonna go feed the horses real fast. Hell yeah! Um, yep. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um, Eric is going to turn to the nearest person, uh, probably Alden. I'm s looking at me like I'm acting strange. I don't think I'm acting strange. Am I acting strange? I mean, only a little bit more than your usual. That That voice comes out of Alden's mouth. Alden, are you doing all right? Yeah, I'm totally fine. <sighs> um, did you see uh, that um, tree over there? 
from a wet tree. Do we see a tree? <laughs> no. <laughs> Alden's not speaking. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, God. Hmm? <laughs> um, I'm yeah, I see that. So. <laughs> I see the tree over there, yeah. There's no tree. <laughs> well, I see the tree over there. Mm -hmm, of course. So there's a tree. Absolutely. All right, let's get moving. Um, Issa? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, could you ask if the horses remember the loop? Ah, uh, I suppose so. Um, Mead, my friend. Hey, uh, yeah. Do you, do you remember what happened from today? Uh, yeah. Recount to me what happened about, I don't know, in the past few hours. Recounts everything up to the bandit camp. No, the answer's no. Thank you, Mead. I get the sure, that... Oh, hey, yeah, no problem. Okay, well... Did then... you know <laughs> that there's a man? And you can see, like, one of the horses walks up to you. Did you know that there's a man? And that man walks around the rings, collecting a tie of bones. Did you fucking know that? They're just letting him walk around here. Just let him walk around, Issa. Do I know who he's talking about? <laughs> no. Make a mental check. Okay. <laughs> and this would be butters. Oh, oh no. Butter. I butters want to use my hero long. point on this because I think it's funny. Okay. We only have two. <laughs> oh, and wow. One success. You think you know might be the banker of bones. Are you talking about the banker? No, maybe. Look, all I know, man, is I woke up a, a little bit ago, and I have knowledge of things. There was a thing. There was the first vampire. His name's the Umber Prince. He tried to start something called the Crimson Storm. It was crazy. A town called Purity. Do you know that? I'm a horse. I shouldn't know this information. You- Hold on, you said- Do I know what he's talking about now? <laughs> I assume not. Not really. <laughs> okay. You- You- You said- I know what a mortgage is! <laughs> You said that this I shouldn't know why do I know what mortgages are? The concept of money is not this natural to horses. Butters, butters, butters. I'm this flipping out, man. <laughs> it's okay. You're I look here, carrot, look, look. More you, food. Somehow I don't think I want carrots. <laughs> all food. the other horses gasped. <laughs> okay. I, I like you, I like the thing. I think I like pasta. I don't know why. Pasta. Okay. Are you you? Were you a person? No, I'm a horse. Okay. Why do you? This information just came to you. I have a crippling fear of lockers. Okay. I don't think you could fit in one. So. That's good. No, yeah, I know. It's just, I don't understand yeah, how the safe. wheel works. The I understand a, a mortgage, not the fucking wheel. The wheel. The locker the wheel. wheel. of a locker? Yeah. The locker wheel. Uh -huh, yeah. I'm okay. not really insane. There's a, he says currently having a discussion with a horse. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's true. I am. Okay. Um, Did, uh, does anybody know who the Umber Prince is? No. 
I assume not, right? No. Yeah. No. Assuming, no. Assuming, assuming none of us have heard of that. None of, uh, don't have, then, uh, where do you... You're from... Uh, uh, Bospora, right? I mean, I think... Look, man, I'm a horse. I don't have a concept of, like, homeland or anything. Okay, but you have <laughs> oh, the concept God. of the banker of bones? And mortgages. And more Okay, that's not the concerning part, though. I... I, I uh, did a mortgage. That's scary. You don't have to pay one, though. Other people pay your mortgage for you. You're a horse. That kind of seems speciesist. I could well, own a I home. Mean, do you want to pay a mortgage? I want to own a home. So you want to pay a mortgage? You want to pay mortgages? No, I don't want to guy. pay a mortgage. I just want to have like, living. The tax man that just came. The guy that just came. He would come to your house and knock on the door and demand a mortgage. You want that? Uh, no. You no, wouldn't I, just want to be a horse and live off of somebody else's kindness. I I just want to have housing. You, well, yeah, but, you would. But like, but like in a horse house. Isa? Would you cook? Yeah. Why are you talking about mortgages with butters? <laughs> <laughs> He's worried about them. Why? He's a horse. Did you? Okay, yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell him. Isa, did you teach butters what mortgages are? <laughs> no. He brought it up. <laughs> Listen, I, it's, prob it's, prob it's, it's probably fine. It's, prob it's probably fine. I don't think he looks he's, okay. okay. No, he's talking about the banker of bones and how he collects his tithe of bones and the first vampire and mortgages in a uh, there. Uh, there's a town called Purity. He's afraid of lockers. Well, I mean, uh, I wouldn't be concerned until he starts talking about subprime loans. <laughs> Butters, do you know what a loan is? Isa, why would you ask him that? He's so stressful. What is your concept of money? How do you know what money is? I, I'm having an existential breakdown. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> Butters, I'm going to give you some pens. Butters, we... Isa, I, promise, Isa, I, promise. I have dark eldritch knowledge that a horse is never supposed to have. <laughs> No horse should ever have concepts okay, of mortgages. Okay. We, the eldritch knowledge of mortgages cannot hurt you. But what if I go bankrupt? You, I won't let that happen to you. How does a horse declare bankruptcy? I don't even know if you can legally declare bankruptcy so i'm just stuck with the dead forever no no i don't even know if you can be dead <laughs> you watch his butters just runs away <laughs> no fuck <laughs> please come back no. please you um, don't have to we won't let you go into debt my financial planning started so late Alden's gonna start like running after the horse to try and catch it and immediately catch up. Completely <laughs> by accident. <laughs> and maybe run into think, a tree. I think I'm. Guys, I think we should go back to bed for another hour. Honestly, I don't think we should go back to bed for another hour. I just. I need. I need to sit down. Let's just agree to have some quiet time on the road, alright? You know what, Erk? I love quiet time, says your brother, Doug, Urk. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Hey, no problem, man. Who is Doug? Urk is just going to point at it there. Uh, Doug. And, and as you turn to point, it's just, he's gone. Ah, plenty guy, that Doug. <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, everybody. That's still you... not as concerning as talking about mortgages with a Mead, horse. Mead, Mead, you don't. You don't know the Banker of Bones, right? What's that? Okay. All right. You don't know mortgages? I I am a horse. Okay. Okay. You can teach it to me. No, I. Your friend, Butters. I don't think. Maybe later. Okay. Do you got another carrot? Yeah, of course. Hell yeah. I, you, 
Why does your horse- I don't understand. Okay, okay, okay. There's a lot of things we don't understand. Okay. Let's get moving. Do I know where purity is? <laughs> no. <laughs> does anyone have a map? <laughs> I, I think you're getting stuck on things that aren't really uh, relevant. I just want to know. What is happening? Okay, fine. Everybody, can, did you get the horse? I mean, he would have run after it after tripping a couple of times because okay. he's mm -hmm. faster than he's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, let's just finish breakfast and go. Right, uh, this time when we go into the haze, we should look out for that hole that opened up in the ground. I don't... Hopefully we can avoid it. I don't know. We can go off path instead. Well, at least if everything does happen exactly how it happened before, if we are more prepared. Okay. Okay. Are there, um, are we in like a completely kind of open field area right now, or are there yeah. trees around? I mean, there are few trees speckled here and there. It's Savannah. Can I head to one of the trees and I, I want to see if it's too big for my Midas touch or if I can touch it and the entire thing will turn to gold? Sure. You can touch the tree. There's a second as the tree kind of quakes a bit and then gold. Oh, Freya and I might have a plan if we run into that giant dwarf again. Yeah, I thought about that, but even for him, I think, I don't know, being turned to gold seems bad. Well, sure, but I mean, maybe this will happen again. Maybe it'll reset and he won't be gold after that. Probably. Yeah. It is unfortunate for him either way, but, you know, I care a lot about all of you guys. I don't want any one of us to get taken by him. Yeah, and he might not even be real anyways. I mean, I think that guy was real. I mean, he was a giant dwarf. Yeah, in like a jungle with a a normal-sized Goliath. I think that guy was real. Maybe weird. he's someone else who got stuck in the loop and he's had weird things happen to him like we did. He seems to be thriving. Did everyone finish breakfast? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. Let's, We're ready to uh, go. Yeah, let's get to the edge. Um, make sure it didn't move any further, and then I'll tell the horses to keep a... I don't know, if they... Mead started acting weird before the floor dropped, so I think if I can warn them of something like that, they might be able to just start running immediately when they feel something weird. I well, like your funny words, path. man. I like your funny words. <clears throat> I'm ready to go. Let's get okay. going. I'm ready. Come on, butters. <laughs> hey, what is butters. an interest payment? <laughs> We're going to protect you from all of that stuff, okay? We'll help you. You're not alone. It'll be okay. Don't worry, butters. Capitalism can't hurt you now. <laughs> Capitalism, <laughs> capitalism can't hurt you. I don't know what I the word capitalism it. means. But you know, I am not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Ask. What's capitalism? Tell me. It's a very, very. I have a right to evil know. System. You're not gonna let that happen to us, right? I would never let it happen to you. You're never gonna let capitalism get a hold of us. No. Whew. No, we'll overthrow it. What do you mean, overthrow it? 
Are we already in a system of capitalism? I don't. Do I know that? What system do we operate under, Colin? Capitalism. <laughs> uh, no. It just, you know, if it ever does happen, we'll overthrow it. Make a spirit check. It. What are we even doing here? <laughs> Talking to horses. Oh, no. That one was cocked on my screen. <laughs> nope. Holy shit, we're so fucked! And the rest of you just hear, uh, Nay! Nay! <laughs> um, <laughs> what did you teach him about this time? He said... Uh, he didn't... Well, if I say it, he's gonna freak out about it again. That's fair. He, he was... I, C -A -P -T, I can't spell capitalism. You just, you just say that out. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, why would you? Lisa, no. Why? I didn't even tell him what it was. Oh, boy. Everybody knows it's evil just from hearing it. I just said it was evil. Oh, God. They did say it was evil. Oh, God. It's okay. okay. It's We're not letting it. Fine. I'm... You know what? You know what? Let's go, Butters. A good run, Wolf. I'm gonna. What's he <laughs> saying? Kill myself right here. <laughs> and I'll, he... I'll start trying to get Gallop so that they can he... focus on. He other said. Things he then. said, "Let's go." I'm gonna run away from capitalism. He just starts yeah, like we're running. going. We're going. Printing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on our way. You're you're finally on your way. Is there anything Lord. you want to do on your way? Uh, yeah, um, Alden will actually ride up next to Urk and just sort of strike up a conversation. Uh, hey, Urk. Mm. Yes? Uh, I've just, I just had this feeling, like, I, I need to talk to you. I need to say something to you. Alright, um, I'm listening. And he'll sort of lean in close and just sort of start to whisper to you. <laughs> Down the road and around the bend. This campaign will meet its end. Where Mist of Red sits in wait, the bird of the party will meet his fate. And then he'll walk away. <laughs> you can take a hero point for that. <laughs> yes. I need a second. <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, okay, um, and I'd like to point out Urk is holding the reins, but in one hand he is still holding that rock. <laughs> Very fair. You collect rocks so or something? This is so weird, Doug. I know, man! These people are crazy! I'm a man. <laughs> Doug's on another horse. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Did you say something? I was talking to Doug. <laughs> uh, yeah. You collect rocks? No. Okay. Why? You're just... You've got, like, a death... Like, I feel like I can see blood pooling in your hands. Like, you've got a death grip on that thing. A very important rock. If I drop it, the world wand. Oh... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um. That's. That sucks. Oh, look, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like 30 miles away. <laughs> At the... You can just see it in the distance. <laughs> At the eight mile mark from Cantor. You come to this reddish haze. It's uh, further than it was. It's getting it's bigger. Oh, I don't think we no. have many attempts at this. Okay. Well, All right. Horses? Yeah, Alrighty. I'm ready. I need you. If you feel something under the ground. I just want you to start going. 
Just start running. Like, okay. Like what do you like? like dirt? No, like shaking or like something's coming. Okay. Vibration. Unusual. Something that you feel uneasy about. Right. Got it, boss. <laughs> okay. I'm just picturing Do like, we want to go same pass? In Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to go the same way? Uh, we can sure. try and avoid the place where the hole opened up, but yeah. Uh, what time of day was it last time when we got to the hole? Uh, it was about eight or nine a.m. An hour early. <laughs> or yeah, an hour we're early. an hour early. I was gonna say maybe it already happened, but no dice. Let's go. Well, let's. Uh, maybe we don't know yet. Who knows how this works? Yeah. What's a what's a attempt to go around it? Yeah. So we'll keep going on the path and then divert for that section. That's fine with me. Yeah, sure. Gotcha. Um, Jonah, can you roll a d6 for me real quick? Sure. Uh-oh, I lost one. That's okay. Uh, three. Mm -hmm. Who's going first? Isa. Gotcha. Then, Isa, as you spur your steed mead on... They pass into the shimmer with the rest of the horses, and you then feel Mead stop and go, Hey, uh, Isa? Yeah? I, I'm not feeling so, ha! And you watch as a horn shoots from their head, and then another, a second horn, as your horse goes, I don't understand! As you watch as their, like, flowing mane begins to change, they start to grow a little smaller, uh, and they become, uh, and this is also happening to all of your horses, too. This is, they become Oryx. <laughs> Oryx? Oryx. Oh. That's right. Yeehaw. Are they are they able to take our weight, or do we have to get off to avoid like hurting them? They're able to take your weight, yeah. They're. I think okay. Issa jumps down and like does a once over. Why do I have horns, hurt. man? I don't know. Are orcs native to this area? No. Okay. <laughs> Would we even know what an orc is? Um. You probably would, yeah. You're you're a fairly well studied man. Huh. They're all orcs. Don't even... That's weird. They're they're immortal <laughs> horses, don't you know? Huh? They're I immortal didn't... horses. I don't even know what kind of animal An orc. I could, I could get An immortal orc, horse. But mortal? Immortal. Immortal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't hurt anywhere, does it? Still? Uh, no. No, I, I'm good now. Okay. I'm sorry. More weird shit's gonna keep happening. Why? That's our job to find out. Should really figure that one out, boss. We'll do our best. You ready to continue? Yeah, I guess so. Pop back is, Butter, on. is Butters freaking out again? Butters seems very calm. This is his natural state. <laughs> yeah, well, you hear him muttering, going, the, the horse had to deal with the mortgages. I am something new. I am free. Free at last. <laughs> <laughs> never works for him. He has freed himself from mortgages. Oh, yeah. Subprime loans. <laughs>
Gotcha then. Are all of you continuing onward? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then, Peter, go ahead and roll a d100 for me. Oh, here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, fun. Oh. Ooh. A 94. A 94. Lovely. Then, would you guys wish to repeat your previous encounter, or would you like to divert and go somewhere new? Mm. I would like to go somewhere new. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was that cabin we didn't explore. But we gotta escape the <laughs> giant. And I can't do shit. I mean, I'm pretty sure we could just turn him to gold and then he'd be dead. My vote's for new, we're diverting. That was our original plan anyway. True. Divert. Yeah, I'll, I'll divert. Fuck yeah. Gotcha. Divert, divert. Then, I'll go with you guys. Then as you divert and you head around the paper mache ground, you keep on going until there are kind of like posts on the side of the road with colorful streamers and bands all about. And you can see that there are wagons lined up on either side, beginning a few more miles down. Um, and kind of at an intersection here on this road, you can see that there is a stand with an exhausted looking halfling man. He's probably in his hundreds, bald head, big thick glasses, you know, a swiffer of a mustache in a three piece suit. He kind of looks up as all of you approach. Ah, uh, hello. Would you like to rent a wagon? You know this place was supposed to be evacuated, right? I know. But my my boss, I need I need to have a hundred people rent a wagon. How many have you had so far? <clears throat> uh well you know, um and he kind of like pulls out a ledger book. Somewhere between Five and eighty. Hard to keep track. But oh, these wagons, oh. they can take you anywhere. We got rental wagon routes to, to Cantor, and, and all these routes come with the map. We have one that, that goes to Mama's cabin. We have another that goes to the fighting ring. Um, One goes <laughs> to a world-famous restaurant. I mean, it, it's all... It's all in front of you. Who oh, is Mama? Um. Uh, you can see he like checks his ledger. Uh, uh, um, uh, a real nice lady. Well, we are going to Cantor. Why don't we help him out by renting a wagon? Uh, oh, she, she, she does origami. If you like origami. Mm. Cabin. Uh -huh. oh. Okay. Uh, um, how much to rent a wagon? Oh shit, man! I I don't know. Uh, uh one... what about the... Can I just like give you money to like people? leave? I I I can't leave until I have a hundred people signed up for rentals. Why don't you okay. just write down a bunch of names? Who's going to check? My boss. What's your boss's name? Peter. <laughs> oh, uh, that dipshit. <laughs> uh, why don't we? Why don't we rent a wagon? Okay. 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 Yeah. It's going to Cantor. Okay. So you you want that. the you want the Cantor route? Yep. Okay. Yes. He makes a note of that. <laughs> Cool. Um, the uh, uh, this wagon take you right to Candra. Then uh, here, and he pulls out what seems to be a set of keys, and he tosses them to you, Irk. Thank you. Keys to a wagon. 
Yeah, to make it go. To make it go. We're, just, we're not going to question anything in here anymore, are Okay, right? okay, okay, okay. Uh, where do we sign? Uh, do I, should I have been taking signatures? Do we you... have any money, or...? Shit, I forgot! I need... Money's probably a thing. I Sorry, I just yeah. got this job. That's fair. How... That's fair. You've been pretty busy. Um, I really have. Would uh, 30 bold be good? Is is that market going rate? Right? I think that is that a market lot. going rate. Right? I think it's a lot. <laughs> it's probably a lot more. Listen, I just want to move on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, could could you pass us the ledger and a pen? Yeah, I'll pass you over the ledger and pass okay, you over a pen. And... Wait, okay, maybe nice. someone other than being... prayer. Well, yeah, I'm being careful not to have it touch my fingertips at all. And in very, like, sloppy handwriting, I'm just going to write uh, 100, like, number 100, and then my name, and then underneath a note from saying, uh, great job, you can take a break now, signed, Peter, your boss. And hand it back to, hand the ledger back and be like, Oh, and look at that. We're, we're your number 100 customer. And it seems like your boss left a note for you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm free. And you watch as the halfling like bounces up out of the shop, does a little dance and goes running out into like the rolling fields and then falls through the fucking ground. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> We can never talk about what just happened. <laughs> what do you mean take, nothing happened? Kindness. Let's just take the wagon and go. Okay. How do I start oh. this thing? <laughs> As you... click the chirp are there the more right keys? <laughs> there are. There are a lot of keys. What the fuck? As you go, uh, okay. you find a, a simple like wagging cart it's not even like covered or anything and it has a a lock on the front uh connected to nothing like this small little red lock it's not even hitched to anything wild can i unlock it with the key yep as soon as you do you like watches the wagon slowly begins to roll down the path oh let's follow it <laughs> i don't nice we're getting on the wagon I'm staying on my horse, man. I don't think I'm a horse anymore. That's <laughs> right. I'm staying on mead. Um, and he said that each wagon comes with a map. Can we find the map? Uh, looking at it, like, on the inside of the wagon, like, painted on the floorboards, it just has an arrow that, like, <laughs> is pointing straight, and it says canter. I love that. That's amazing. Okay, yeah, let's just follow this wagon and it'll take us to Cantor. Probably. Does it have a place for the keys to go that would start it other than that lock? No, it has no other locks on it. What the fuck? That's probably fine. Okay. <sighs> Let's him. just keep going. Hey, you got any more carrots? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's been a while. Spare a creature of indeterminate species a carrot? <laughs> I think the bird said you're an auric. But yes, I'll spare you a carrot. Heck yeah. Um, snack. Crunch. Crunch. But as you go and follow the wagon, it is a few hours later when you crest a hilltop. And as you do, you look and see a frankly crazy scene ahead of you. As it looks to be like this 
interwoven pathway of roads amongst trees that are also oceans and sky and it is a incomprehensible mess ahead of you however as you are looking uh Freyer, you can see towards like one end of this place there is like a weird like graveyard like centered in a bunch of mist there is from where you're looking um Irk, like a castle towards the center of this place like a full-on golden gilded castle um strangely enough isa as you're looking around you catch like on the side of this place as well like this patch that seems relatively normal and it's just like a, a small like cottage-esque house in the distance um and then it's also strange looking at this piper as there appears to be like in the sky above this place kind of this flashing red glow that trails down to the ground kind of on the northern side of Cantor, like this massive scar in the world of reddening energy and with each flash that is released from this spiraling energy this town you think Cantor grows ever more warped and contorted you said there was one patch that seemed unaffected right yeah there's one patch that seems unaffected like again everything else is like this weird mismatched like like place that you can see um otherwise like the the only other places are like the weird reddening scar the the graveyard <laughs> that cabin and then of course like the castle well this is not what cancer looked like in the books um, cancer always have a castle i don't know i think it's safe to assume no um i bet that you know giant scar in space time is uh, the culprit so do we want oh to... also colin does my sense magic do anything you trying to use sense magic oh well i don't um... know that i have it <laughs> so i assume it'll just kind of happen randomly at some point if i'm focusing if you try to focus you would learn that you have it but you would have to focus more to use it. Okay. Um, gotcha. Uh, I, if, if I'm aware enough that I have it, I will not be using it on purpose because oh, okay. I don't want my brain to explode. But, I you know, mean... Want your brain to explode. Scrambled eggs, bro. Scrambled eggs. Yeah, yeah. You know how they said that? How they said they sent, like, a team of, you know, seers and magic users and stuff to inspect this place, and they all went crazy? I could well, never... Well, straight up died. I could never tell you why they went crazy. That's... That's wild. <laughs> I mean, I think the most suspicious place currently is the cottage. But I also think that because there's nothing there, it might be the most dangerous. That's fair. Um, I mean, shall we see if there's anyone inside? See what's I, happening? Yeah, Start I think it's around worth checking out. Yeah, sure. In case the world explodes again? Yeah. We'll, we'll go to the cottage yeah. first and then the scar. I mean, I was going to say graveyard, castle, cottage, scar. Yeah. So, like, going through the town, um, you said that the, uh, the cottage was on the northern side. No, that's where the Scar is. glow is. Mm -hmm. The cottage is in the distance. Mm -hmm. So that should 
probably be our last stop. The cottage is in either the east or the west. Okay, well, that's great. Um, Thumbs up. Is there a path that we could take where we could hit most of these landmarks in, like, a concise order? Yeah, just follow <laughs> the road. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Oh, just follow the road. Lovely. Oh, joy. <laughs> Check everything out. A oh. walking tour, if you will. Are you familiar with those, Ryan? I've actually not. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, it's like when someone <laughs> takes you around a place and like tells you about it. Like a tour guide? Mm, yeah, I guess. Oh. Uh, not familiar. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of lame. True. <laughs> All right, then you're following the pathway to the graveyard. If that's the first stop uh, on the path, it could be. Could be the first stop, indeed. I don't want to sure. limit you with first stop opportunities. That would, you know, that'd be wild. And uh, I'm not about that life. I'm just going to be completely honest. <laughs> so true. We got to make it. A We'll do graveyard. Yeah, we'll do graveyard. Gotcha. Gay yard. <laughs> Whoa, crazy. <laughs> Wild. Then, as you start to make your way towards this graveyard down the path, everything starts to become a little bit more foggy, grim. The liveliness of canter that was once there now seemingly a foreign memory as you begin to pass through this space you can see like tombstones all about you amongst the trees it's like all time and space is just <laughs> congealing in this place as you begin to make your way through you see like further on down the path this massive creature just sitting there looking at all of you like a massive like ogre like giant of sorts kind of gives off this strange like ghostly hue How, how far is it from us? It's just looking? Yeah, it seems maybe like a hundred feet. It's not making any, um... Like, moves towards us? Just... Not, not that you can see. Does it appear armed? It does appear to have arms. You know very well I meant weapons. Uh, yeah. Does... That, does... Uh, okay. From what you can see, it, it, there appears to be a spear stuck in it. Stuck in it? Very fun. Talking to it? Him? Her? Uh, I suppose... Uh... I'll kind of... Oh. I'll, I'll dismount. <clears throat> and looking at, like, the... Hmm? You? Me. Sorry to be blunt, but you... You can't use your cryomancy anymore are you if you go f first are you able to defend yourself if he attacks no but i can take the first hit no that's no prayer will get off before. why not um 
You uh, lost your magic too? Yes, but I... It's, it's, it's different. See, and I'll hold up my glaive. I have a little bit of experience with this. Well, I'm better off. <clears throat> Freyer can also turn it to gold. True. Right. And chili. Isn't that magic, though? Wouldn't it be acting weird? Mm -hmm. Um, can I... Do the gravestones have much on them? Yeah. Names, dates of life and death. Do they do appear to be sense? like... Yeah. Or are they like dreamlike where it's just kind of garbled? No, like they're all legible. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're all like... I mean, generally names of perhaps the region or... I mean, not even that. It's stuff like, you know, R.I.P. James Treadwell, A Beautiful Soul, like, born mm -hmm. 699 AR, died, um, like, 707 AR. That's sad. See. Are, um, any of the graves dated for after the evacuation zone stuff started happening, or do they all seem to be prior to that? They all seem to be prior. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I'll go up and ask this guy what he knows. Mm hmm. And a uh, prayer will walk up towards the guy. Um, uh, hello. Hi. Are you 21? Uh, no, I am not 21. I'm 26. Oh. Well, you may enter the gambling graveyard then. Oh, the the camp the gambling graveyard. <laughs> and the, you can see the undead ogre will kind of turn aside. And you can see some of the mist kind of spreads out as you can see all these tables with different undead. And you can see that there are people there. Uh some looking more frazzled than others. Seemingly like rolling dice. Okay. Uh, I'll walk up towards one of the frazzled people. Um, hello. Hi. And he kind of turns to look at you, and you can see, like, their eyes appear to suggest, like, they are blind. Oh, um, hi, um, hi, my name is Freyr. Uh, hi. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying, I'm trying to get it, trying to get it. And he kind of like turns back and there is a ghoul sitting like right across from him. And the ghoul kind of cocks their head. Um, Mr. Bigglesby, higher or lower? And the guy goes, um, I'm a higher, higher. And oh, okay. Um, I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet my legs. I'm going to bet my legs. And you can see the ghoul will nod and will roll a die. Lower! And you watch then Freyr as the legs this man disappear. God darn it! Oh, okay. Okay, it's okay. I always dreamed of having the ability to, to phase through objects. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get the power. I'm going to get it. Uh, oh, so that's what you're wagering to win is power? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, lower this time because it was higher. Uh, and I'm going to wager. What am I going to wager? I'm going to wager all of my stamina. And the ghoul will nod. Right you are, Mr. Bigglesby. And then as it rolls again, the guy goes, huh? Oh, I win! I did it! And you can see his hand passes through the table, and he goes, 
worth it as he begins to crawl away using his two hands. Oh my god. Hello, sir. Are you here to wager? Um. We have how? strange abilities, items of great magic, the ability to change fate, and if you head right over there, the box is. The boss is waiting with a jackpot. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. I'll go and check out the jackpot. Right, you are. I'll also wave over the. I'll also wave over everybody else, just in case they've been keeping their distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Suppose. Uh, and the the undead giant is going to stop each and every one of you and make sure you're all twenty one. And twenty seven. Mm, pass. One two. Pass. <laughs> Thirty-five. Mm, close. Get going. <laughs> <laughs> close. <laughs> the the cap is thirty-six. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. What what is this jack jackpot situation, Colin? Are you heading over to take a look? Yeah, I'm curious. Gotcha. Then as you head over that way you find that there is a skeleton with a top hat sitting before a table. Uh, and, like, behind it, you can see that there appears to be, like, this floating red ball of crackling energy, actually similar to what you saw um, with, like, that massive giant rift towards, like, that northern end of town. Mm. Okay. Um, excuse me. Uh, I was told this was the jackpot. This is the jackpot. Sit down. And if you're lucky, you'll win the great gift, the splinter. Oh, what does it do? It does everything. Brought us back to life. Born oh, wow. out of the fight. Uh, what fight is that? The one happening to the north of town, silly. Okay, do you know who's fighting? Uh, not particularly. They're powerful, though, that much to be said. Don't know them by name, but the way they sling magic. Hoo-wee! Crazy! You know, so it's just one person fighting, or is it two people fighting? Do you know? Well, it's hard to fight this hard with yourself. There's, there's two of them. I don't even know if they're really people, but... Okay, you said this is in the north, right? To, to the north. I wouldn't try and get too close to it, though. It's, uh, ooh, the, the barrier of instability turn you to spaghetti. Okay, uh, do you know there's a way to get beyond that barrier of instability? Mm, hard to say. I haven't thought about it much. Okay, um, this splinter, do you reckon it could do it? Yeah, maybe. Hmm, I don't know. Make one thing unstable enough, and it becomes unstable, so the instability becomes stability? Is that what you're saying? Um, I think that makes about as much sense as it could. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, um... How long have you been here? Been oh. up and active? Oh, me? Well, yeah, I've been up and active for, ew, what, a few weeks? Does that track with how long we, we've been told that the 
this incident has been? I mean, that's a little longer than you would have thought. But yeah, it generally tracks. He said, we'll note this down. So, uh, what's your game over here? Ah, it's very simple. All you have to do is guess the roll of the die. If you do it correctly, you gain the key to our reality. If you guess incorrectly, well, you become fuel for it. Uh. But that's the price. As I assume nobody's ever won. Not yet. How many have tried? Oh, dozens. Hundreds. Thousands, maybe. You've I can't remember. thousands any of, of people through here. Oh, yes. Hmm. Living? Well, I suppose you are alive in a way. Hey. Skinned. Hey! <laughs> you say, I think that's offensive. You should apologize. No, like... Having skin. It... Hey, having skin isn't that big a deal. I don't think it is. Then why are you bringing it up? I was just wondering. <sighs> some people, some of us are really insecure about that type of thing. I think what Issa would like to know is whether the people were travelers or if they were reanimated with you all. <laughs> Some of them were reanimated, some were travelers, some lived in the town. Okay. Yes, that's all I was asking for. I deeply apologize. And Issa will bow his head down. Oh, it's, it's okay. Hey, get this dude a martini on the house. And you can see, like, this uh, little undead gnome kind of waddles over and passes you up a martini. Oh, thank you. And it's just going to waddle away. <laughs> I, I like so, that guy. I like so him too. Have... He plays so darts you well. Mm. So would anybody like to play? for the jackpot. Um, before I say anything, how many sides are on the dice? Six. Six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the skeleton will show you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an all or nothing deal, right? Correct. And even if we were to win... Do you know how we could move and use the splinter? Move, you could just grab it. Um, okay. Use, I have so no it, idea. The splinter just gotcha. kind of does its own thing. Hmm. But it is safe to grab it? Probably. I have not tried. Ah. So did you just find the splinter here and give it a name? Uh, in a way, and he kind of looks over to an unearthed grave, kind of right beside him. I mean, it was just, you know, it just fell right, you know. The right name. Um, wait, Is that what the grave I says? Read, yeah, can I read the tombstone of that grave? Yeah, uh, it says Michael Splinters. And uh, yes, it so does. If the autism is optimizing. Um, I'm assuming the context you're he's um, getting at is he dug it out of this grave. No. No. It fell there. Yeah, it fell onto his grave. Ah, this is his grave. 
the autism is really autisming. Really no, is. like I said, it is. <laughs> this is too nuanced. And too you, much. you yourself, do you not have interest in this power? He just kind of motions to the area around him. I mean, I thought I'd been doing a pretty good job with it. Oh, I see. Yes, it is quite fascinating. Mm hmm. Well, I mean, I really no. don't think any of you should try this. I tend to agree. What does Doug think? <laughs> hey, what if you go gamble your soul for a milkshake? Well, very interesting. Very interesting. I could do that. When's the last yeah. time you had a milkshake, man? It has been a while. It has been a while. And when have you lost ever when you've been gambling? I don't recall ever having lost when I've been gambling, says the priest who has never been gambling. <laughs> it's basically a free milkshake. <laughs> They're just giving out these milkshakes for free. Irk. Where are the milkshakes? Free milkshakes. Where? Oh, they'll probably be about. All right. Well, right, right next to the martinis. You have fun. I'm going to go look for some milkshakes. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Erk, please stay here. Erk's going to go looking for milkshakes. <laughs> I'll, I'll Erk, try we need Erk. to put him on like a backpack leash. <laughs> well, no, dog said that milkshakes were next to mar martinis. Does the martini smell normal? Smell like actual liquor? Yeah. Ha is there an olive? Yes. How? What? Oh. Issa will take a cursory sip, I think. <sighs> Issa. What is the most generic taste? <laughs> The most generic taste? Mm hmm Um. Do you know it in your heart? Bubblegum? No. Chicken. Tastes like chicken. Everything uh. tastes like chicken. Huge. It is <laughs> alcoholic chicken water. Ew. Issa will smile and hold it. Okay. And say nothing. <laughs> Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, I don't think any of us are willing to bet away our existence to try and get this thing at the moment. Um, do y'all want to move on? Um, oh, I would love to yeah. get out of here. Thank you for your offer and your um, hospitality. We have a bit more to see, but we might be back around. Of course. We're always open here at the Gambling Graveyard if you are, of course, over 21. Noted. And so, how many... How many, like, tables are set up? Like, a shit ton? I, like, looking at it, you don't see a shit ton, but as you keep on looking, there are, like, more and more in the mist. You're, like, unsure just how just large keeps this... just going. Okay. Yeah, how large this operation is here. Well. Well, if we're not going to find any milkshakes, let's move on. <laughs> okay. Uh. So, next step, castle or hut or cottage? I imagine the castle would be next. Yeah, we probably shouldn't skip anything. Alrighty, castle it is. 
Gotcha. Then, as you head out from the graveyard back into Canter at large, you make your way down a winding path until you stand before this glittering golden castle on the road. Uh, it continues on this road further into Canter, but you can see there are two guards out front of the castle. Uh, outfitted in solid gold armor with solid gold spears. They appear to be human, but they just have this real harsh, stern expression as they're squinting, looking out at the rest of Cantor. Um, their helmets are up so we can see their people? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, um, <laughs> Hello? Hello, citizen. What troubles you, Enchanter? Mm. Uh, the red scar in the sky? Ah, yes. The light pollution is a problem. Don't worry. The king's getting to that. You have our word, okay. citizen. The king? Oh. Yeah. Um. The king. Uh -huh. Although, he's in a bit of a funk right now. Looking for a new jester. Once his search is over, then, then he's gonna get all the problems sorted. I promise. Oh. Justice will be had, citizen. Okay, uh, could we request audience with the king? I'm sorry. The king is only interviewing jesters today. Oh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, as it so happens, we have a jester here with us. Is that so? Yes, and, um, I'll gesture to, uh, hold up, let me triple check what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alden. I'll just shoot Alden. I will shoot you. <laughs> Perfect. I was trying very hard to stifle a laugh. <laughs> if that's the case, you're already scheduled in my heart and in the king's mind. Simply go through these doors behind me. And wait until you are called. And then you will have to give performance of a lifetime so that you... What is your name, sir? Alden. So that you, Alden, can be the royal jester. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, that's like Don't worry, sir. Morning. We won't let you down. Alden is the funniest Alden, this guy. This is such an honor. <laughs> very well, very well, dear. I just must put a seal of protection to make sure that the king will survive in case you attempt to attack. You can see guard will kind of stamp their spear. Is this little golden circle will appear on all of your lapels? And then, the seal of the potential jester. And he stamps the spear on the ground again. You can see that a little skull appears in the middle of your circle. I should now mention, Alden, since you've entered, the interviews have not been going well for the citizens. Mm -hmm. If you fail to That's... make the king laugh, you will be executed by Beaver. <laughs> this is no laughing matter, sir. Yes, it's, it's very serious. I they understand. are voracious with a taste for blood. The Beavers? Yes. Attack Beaver, citizen. Do you know what a piranha is? Uh, uh, Think of that, yes. but a rodent. 
Okay, I'm imagining. It's quite scary. And think of it bigger. With a flat tail and beady black eyes. <laughs> Issa's imagining a, like a piranha in the shape of a beaver. <laughs> Alright. Get going. The king will be expecting you. And you will like open the door behind him. All of you are free to watch if you want. Oh, yes. Yeah. It, yes, please. All right. <clears throat> and this gilded golden hallway lies ahead of you. Alden, are you going? Alden, 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 Alden. He looks like he's about to murder you, Freyr. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets, no, none at all. <laughs> I'm not sure well, it'll be fine, Alden. For what it's worth, Alden, um, I think we can survive the beavers. I would really rather not be executed by beaver. That's fair. Also, I'm not funny. <laughs> um, well, do the one about the, uh, the end of the journey. Well, that one was really funny. What? What? What's this guy saying? You can see your brother is just like <laughs> pointing at Alden with a thumb. I don't know. You think he'd remember what he said? Ah, what a joke, sir. This guy is great. Yeah, you'll be fine, Alden. Who Doug thinks you're great. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is Maybe you can use. You know, you're kind of deadpan to your advantage. I don't know how to do that. I haven't laughed in a long time. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the king I don't know. likes really bad jokes. You could go slapstick. I think the king would laugh at someone turning to gold. But you're not the jester. I am. Because this guy said that I was funny. I, 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 I mean, you are. Maybe he'll laugh I if can't... I gut you. <laughs> um, please? No. Might make me laugh. And I have a problem with volunteering people without asking. Well, let's go meet the king, see what at least he's like. If I die because of a beaver. At least you won't get put in a jar. Uh, he'll sort of we're not grumble gonna let you his die way by off. Beaver. <laughs> sort of grumble down the hallway. <laughs> gotcha. Are there any, like, offshoot doors or anything? Uh... Yes, a few. Cool, cool. There are signs saying, Jester audition this way. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb. <laughs> You're next on the list. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Oh, God. <laughs> But as you all walk down this hallway, um, eventually it opens up into a throne room with a beautiful glittering throne made out of multiple dragon skulls. As sitting upon it is a noble and regal king, actually sitting there in some armor with a beautiful crown adorning their head. So, who is to audition? It would appear to be me, your highness. Okay, then do your routine and you will succeed in this routine, Jonah. 
if you make me laugh before oh. this song stops. What song? Wait. This one. Go. Okay. Um. I don't know how to make Colin laugh. That's a problem. Laughing <laughs> a duck. Um. I'm not funny. This is unfortunate. You're going off to a great start so far. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> it's so stupid. Why'd you audition for this job if you weren't funny? Yeah, I really wish I knew, honestly. I mean, I'd ask my friend uh, Freyer over there, you know, he's he's doing great. I mean, I've got this whole thing where I'm uh, pretending to be a manager of democracy, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but it's good because nobody else knows what they're doing either. Yeah, but that, that, that kind of hits a little too close to home, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's real sad. Told you, I'm not funny. I'm sad. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. The beavers will correct that. As a hole in the floor opens up, Alden, <laughs> as you fall down and <laughs> you look Piper, as in the hole in the floor you can see Alden is dropped into a pit of wa of water. And you can see, Alden, as you paddle around, these little black eyes start to pop up from the water's surface. And as all of you hear the screams, Alden, you are devoured by beavers. I mean, I can fly, though. Like, could I do anything about that or no? <laughs> the, these beavers, they're fast. Okay. Oh, look who you did, Freyr. So happy for you. Good luck. Oh. Uh. All right. Um, next person. Thank all mm. of you for coming. Yeah, um, no problem. And the guards will come back in and will begin to escort you out. Unless any of you want to you know, try for the position. <clears throat> Just don't think I'm very funny. Uh, no, Doug, you think I'm funny? <laughs> I think you're hilarious, man. Yeah, see, Doug thinks I'm funny. Who's Doug? Oh, my brother, he's right over here. Mm. He thinks I'm hilarious. But that's just him. What does he know? I had a friend once who was like you. Oh, yeah? yeah? You should tell him about the rock. What was your friend's name? If you don't mind me asking, your highness. Yeah. What about the rock? Oh, the rock? Uh, this is the rock that um, uh, if I drop it, it'll uh, destroy the world. So I've been holding on to it. Why will it destroy the world? I... I don't... I don't know, actually. I just, I just know it, you know? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. See, Isa? I'm not crazy. I didn't say you were crazy. Ah, but you're thinking it. How do you know what I'm thinking? Um. The second you told me that. Uh. <laughs> the second I told you, you could see my, you could read my mind. He's gone now, but. I don't think that's true. I saw it. It? You. I mean, the second me. you. The second me. There's a second me? I mean, there was a second you. I don't think there was. I saw it. Hmm. Okay.
Bo. Are you guys gonna continue clogging up my my throne room? Uh, no, we'll head out. Um, okay, mm -hmm. cool. Hey, <laughs> the guards will usher you out. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I think Piper was staring into the pit for a while. He probably had to be prompted to move. Um, it'll be okay. You know, I really thought Alden would be funny. You really pushed him into... Okay. No, well, I mean, there's still the cottage. I don't see what a king could do that we couldn't. That's weird. There's no king in Cantor, so... Yeah, who knows why he's there. But, uh, to the cottage? Yeah. Let's just head that way until it resets. If it resets. It better reset. <sighs> It'll be nine miles out by then. miles out, 10 miles, 20, doesn't matter. I, as long as Austin's back, I'll, I'll take it resetting. And with that, you look and you begin to see in the distance that red aura of energy begin to flicker and pulse and go iridescent of all the colors of the rainbow. And then... All of you feel yourselves be ripped through time and space. As then, in this moment, Freyr, your eyes flicker open and you hear, ah, My name's Devet of the Dread Thieves. We want your money and not your life. Give us your gold, your food, your boots, and we'll be on our way. You're taxed every day of your lives, so this isn't anything new for you. As the knife goes against your throat, Freyr, and you look over, and I'm assuming you're seeing a very pissed Alden waking up from his bedroll. <laughs> that be accurate, Jonah? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's already reaching for his bow. We return back to a lecture hall. And I know that all must be reasonably concerned with the information shared here today. However, I have also come to bring um, theoretical hope as the rings of Merapis, as we all know, are conduits for magical energy. These rings, in my opinion, are the greatest place to utilize magic in all of the cosmic stack. And this is not from any amount of sheer raw power, although it is here, or the right social conditions, or uh, the presence of very generous gods. And he kind of gives a nod over to Karania, who smiles. But, due to the way the rings, at least according to my formulas, would handle red spiral events, and this is corroborated with uh, eyewitness testimony and evidence shown to you on pages uh, 52 through 59 in your pamphlets, but... I call this the Law of Centrality. You see, the Red Spiral events are dangerous, and they are able to spread, to unlink, to disconnect. This is an ever-present and existential threat to life on the Rings of Merapis. However, 
The rings also do a great job at containing such events. The red spiral is theoretically analyzed during its beginning. As the ring attempts to suture the bleeding wound. Now, this takes place as it attempts to funnel energy into the red spiral event. And based on the models, this is actually the best way to fix such an event. As by mitigating the initial source, the ring's energy is thought to naturally spread throughout the uh, concurrence of red spiral activity. Essentially, if you take out the weed at the root, the red spiral event has an increased chance of halting. Now, there is an event horizon point, but such a point would take days to reach. And one would imagine that the peoples of the rings would be able to halt a red spiral event before that time limit ever came to fruition. At this moment, as you're opening your eyes, all of you can see your old bandit friends around once more. However, some of you look a bit different. You are all wearing ponchos and sombreros and a western style slacks. Um, Alden, you specifically are wearing a cowboy hat and have a big moustache. Um, I would also note that, Freyr, you can see the tree where your horses, once oryx, were tied up. Now the animals are no longer oryx. You can see that they are a band of horse-sized coyotes. <clears throat> oh, joy. And you can see Butters is looking around in his coyote form. Very displeased, it seems like. However, Devet is holding the knife to your throat. Come on now, pretty boy. Give over your gold, your food, and your boots. Okay, okay, okay. We we covered this last time. Alrighty. Um, huh? So, we are in a time loop. And last time... I mentioned this. I asked you what was something I could tell you to convince you we were in a time loop. You said I've never done. I've never asked myself that question before for with other people. And so you told me though, you, the, your brother's name would convince you that we were in a time loop. You told me your brother's name was Peter. Huh? Pulls the knife back. Well, I am a rational man. Everyone, this seems like a time loop situation. Let's gather around. This is probably an issue. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> you can see all the bandits start to gather around. <laughs> this is probably an issue. <laughs> okay. So probably. here's the stitch. In Cancer, there is this wild magical event going on, and it is warping reality all around us. That's the Yeah, they're evacuating. It's growing, and it seems it's getting worse, and it seems like it's even affecting the area outside of the Red Haze, including you guys. Like you how? different at all? Well, you're in a time loop with us. Oh. And yeah. from what you see, Issa, they don't look different, no. Um... um. Um, I think this begs an interesting question. Um, how can we remember, but they don't? My guess was 
maybe because we're Aether Souls. Or... Holy shit, you're Aether Souls? Oh, yeah, each of us. Puts his knife away. <laughs> I was thinking it might be because we've been inside the haze itself and they haven't. That also could be the case, too. Mm. Or it could be we're the ones in the loop. True. It could be that we're the ones being sent back in time to this moment. Uh. But that also sounds messy. But I don't know. It's messy so, right now. have you... Have you guys done much in Cantor before? Uh, no. Not really. We've... I mean, we've been around the area. Um, I mean, Toby, you've been to Cantor before. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been to Cantor a few times. Um, can't really go back, though. Is it because of the orphanage? <laughs> yeah, it's because of the orphanage. Damn, it really is a time loop. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's actually a good question. Was there a king in Cantor the last time you were there? What? A, a king? No. I... Like a huge king. Golden castle. Canter? A golden castle? Uh, no, no, sorry. Um, yeah, it's a small farming town. Raises horses. Well. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, other than this whole, like, evacuation business, like, before then... Have you... Were there any notable events from the area? Hmm. Notable events. <sighs> oh, yeah. There was, um... Uh, a, one of our rival gangs, um... Yeah, they, they all died. Oh. You know what happened? Which rival gang? Yeah. Um... It was a, a sect of a gang called the Vultures. They have been prowling the area for a while. I think they're pretty widespread, really. A bit. They're they're kind of bitches. Um, uh, we were in a tavern. We heard that about sixteen, seventeen of them uh, turned up dead. Um, they had been staying inside a little, I guess, hollow. And uh, when their bodies were found, they were all shriveled up like they'd been completely dehydrated. Well, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, Do you yeah, know yeah. if any of them were magic users? I mean... Just maybe if you know. They all kind of suck, though. Like, they're... I mean, they're bad at their, their jobs. Um... You know, Toby over there was thinking that we should give him some of our rations just because they were so sad. I wanted to poison the rations to kill him, just so we know. I'm not a charitable man. <laughs> Don't get me confused uh, with, um, you know, anyone else. Like, um, I got a reputation to uphold. Um. Heard loud and clear. I have a competing theory, perhaps. Perhaps it wasn't the magic that was absorbed from them, but their aether. Um, if it was their aether, I don't think anything of them would be left. Colin, I have a question. Do we... Have we been feeling like this is a weird question, and I don't know if it would actually necessarily mean anything. But have we really... We haven't really eaten, I don't think, much during, like, when we've been progressing through the loops. Are we we've Are we breakfast. physically reset, or are we... We did have breakfast. Mm -hmm. You've had breakfast. Um, yeah. I guess, are we... Physically... 
kind of like reset to how we were before like whatever hunger we had at the start is what we have or do we feel like I mean um, you're you as you kind of look over your body and you kind of touch the ground a bit you are changing as the loops go on Whether you're being okay. reset or not, who knows? Interesting. All right. Okay. Um, well, I think the quicker we get back to Cantor, the more time we'll have to work on things. Uh, I don't suppose you'd like to join us? Um... Gosh, that would be, you know, that that'd be incredible. Um, mm. but you you don't. Hmm. No. Probably. I mean, do you want us to do anything else but go to Canter? Cause like, uh, <laughs> that seems above our pay grade. Uh. Hmm. He's got kind of got the point. They're not. Um... Aether souls. We don't know what effect it'll have on them. Mm -hmm. Are you heading toward Care Bus Bore at all? Yeah, yeah, we are. You could go let them know that the spiral is reaching further. Anyone um, who can. I uh, don't know if you'd make it. They make it there in time. Yeah. Well, you know, if you um, break the loop, then we'll already be on the way. He's got a point. Um, and, and if uh, they come and our problem is already solved, then the problem's already solved. Let's see here. Um, uh... Okay, um, Colin, the captain's name was Captain Van Guinea. Uh, the vet? No. <laughs> no. The, no, the original. The, the, the guy who's oh. over here. Yeah, Tazio Vigini. Tazio Vigini. 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 Tazio Vigini. Okay. You got, um, you got it. <laughs> okay, so I had to say it over and over. So, um, yeah, if you, yeah, if you do make your way over to Cantor, I'm sorry, not Cantor, to, um, Terabasboa, uh, and I'll tear off, like, You're just gonna tear off your... Your what? I start peeling my skin off. Sorry. Uh, my, um, like, the sigil for my, um, like, basically my family crest kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and give that to, um, Divet to show to Captain Vigini, um, that, like, yeah, he's he was sent by us to like validate that like yeah um we, we are the like the scouting group he sent has sent over these people to bring back word hey you know that's a uh, cool if we do this and all but um are we gonna do this for free toby come on now this is we're in a time loop yeah but oh um, well what with a hundred gold service. Oh, see, this is good. These are these are good people. I will hand them over a hundred gold. Here, this is your money for the quest that we're sending you on. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, we will head out and do our duty. <laughs> um, hopefully. We don't see you again. Because I, if we do, yeah. we'll need your money, 
your food, and your boots. Uh, what? Why are you laughing? Oh, um, that's just like the... the fourth, it's just like the first, first time, time you said heard it. it. <laughs> and the second. And the third. And the fourth. We've heard it a lot. Um, good luck. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's go before this gets any weirder. And they're all going to head out. Oh, and do, as do they're they going, like, like, bye, go do it. Yeah. <laughs> bye, Morale. I hope you get those tailored boots at some point. You can see the Dragonborn woman just kind of looks around. and like, I, I give her a flowery wave like with my fingers. She waves back and then is going to like jog to the front of their group. <laughs> be like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, alrighty. Well, I, it's uh, we should just go. I, I, yeah. Let's get some breakfast first, though. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll I'll, I'll make us something quick. I'll make us I'll, I'll make us stew again. I'll head over to the coyotes and see if they want parrots still. Um, <laughs> can you still talk to animals? Um. Mead. Can you still talk to animals? No, no. Then you can see the coyotes going to go. Well, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Urk, however, oh. can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Urk can now. Urk can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the coyotes going to go. What the? What's happening to me? I feel a craving for blood. Oh my god. Mm. Irk's gonna knock his head. Mm. Maybe we should move before the coyotes start getting more cravings. You heard it. Ah, uh, yeah. And you would also hear Irk, one of the coyotes, go, I was once an oryx! And then I was a horse! <laughs> <laughs> what is this for? What am I? So pliable in this chaotic world. I have no sense of self. My identity dissolves. No! And you just, all your butters start howling at the moon. Why is butters the one who has existential crises? Like. Uh, Piper, your, your coyote is still having an existential crisis. Uh, I don't think that one was mine. I think that was Freyr's. Mine yeah, was Dog. Butters, mine. Oh, Are you saying there's... Butters is still freaking out? Yeah. Don't worry. Damn. I'll, I'll, teach him, I'll go teach him about Ateus. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Butters. You know, the name Dog ended up kind of fitting. Oh, yeah. It's actually really funny. Um, Alright, Stu's done. I'll hand some bowls to everybody. And uh, just to double check... Alden, you have schizophrenia, right? Yep. Yeah, when I hand you the stew, it's just a bowl of seed. Um, it's just seeds. Enjoy. He'll just sort of look at it <laughs> for a sec. Oh, is uh, something wrong? Do you not like carrots? or? What do you... You just handed me seeds. I can't eat mm -hmm. seeds, I'm not a horse. N no, that's, I don't think that's I some things. stew with carrots. I, I made it for you before. Uh, see? And, and I'll, like, show my bowl. That's very clearly just stew and take a bite full of it. Well, yes, yours is stew minus seeds. Mm. I, I can't eat seeds. <laughs> here, 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 here. And then I'll switch my bowl with his bowl. And the moment it gets into his hand and he looks at it, it's still a bowl of seeds. And the one I got from him is now stew. He'll sort of narrow his eyes at you. What are you doing, magic man? <laughs> uh, I, um, I know my cooking's good, but, uh, mm, Hey, brother, I think he's trying to pull a trick on you. And <laughs> your brother, Randy, pops up next to you and, God damn, Alden, you think he's right. Yeah, Randy, <laughs> I think he is. I oh. haven't forgotten about the beavers. 
Oh, brother, it's the beavers all over again. This bitch is a beaver in a trench coat. I could smell him, brother. Urk is going to lean over the piper. He's... He's all going insane. You're... You're know. one of them. You're just a bunch of beavers in a coat. <laughs> Who's oh. all the ruse? Cool. Um... Um, Walden, did you maybe hit your head a little when you fell in with the beavers? He'll slowly turn over to Piper. <laughs> <laughs> no, Piper. I got killed by the beavers. <laughs> Have you ever been gnawed to death by a beaver? No, I haven't. <laughs> I've been put into a jar by a giant dwarf. Yeah, I almost suffocated in there. Kept calling me a five star. Can can anyone? <laughs> we haven't discussed this yet. Does anyone know where these clothes are from? <laughs> um, no, I kind of just accepted it, honestly. I think I look good though. And do we? Would do a little do we as people on the rings of Marapas have an understanding of what a sombrero is? Do these come from somewhere? Or are they just like completely unfamiliar? Um, hold on. I'm still recovering from your joke, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they they come from a region of the primordial ring. Okay. Cool. Not anymore, they don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, if everybody finished their stews, do you want to get on our giant coyotes and uh, head a canter? Yeah. Yeah, let's... sure. Probably take the route we did last time and cut through the graveyard again. Uh, or we could try just going to the um, cabin directly. Yeah, my vote was for the untouched cabin. Uh, I figured it would be easier to go from there, but if there's a faster route, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Well, um, if anyone else has any other incredible powers I'd like to reveal at this moment, um speak now. Otherwise... I think um, Piper's gonna pick up a... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think Piper's gonna pick up a rock or something to confirm he no longer has the Midas touch. Mm -hmm. Confirmed. Well, the gold thing is gone. A little disappointing. That was kind of useful. Was I saying I had a brother named Doug? I don't have a brother. I'm an orphan. Oh. I think orphans can still have siblings. Sorry, that's not the point. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for I'll your just loss. Kick it for a second. Oh, I'm not lost, he said. I have the power of Ateus. Okay. Right. Forgot about that. Does is anyone else's eyes itchy? I feel like I keep having to blink. Are any of our eyes itchy? Um, not exactly. Okay. I mean, yours no, might be a little itchy, Piper, but nothing too bad. I mean. More so you would notice it that attention's been drawn to you. But, you know. Otherwise, you're I, probably fine. Well, now I feel it a little, but... I just, I feel like, um... Oh, it, like... <laughs> and I think lasers come out of his eyes and hit the ground. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> then... As it hits the ground, there's this burst of energy. Is all the coyotes begin like running around? I'm gonna have to oh, go oh. calm them down. Okay. Are they actually the one who's not doing anything is Butters, and he's just muttering, "Oh, this is just par for the course now. This is the new normal." <laughs> Eric is gonna run up to the coyotes. All right, all right, calm down, calm down. <laughs> they they just gotta like freeze and look at you. Listen, it's, it's, I know it's a little weird, 
but let's just let's just stay calm. We're gonna head back there, and we're gonna see if we can't get you back to your horse forms. What's the point of being a horse? Um. Carrots. Uh, we will just carrots. be broken by those who control the means of carrot production. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, did gonna, you, like, did you just <laughs> give a nuh -uh? <laughs> I said, I said, oh no. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Erica's gonna turn back to everyone. Um, guys, I don't want to alarm you, but the coyotes are talking about the means of carrot production. Oh, they still remember. Oh god, that means we only have hours. Let's go. Wait, so they yeah, remember everything too? Does that make sense? Um, we can, I can ask. Um, uh, do you remember everything from this time in the Red Haze? Need is going to speak up. Yeah. Um, we went through a graveyard. And um, the one with the mustache. He, you, you guys talked about him getting eaten by beavers. And, um, yeah. Butters has been losing his fucking shit. <laughs> the blind leading the blind! I just hear Butters mumbling. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah. Oh, long... He's pretty gone. Yeah. Well, as long as no one else brings up mortgages, I think we're fine. Mortgages?! <laughs> <laughs> There, what keep hey, us under the, the thumb? Just start barking. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. They're all muttering to themselves like mortgages, mortgages, mortgages. <laughs> what is a mortgage? I don't think I want to find out. All right. Well, let's go before Cover this gets the fire weirder. and pack all our stuff up. Gotcha. You're packing all your stuff up, and are you trying to saddle up the coyotes? Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Then you go and you saddle up the coyotes. They're, you know, horse-sized coyotes, but it's fine as you begin to start riding off in the direction of Canter. And oop, as you do that, there is a rumbling in the ground all of a sudden as you are beginning to ride. And then you look ahead of you and there is just this wave of red that begins to spread over the entire area. And as it moves through and across, Freyr, you open your eyes to, my name's Devet of the Dread Thieves. We want your money, not your life. Give us your gold, your food, and your boots, and we'll be on our way. You're taxed every day of your lives, so this isn't anything new to you. Oh, god damn it. Holy shit. Hey, come on. Oh, shit. Hey, guys. Okay. What if we should just chill out? We should just chill out. Wait, what? Who? 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 <laughs> you see the person who's been in your sixth sleeping bag the entire time. Huh? Wait, huh? has that actually always been there? Am I going crazy? It's always been <laughs> Wait, there. Wait, what? Huh? I, Wait, I what? Uh, huh? It's always been huh? there. Who are you? Uh, that's not part of the time loop. <laughs> it's me, your friend Hera. Who? Okay, hold up. Bandits first. <laughs> um. Hey, what? Your bro- Uh, okay. We're in a time loop. I asked you this before. The code word is your brother's name, Peter. We're in a time loop scenario. Yeah. Huh. Well, yeah, yeah. that seems pretty accurate. All right, guys, gather around. This seems pretty serious. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So... The t thing we asked of you last time was to head over to um, Carabaspora to give them word that the uh, 
weird magic phenomenon and canters getting worse. You said you would do that. Uh, here's a hundred gold. Um, Man, you're really efficient. How many times have we done this? Oh, I think this is the fifth, fourth time. Um, yeah. Yeah. It seems to be getting faster, too. Okay, here you go. That's, um, yeah, here's that's... my insignia as well. Uh, Captain uh, Vigini. I... Yeah. Oh, yeah, and Vigini. They're looking for... Uh... All right. Uh, is there another horse or another, like? Yeah, there's another coyote. <laughs> Fun, but yes. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully this is the last time it repeats. But I don't know anymore. Yeah. Oh, um, pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> pleasure doing business with you. Okay, guys. Let's head out, <laughs> and all the bandits will begin to head out. All right, bye, Toby. Don't burn any more orphanages, please. Uh, Moral, I hope you get those tailored boots. Moral jogs to the front of the group, <laughs> a little disturbed. All right. All right okay, now, now to no real business. Yeah, <laughs> immediately. Um, uh, come on, Randy, so. let's go. Can Well, firstly, hold on, let me spin a wheel. <laughs> so, all of you will be picking up, in addition to the powers you already have, the Banish power, if you have it already. I it's, got that. You just already have it. So, it is what it is. And then the second power each of you will gain is... Hmm. Uh, Iron Body. Yes! <laughs> does Iron Body stack? <laughs> it does. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> Where the fuck is... Okay, there's my... I, I now have, have three armor blocks. <laughs> I got two. Okay. Fight not wearing armor. Um. Not wearing armor. Burke <laughs> feels strong. <laughs> <laughs> so, while we get ready... And we're getting heading. We're starting to head out. Um. So, uh, who are you, Freyer? It's me, Hera. Um. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's not um ringing any bells. Uh. Oh no! Did wait? No, it was. Wasn't Alden who hit his head? When he fell into the beavers? That's what we think happened, yeah, but... Um... you one of them, too. <laughs> okay, does oh, anyone Oh, slow else... down, big boy! D does anyone else remember Hera? No. I love meat and hate no. vegetables. I have really strong joints. Like... Um... Uh, what? Um... Freyr, you were telling a spooky story around the fireplace. I had to leave. I hate spooky stories. Oh, um. Okay. Less chatting, more walking. Well, are you willing to go into the horrible magical anomaly that is Cantor? Yeah, I already have. How many times? Cool. Let's go. Uh, 11? It, 11 what? times? Yeah, we've went in 11 many... times. Oh, no, All no. of us together? Well, prob I mean, when we first got there, it was only a mile out, yeah. But, like, each time um, we kept on going in. What? Okay, um... Shoot, okay. Uh, Guys, the last time only... it really got us quickly, we should... Leaving. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, get moving. Right, so yeah, yeah. as as we ride over, um Colin, can I give uh Hera a recap of everything that we know so far to see if she knows anything that like from the other trips she says she's been on without us? Um sure. Pretty much like it 
it's just been a lot of weird stuff that y'all have been encountering on these trips. Um, a few times you guys have run into that strange cabin in the forest, but you've always been pulled away by something. Um, Hera does say that once Piper got inside, but uh, they weren't able to talk to Piper um, about it because the next time they got out of the loop, Piper was a donut. And then after Piper stopped being a donut, Piper didn't remember being inside the house. Is that the okay. only thing I forgot post donut? I mean, I don't really know. Maybe. Huh. Well, it's, um, okay. Well, it's always great to have another friend. Um, and especially a friend that we've always had. Didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, you had a nice splash of color. I, well, yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's my, you know, pink's my favorite color. Is that right, Candy? And Hera's gonna pat the coyote under them. The horse used to be pink originally. I brought it from home. Oh. oh. Where's home? It, where, where, yeah. You know, this and there. Here and there. Around. Huh. Dope. Yeah. Uh. Hey, Freyer, do you have any more of that meat stew? Um, yeah, 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 I have some saved up. Here you go. Does it have carrots in it? I'm gonna say it doesn't this time around, because Hera is here now. It doesn't have carrots anymore. Gotcha, like no vegetables or anything? No vegetables or anything. Gotcha, Hera's gonna just begin wolfing it down. Mm. That's... Huh. Okay. Well, hmm. Okay, well, no time like the present, huh, guys? Oh, you can say that again. And are you guys just riding on until you hit the edge of the red yes. mist? The mm -hmm. edge of the red mist, as you approach it, come early morning this time is 11 miles out oh god that should have been a clue yeah it's 11 miles you said mm -hmm. oh god and how far were we when it got us last time when it got you last time you were what, nine miles out? All right. Well, let's keep moving. Try and yeah. avoid the paper mache ground. Gotcha. Are you wishing to go through the path that leads you to the wagons, paper mache ground, or somewhere new? Um, I'm assuming wagons, right, guys? The wagon would probably be the quickest, but I have a feeling when we show up there, it's probably not going to be the same guy. Mm -hmm. Um, Hera, have you seen the wagons? I assume you have. Yeah, we have. Okay. I mean, usually it's fine. Until you killed that guy that one time, Issa. Yeah, that sounds like it would do something terrible. I say we go there. Okay. Alrighty. Alright. Uh, then you can head to the wagons, and the guy is the exact same as last time 
Are you trying to get a wagon the same way? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you do so, are you chartering a wagon for Cantor again? Um, do you guys want to do Cantor, the Cotted, or the Cotted? That, like, the, um, let me find her name again. Mama. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if that's where we were heading originally, that might be faster. Well, I... I'm in. We can do that. I just think our goal is in Canter. Does it look like that wagon would take us some opposite way? I mean, it looks like it's going to take you kind of a parallel direction. Let's go see what Mama has to say. Maybe this can make all the difference. Yeah, um... We keep getting pulled away from it. Yeah, I think I think it's at least worth a shot if we've done it, tried getting there before. Okay. Alright, so you're chartering not for Canter, but Mama's Cabin? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, in that case, then, you charter the wagon... And before long, you begin to see the wagon descend down into a cave as you were on it. As it does so, you make your way deep below ground into that same jungle-like place. As you are going through this meandering road through the jungle... The wagon seems to find all the small crevices in the deep underbrush to allow itself to make its way through. All of you have to constantly duck, though. Um, after a few hours, however, the wagon itself begins to come to a stop in front of a cabin sitting here in the middle of the swamp. And as you find yourselves basically at this place piper you would see at the very front of this small cabin this origami bird is flapping around as owls watch you from trees do you guys remember this place um i do from once before though um and the fifth time then so it's five miles out, I think. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, the first excursion for what we remember, but the fifth or no, so I actual, I think I was yeah. taken before this. I think we were taken no, by the giant we... dwarf. You were taken, yeah. but the rest of us found it. Well, mm -hmm. no time to the present. Let's go knock. Gotcha, so you're heading up there to knock? Mm-hmm. Well, Urk is. Alright. Who is going to be the one to knock? Um, I feel really bad for making Alden go first last time, so I'll go first this time. Okay. Now as you walk forward, you knock on the cabin, and... You hear humming from inside, the shuffle of footsteps, and then the door to the cabin opens as you can see a hobgoblin woman with beautiful pink flowing hair that goes down to her waist. Um, but she's dressed also in these beautiful deep greens and she smells of all different kinds of spices, Freyr. You see, the hobgoblin woman smiles. Oh, and what has the swamp brought me today? Oh, um, sorry to intrude. Um, my name is Freyr, and um, I'll introduce everybody else. Um, we were wondering if you could help us. Well, it looks like a bad shit in your lap. 
Let Mama treat you right this night. Oh, your friends over there. Oh, come on in. I'm making dinner. Okay, um, I'll head on in. What about the rest of you? Uh, Piper will follow. Does it look like she recognizes me? Uh, as you enter in, the woman kind of gives you a, a smile. Hello. Uh, hello. Ah, uh, uh, head drained like a sieve. It's okay. Uh, Nothing that a little alligator gumbo can't fix. That's, uh... uh okay. It's all right, then. <clears throat> yeah. That... What do you mean, head drained like a sieve? Oh, don't worry, child. And she's just gonna pat you on the back. <clears throat> now, okay. Freyr, as you're heading inside... This is a smaller looking cabin, but it is filled with these moving origami shapes as origami men set the table and help cook while little origami animals the size of like regular household cats make their way around this tiny space in this flurry of paper and sound. And all through it, you smell the beautiful churn of spices coming from the kitchen. Oh, oh, wow. Um, Alligator gumbo with boudin balls. Oh, oh, thank you. Um, it really does smell delicious. Oh, I know, I know. It's our own little patch of paradise with all this going on around us? Um, so, so you, you must be I am Diamond La Paris, but my friends and my customers call me Mama La. Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, thank you again for inviting us into your home. Um, you said customers? Um, uh, what is it that you sell? I sell my trinkets, darling. And she kind of motions to the paper creatures that are moving about. Some want my little birds. Others a cat or... A horse or any number of things. It's all in the oh. folds. Wow. Um, Are they enchanted? Oh, no. No magic here. Uh, I see. That must be why they last so well. It's true. In the perfection of the folds is where I find my art. Oh, yes, that red spiral can't touch me. Um, okay. That's actually why we did try to come to Cantor, is to stop this. You said it's called the red spiral? Oh, yes, red spiral event. Okay, um, would you tell us what you know about it? Well... I set up shop around here uh, about a decade or so back after that nasty piece of work. Abaddon and the Warrens took over Western Bospora, and it's been pretty quiet, except uh, something was trying to tap into some dark powers, it seems, slamming magics together and place I think they thought no one would notice but there is a vitality gate close to here broken one and well from the best I can tell there is a fight um, 
explosions of magic that are going on right now. And as the fight continues, it creates this red spiral event. I folded everything around here to keep this place nice and contained, but looks like it's not enough. Probably have to head out of here fairly soon. I don't think this place has many more cycles in it. Okay. Is, do the folds keep you safe from the effects of the warping? Oh, yes. To a degree. That my gumbo. And she will kind of pull out uh, a ladle and start ladling gumbo into some bowls. And you would catch sight, Issa, of an alligator tail sloshing about in the large like, simmering pot. <laughs> but for now, I'm safe. Would you, um... Well, first off, thank you for uh, letting us into your home. Mm. Very kind. Of course. Um, you seem to have an art that lets you avoid the um, effects. Is there a way you can help us avoid the effects? Oh, all of you? Well, the gumbo should help just a tiny bit. Made it with oh. love. <laughs> Good gumbo. Soothes the soul. Soothes the magic. Otherwise... It seems you're caught up in it quite tightly. I fear that the only way to... stop it for all of you is to get to the Nexus. Center of it all. Okay. And... That would be where the fight is happening, correct? If the fight's still happening, yes. <clears throat> Though with still... all the shattered pieces leaking off of it, it might be too wild. If it's grown okay. too unstable and it's fractured too greatly, no one will be able to pass into its heart. Okay, um... There, in this graveyard in Cantor, there was this guy who had something he called the splinter that he said was a key to the reality the Red Spiral was making. Do you think that could help if you know anything about it? Uh, probably, child. If it is a splinter, it's part of the instability. If it was returned to the heart, it would... Uh, make things more whole, less divided. Put enough of okay. those together and you just might be able to head inside. I'm gonna nudge Hera. Have you ever seen us kill that guy that has that? Um, kill that guy? Uh, I don't think so. And Even so, I probably wouldn't have watched. I hate blood and gore. I, I figured it would be a really bad idea, but I was curious. No. Um, None of us have ever gone for us... it, though. Yeah, have you ever seen us get the right answer? Or anyone? It's the roll. Um, the roll, yeah. I don't know. I think it's the same every time, though. That's what we were talking about. So if we come at the same time, it should be the same roll. Okay. They roll every time. There's three weird places in Kanto, right? Uh, yeah, from uh, what we saw. The, uh, un the Unchess Cabin, the Golden Castle, and the Graveyard. Mm -hmm. This could be three splinters, each three fractures of the actual spiral itself. I think you're right. If we can collect all three, hopefully... 
we we get we gathered some intel. Um, we know the king wants us to make him laugh. We have to gamble for the splinter. And whatever's at the cabin, but none of us know. If you can do that. Are we not at? Is this not the cabin? There's two. There's, mm. This was a different cabin, correct? Correct. Yeah, different cabin. Yeah. I I see. I didn't. Yeah, that, that's why I was that. discouraging us from going here was because it was entirely in a different place than where we were headed. Well, I mean, we did get something. We know more now. Yeah. And... Plus, you know, it is good um, we went here. Plus, mm -hmm. you got some boudin balls, Piper, and Mama Law's gonna pass you some, like rice-filled balls of dough <laughs> with like pork and beans in it. All right. Uh... Thank you, Mama La. Of course, child. Um, before you mentioned a vitality gate, uh, you said it was broken, but what is a vitality gate? Oh, well, child, that's a big question. But in the simplest terms, and she takes a slurp of gumbo, it's the thing that's holding the Titans back from breaking into our world and changing reality as we know it. Uh, Con, yes, none of us have heard what Titans are, correct? You vaguely, are. yeah, you know what Titans are. Like, they're in mythology, but they're more like the mm -hmm. boogeyman than anything. Okay, gotcha. The Titans Ooh. are. And you said it's broken? Oh, yes. Um, we hmm. have, uh, well, around Zell, pretty much all of them are broken now. Who's been breaking them? Oh, the Herald of Zell. Terrible business. That's bad, right? <laughs> That's really, really bad, right? Oh, well, it's pretty bad, yeah, but... Is there a way to fix the gate after it's been broken? Sure, it's... And with that, there's a, like, burst of red energy. As that's a perfect timer right there for you. As the red energy... Okay spreads across the place and Freyr, you open your eyes to a familiar but also very different speech. My name's Hera of the Dread Thieves. We want your money, not your life. Give us your gold, your food, and your boots, and we'll be on our way. You're taxed every day of your lives, so this isn't anything new for you. Oh my gosh, guys! They have a knife! <laughs> As the vet's oh freaking God. out. <clears throat> um, um. Hera, right? How'd you know my name? And Hera's gonna um, press the knife to your throat. Okay, <laughs> um. So we're in a time loop and things are getting really wonky. Um I I um I really doubt that the code word I had with um Devet would work for you. Uh I can tell you one thing about yourself that might convince you we're in a time loop. Um you re you love me and hate vegetables. Um you really don't like scary stories, and you don't like like blood and gore. You really hate that. Um, at least that's what you told me before. Anybody could guess that about me. That was like four different things I said in sequence, and how how would I know all those things? What's my horse's name? Candy. Candy. Okay, guys, gather around. There's some bullshit going on. <laughs> <laughs> that was phenomenal. All right, real quick spiel again. <laughs> Are you going to okay. send candy on their way? With the gold? Exactly the same as before. Okay. <laughs> as everyone heads out. And oh, that's Friday. just going to look around. Oh my god, that was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Let's go. Wait, where yeah, are we going? We just need. We're, we're going, going to spiral. 
<clears throat> they, are you a gambling man? You know I love to gamble. That's cool. We're going gambling. What's gambling? 99% of gamblers, I've heard. You keep on saying gamble, it's gandle. Gandling. Okay, gandling. Yeah, right. Sorry. Issa looks back at Freyr and... Uh, hmm. it, it just makes a very confused face. I, Freyr is just... It, uh, I think Butters put it best. Nothing's weird anymore. This is the new normal. Okay. And as you look back to at Butters, you can see that your coyotes are now a bunch of massive geckos. <laughs> oh my god. I absolutely love that, though. And, I'm going to scratch my gecko. And, Irk, you would hear a golden colored gecko begin to cry out why do i have a an undesirable urge to sell people insurance i'm so scared <laughs> please please whatever terrible god is doing this stop this please well um congratulations we think we figured out what we're gonna do butters what are you gonna do okay. We're gonna get three pieces of a fractured reality, put it in there, and then go stop a fight. Yeah. Hopefully before, um, hopefully before we all die. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Are you gonna head on your way? Yep. Yeah. Alright, then fast traveling, I'm assuming to the edge of the shimmer. Mm-hmm. Yep. As you reach the exclusion zone that is now 12 miles out, and you can see that that red energy is beginning to crackle and shake. Very unstable. All right. Mm. We don't have many runs at this, so we have to make this. Okay. Um, as like good as possible. <clears throat> Yes, we need to figure out the gear, whatever the roll is first. Okay. Harris said it was the same every time. Hopefully it's the same every time. Let's go. All right. Then. Um, hmm? One thing was, do you guys think we should go ask Mama La what the way to fix the gate was? Um, We can probably save that till after we're not stuck in a time loop. Yeah, in ever sure growing above magical our apocalyptic anomaly. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, there's gotta be like I mean, an artificer or something who can fix that. I mean, fixing the gate might be part of the solution. Let's, um, no. Let's end the spiral first, and I, maybe perhaps the gates can be used to prevent something like this from happening again. Okay, bet. Alrighty, let's go. Alright, then. Canter. You doing the <laughs> wagon run to Canter? Yep. Yes. Wagon speed run glitchless any percent. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> As you That's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> I just throw a bunch of fucking money on the the guy's desk and we just keep walking. Yeah, it, it's like no, perfectly like executed. <laughs> <laughs> and what's what's crazy, Alden, is that I just threw a bunch of fucking seeds on his table. You people have so many seeds. <laughs> Where are they getting all these seeds, brother? I don't know, Randy. <laughs> this seems like some type of government operation. And Alden you see, Savage. Well, you walk, watch as Alden walks up to, uh, no, Urk walks up to Alden and says, It's true, the Ardmagos put seeds in your skin. You see those bumps? I don't like you, bird man. Stop saying weird things. Urk is 15 feet away from you. <laughs> Brother, that's not a bird, that's a duck. What are you talking about, brother? I hate you, duck. You're getting on my nerves, Randy. Sorry, brother. Thank you for checking me. I will respect your boundaries. <laughs> oh, I love him. Okay, so. Glad we came to an agreement. First things first uh, graveyard, so we can establish the time. Yep. 
Right. All right. So you guys are heading to the graveyard? Yep. Yeah. All right. As you head to the graveyard, all of you are 21, so you speed run through <laughs> the undead giant, I'm assuming. Yeah, we mm -hmm. just shout our just ages out. Just hold up my don't even stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you... <laughs> are you heading for the jackpot? Yeah. yeah. All right. One of us is going to have to risk it for the biscuit. I mean, we have a gambler right here. Gandler. Gandler, right. Sorry. It's different, mm -hmm. Grewa. Uh, that's <laughs> fair. Yeah, I can gandle if you want. Would, yeah. you like to gand would you like to gandle for the jackpot? Yeah, yeah. And right. Devet's going to step up to this, <laughs> to this skeleton. Oh, God. As he does, he's going to look back to all of you. All right. What's my lucky number? Uh, four. Three. Uh, uh, I thought it was six. Speed. <laughs> okay. Um, I go, I'll go with three. And Devet is going to look the skeleton. He's going to go three. The skeleton is going to pick up a die. And he's going to throw it comes up four and you can see Devet goes oh what does huh? as he's sucked into the unstable rift all right time was 12 45 on the 60th of lion year 715 ar that's a weird thing to keep track of <laughs> yeah, okay, just, thanks bro bro <laughs> gentlemen synchronize your watches <laughs> <laughs> all right okay uh, on to the next one <laughs> Thank you. No problem. <laughs> you... Just for getting rid of him. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea what we mean. No. It's... Well, we need it. Okay. Uh, do you guys want to head to the unaffected cabin? We haven't been there yet. Yes. Go to the yeah. house. Yeah. Gotcha. Sure, you, you don't want to go theaters. to the golden castle? I don't no, want to make that sick fuck laugh. We don't right, know what it is. Cabin. Yeah, let's go to the cabin. We need intel. Okay. Then you all head up to the cabin. And as you make your way there, it sits on this nice, chill, grassy hill. Uh, it's one story, a little bit of moss on the roof. Knock, knock. Gotcha, then. As you go knock on the cabin, there is some shuffling. And the door opens to reveal what appears to be, like, an orcish man. Um, hi. How can I help you? Uh, hello. We were just uh, passing through and we saw your lovely cabin and how it really stands out from the rest of the architecture here. And we were just wondering to see if you could tell us a little about it. Oh, yeah, um... I bought this cabin about five years back. Uh, got a pretty good deal. Um, it was when the market was a bit low. Um, I'm I'm Craig, by the way. Good, good to meet nice all to meet of you. Craig. Um, I'm not looking to sell. Well, maybe. Um, I like to fish, but I can't fish in my pond anymore. Uh, there's a monster in it. Um, it's a monster in your pond. Interesting. Yeah, it's a pretty big one. I tried to get it out a few times, but it ate my wife. Oh, oh I'm so well, sorry. Nah, like she that? was a bitch. No. Uh, well, um, it's a lot cheaper than divorce. I'm sorry about your pond, then. Yeah, that's the real loss here. Well, we actually happen to be adventurers, so if you would like us to deal with whatever's in your pond, try and take a look, we would be more than happy to. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't have a lot of money. Uh I I'm just an investor. Um but I can I can give you fish uh and access to the pond whenever you want. That sounds perfect. Sure. And um have you happened to see anything like and I'll I'll describe the splinter in great detail. Have you ever have you seen anything like that around here? Uh, 
You know, I think I might have seen something like that in the thing's mouth when I ate my damn wife. Bless you. There's our answer. <laughs> Well, thank you, sir. Right. If you don't mind, could you show us to the pond so we can uh, begin our work? Oh yeah, sure. If you just follow this path right to the back of the house, you'll you'll be right there. You'll you'll easily find it. Thank you, good sir. Oh yeah, uh, there's there's some uh, fish and a, a drying out there. I mean, you can help yourself to some of the fish if you want. A giant? Hmm. What did huh? you say? There's a what out there? A fish and what? There's a, a there's fish. fish drying out there. Yeah, there's ah, fish drying. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I heard Wasting fish time. and Let's a giant. Oh, yeah, no, well, there... thank you, good sir. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Oh, and Colin, did anything change when we ate the gumbo? Um, I mean, you would notice that your powers didn't change. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, sweet. Uh. But you can head to the pond. Let's yes. go to the pond. And while this is happening, Urk is definitely going to turn the fray and say, it's probably a giant. One in the front. <laughs> okay. Um, can... Um, here, do you guys want to just test this real fast? Yep, let's just fight the thing. I'm can gonna I go... toss one pond. of the fish into the center of the pond from a distance? Sure, are you walking up and plucking a fish, or are you taking one of the fish from there? Uh, I'll take one of the fresher fish. One of the fresher fish? Very cool. Mm -hmm. it and looks then plop to, it. Yeah, it looks to be oh, like yeah. a, a small, like, pond bass, like nothing major. Mm, I don't trust any of this. I toss the fish into the center of the lake and back up a little. Gotcha, then... As you toss the fish into the center of the lake, it kind of floats there for a few moments. And then you watch as the fish kind of slowly sinks. And then you watch as the water erupts as this massive oh, okay. <laughs> sea creature emerges from it as it seems to eat the fish and as it gives a roar, its eyes look to all of you. I'm gonna need you to roll for order. <laughs> cool. Oh, my lord. Ooh, 11. <laughs> okay, so for Urk and 11, what about you, Freyer? Nine. Nine, very nice. Piper. Uh, also nine. Cool. Alden? Two. Well, then you suck. Issa? I know. <laughs> Six. Six, uh, a little below average there, Issa, not gonna lie. I'm a below average man. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Freya or Piper, which one of you wants to go first? Uh, uh, I, I go would first. like to go first. Okay. Oh, go for it. Yay. In that case, Urk, you're up. Cool. Uh, I'm going to run up onto the dock, or like over here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to hit the sea monster with my... Uh, dagger okay now hear me out i only have one physical uh-huh greater than four we're gonna see what happens hey two <laughs> 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 damage you swing and you impact against like the the sea monster's tough hide but your dagger doesn't like take any thing really away you flick off a few scales all right as a background action i'm going to use my background action on piper i'm calling heads okay calling heads odds or evens uh evens it's odds uh, unfortunate all right um that's my turn Cool. We just haven't been good at gambling. Ye yep. Uh, Freyer, you're up. Okay. Um, I'm going to first use my command ability. Go for the jaw! Uh, everybody gains benefit one on damage rolls against this creature. Um, 
I will also use my hyper adaptive armor. I'll choose normal damage for nice. the resistance too. And then let's see. When Mm. Okay, can I attempt to crush the jaw of the creature using my telekinesis? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm attempting to just crush its jaw. Slash R, 46, CS greater than 3, uh, damage rating of 4. 12 damage. 12 damage, then yeah, as you target this creature's jaw, the jaw looks fairly solid as, you know, it will kind of take that on stamina points trying to like uh, seemingly like wrestle away from your influence. Okay. Um, and um, I believe that is, I'll just move up here to give benefit to people as an additional die. That's the end of my turn. Gotcha, gotcha. Then Piper, you're up. Okay. Um, a die? Or is yep. he too far? I am. Oh, I should have rolled one more. It's okay. Can I do that now? Sure. 26. He has greater than 3. Times 4. Uh, an extra four damage. Nice. Yay. That's it. Okay, then Piper, still you. Alright, uh, background action, fighting spirit on Alden, so both of our damage ratings go up by one. Um, and I think Piper draws one of his blades, um, kind of narrows his eyes like he's trying to aim, and accidentally fires lasers out of them, <laughs> and he'll be using... Laser eyes for his turn. <laughs> okay. Alright, um... Let's see. Equal to physical or spirit score. Um, because it's a damage roll, I still get friend bonuses, right? Yes. Okay. This poor sea monster is outnumbered. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Thank god for Ben... Actually, benefit didn't help, but it's fine. Uh, two successes, um, and it is two plus my power score, so four, P uh, should be eight points of, I believe, normal fire damage. Yeah, normal fire damage. Gotcha, we'll take that on stamina points as it kind of twists to the side, avoiding the laser beams. I think Piper just kind of blinks in shock, and that's going to be his turn. Gotcha. The sea monster is angry. And you watch as it begins to crawl out of the pond on massive, what appears to be bear legs that are attached to the body underneath it as it hauls itself out. Um, and then it's going to, <laughs> it's going to take a bite at Piper. Okay. I just counted before. I actually have three armor blocks. Well, that's good. Oh, that's a lot of dice. Uh, Damn. 42 damage. And this has I can just take two. that. Lucky for me, I have 45 points of stamina. So stamina, please. Nice. And then it's going to attempt to go ahead and bite at Freyer. For 35 damage to you, Freyr. Um, what type of damage is this? This is uh, normal piercing. Okay, so it loses two successes, correct? Correct, so then it would only be 21 points of damage. God bless resistance. I can take that on stamina. Gotcha. Some of its teeth kind of scratch at the sides of your armor, you're able to just barely leap away. And let me see something here. Okay, that's funny. Uh, that'll be the end of its turn. Issa, you're up. 
Uh, taking a book. What? Taking a page out of Piper's book. I'll pull down my lower eyelid and fire a laser at it, I guess. Okay. Uh. Mm. Do you have the nobleman background action? The noble one? No, I Oh have no, scholar. you have the scholar, that's right. Yeah. Um I have the noble set kit. So just uh, 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 yes. One extra dice. One Damn! Two. Oh wow. my lord. Athena! <laughs> you have to tell you, dog. <laughs> wow. Um gay and stupid. Can I use Is offhand your background action? Yes. Yeah. Or movement or movement. Oh. Well, I will give uh Alden my background action, which is reroll to die. Cool. And back up. Okay, does your movement hindered with hyper Uh, you can't move if you've done background yeah. action. Oh, wait, no, you didn't attack. Never mind. I, I didn't do the offhand, yeah. though. Never mind, I'm stupid. But it doesn't cut down at all? No, it doesn't. I mean... Okay, cool. I'll head over there and hmm. my turn. Alright. Don't forget to add a hero point. Do I really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you oh. all your... You okay. dealt no... no yeah, you got no successes on the damage roll. Oh, it's on damage rolls? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's my mm -hmm. turn. What a hero. Good enough. Alden, you're Yay. Up. Cool. Uh, background. Command. Okay. Then, uh, taking the bow and aiming for the jaw again. Nice. And I get one friend. Greater than it's three or up, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you used command. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, uh, it's benefit two now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to re-roll two of those dice. All successes. Four successes times four. Sixteen damage. Sixteen damage. We'll take that on stamina, as the creature is kind of wiggling back and forth on its massive bare legs. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I'm gonna stay. Eh, I'm gonna step right over here, and that's my turn. Cool. Uh, on initiative one, the second sea monster is going to come out. What the? <laughs> as oh. this one is crackling with like this unstable energy and aura as it's kind of chattering here and there, definitely not looking good. And there's a part of your mind, Alden, as you look at it, where you know exactly what happened. The wife was the real monster all along. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Uh, and the second sea monster is gonna come right here and it's going to nip at Urk. Huh? It's a, it's a little, little nippy. Nippy? My vulnerability has two weaknesses, right? Uh, yeah. Cool. Gonna bite at you for 14 damage, Urk. Huh. I'll take that on stamina. Cool. Then, as the monster bites at you and you leap out of the way, you can see, kind of at the back of this mouth, this, like, red burning scar of an orb that is lodged, kind of, like, among some of the teeth lining its throat. Okay. And, uh, that will be its turn. Top the round, Urk, you're up. So, I have a new strategy. I have talked to animals, right? Yeah. <laughs> can I try and talk to the sea monster? <laughs> sure. To the one. Mm -hmm. uh, hello. Um, sorry to bother you. Uh, what's your name? 
I don't have a name. Would you like a name? Sure. Um, are you are you, are you <laughs> male, female, or neither? I identify as male. Okay, identify as males. Um, how about Johnny? Johnny Good? Uh, Johnny Good's a good name. All right, Johnny Good. You seem sick. Uh, yeah, oh, I got this thing in my throat, and this bitch won't leave me alone. Oh, um, do you? If you don't mind, I could remove the thing from your throat. Uh, can you remove her? Uh, that that one. I'm gonna point to the big sea monster. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, certainly. If you we're not your enemies, we're here to actually uh, do that right now. So if you want, and then we can remove that thing from your throat, and you can be all better. Make a spirit check. Okay. Two success. I have two. Oh, Ooh, I'm going to use uh, a hero point for that. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, anyone have any hero points they want to give? I have a singular one that I could give. I have a singular one as well. Can I'll take so it. I, yeah. I would like Can to give? save mine for Fair. other times. Brother. Okay, no successes. Uh, the creature Johnny Good shakes their head. No deal! Defeat her! Alright, fine. We'll defeat her. And then Urk is gonna... <coughs> run off. And, uh, yeah, um, the sea monster says to defeat her. And, uh, was that my action, or was that... Uh, that was your background action. We'll say. A background action, then I will swing at the sea monster. Okay. Be sick. Are oh, you okay? No. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Um, you want to? You want to reroll the forge? <laughs> did Caleb um, give you the cheese touch? I'm just saying we should reset forge. Point. I'll take the hero point, and I'm going to reset my server, <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Freyer, you're up. Okay. Um, I'll use my background action to give benefit one to everybody. Um, and... Hmm. I'm trying to think. What would be funny? Also, I don't know okay. what you're saying, Athena. I'm rolling above average this session. <laughs> Yeah, we should reset it. <laughs> um, uh, Freyer's going to just wave their hand and be like, can you just get the fuck out of here? And try to do banish on the creature. Try oh, wait. Oh, banish only no. works if the creature has less than 50 stamina points. Mm -hmm. Does it have less than 50? No. no. Mm -hmm. Never mind, then. <laughs> I'm gonna... Bonk him with my. Well, you you blade. wouldn't know unless you do it. So. Oh, unless I try. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll consider. Yeah. Then this is mm -hmm. the attempt. Then. Yeah, and you're like. Uh, are you able to attempt without the item? Because we'll you technically need a holy relic for banish. He has a holy relic. Oh. Okay. doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't work. work. Is that your turn? Um, uh, yeah, that'll be my turn. Okay, Piper, it's your turn. Okay. Um, background action on Alden again. Um, and then... Ooh, I'm a little better with... Yeah, I'm a little better with an actual weapon, so I'll step up and take a melee attack with um, my Chakram. Okay. <coughs> I got two friends there. I have... Is it benefit two now? Still yeah. benefit two, yes. Okay. Nice! Uh, that is actually all successes for me. Um, you did give it to me. Yeah. Coward. 
Caleb stole all the luck. <laughs> I have been dealing with this curse for I don't even fucking know how long. You can deal with it for a session. You don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it either. I don't want it. Uh, I never have. <laughs> don't want it. I never have. Okay, um, should be, I think, 15 points of damage. Uh, the three damage rating of three. All right, and what does it look like as you attack? Um, I think he takes the, um, disc and just kind of, like, heats a cutter, kind um, almost, like, kind of carving into, if there's maybe, like, a kind of flesher-looking spot on the neck or anything, going for anything that looks like it can be easily sliced. Yeah, and as you carve into this larger creature's neck, it cries out in pain as a red burst covers the area as Freyer you blink and open your eyes hey how you doing sir my name's Devet of the church of Ateus um we're looking for <laughs> donations of gold or food or we're even doing a boot drive um you know this uh, will count as a, a tax benefit uh if you do want it um, you know, you're taxed all the time, so why not, you know, put a, a little off when the government comes knocking a little later? Oh, um, you know, this is new. Uh, uh, ah, you're from the Church of Ateus? Yeah, yeah, or you're from the Church of Ateus. Yeah. Yeah, Toby's from the Church of Ateus, too. He's a priest. And Toby just, like, slowly waves. Oh, no. <laughs> Reality truly is breaking. Yes, I mean, of course, we're on a <clears throat> mission. Of course, I'm on a mission from the church itself. But um, as you know, I'm always happy to do donate to the church and its glorious charitable efforts. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, you already have full tax benefit, but we'll we'll take everything you got. And I'll hand them 50 gold. <laughs> well, thank you, Brother Irk. Thank you, Brother Zave. And at this point, Toby's going to walk up and over to Piper. Hey, you you got anything you want to donate to the church? <sighs> uh, <sighs> sure, I guess they'll get it back soon enough anyway. Um, and Piper will hand over his 40 gold. Thank you. Much appreciated. This will be used to help. <laughs> help I'm sure it will be. I trust <laughs> you completely. <clears throat> like all those people he helped at that orphanage. <laughs> yeah, I felt like I was hearing quote marks around the word help. I, I meet the dragonborn in the middle. Hello there. 30. Hey. Uh, we're accepting donations today, if you have any. Yeah, here's, uh, here's something. Oh, well, thank you. I'm gonna use these to, yeah. uh, buy some boots for the boot drive. That sounds great. It does, mm. doesn't it? Yeah. Don't you love helping people? I, you know, I've been trying. I've been trying. Well, trying's half the battle, friend. Would you like a hug? <laughs> yeah. And Morale's gonna give Issa a big hug. Mm. Awesome. Well, uh, brother, we are called to continue on our holy mission, but we'll uh, hope that your boot drive goes incredibly well and that you are able to deliver all these... Uh, great uh, goods and gifts to the people of the region. Oh, well, uh, Ateus guide us, brother. Okay, friends, time to go. And they're all going to begin to march off <laughs> to greener pastures, and Toby's going to give you all a wave. It's been great meeting all of you. And they're all just going to begin walking off. Uh, and then you hear a caw as a massive bird, wingspan of 100 feet, swoops down, picks them all up, and flies them away. As Devet goes, Ateus, help me! That's not normal. Uh, oh, 
Oh God. That was a they'll lot be... of people to go at once. We should get out of here. They'll be they'll be back. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> gotcha. Are you heading you out? Are any leaving. <laughs> Fuck this. I'm not even picking up my my bed at this point. I'm just leaving. Oh, you just yeah. You're just like fuck the bed. I don't need shit. <laughs> we'll be I back. I pick up my backpack and stuff, but yeah. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Then whoever the fuck comes over here can have the tent. We're just kind of sitting here with, uh, we'll do this again, maybe energy, so. Yeah. Are the geckos still? Uh, no, they're back to horses. Oh, okay. Oh my god, yay! They're horses again. You guys are horses again. Oh god, they're gonna have to pay bills. give Butters a hug. Butters looks at you, and you can see the eyes settle on you, and he gives you a thousand yard stare. There are oh. eons in those eyes, Freyr. Oh. He Can knows things brothers? no one should know. He has seen things no horse should ever see. The eldritch knowledge within his mind has warped him forever. And in perfect common, Butter says, I would like to go home. <laughs> Sorry, Butters. Um, We're trapped here until either we solve the problem or we're all dead. Let's go. Yeah. Death is a social construct. <laughs> Death is, is preferable. Do you, uh, you, you know a lot of things now, don't you? I have seen the heat death of the universe. I have seen the creation of galaxies. The death of planets. All that is and all that was shall turn to dust. All that shall remain is the stable. <laughs> Okay. Uh, do you know do how to fix a vitality gate? Vitality gates. But what is a gate? A passage? A prison? Who is to say? It definitely sounded like a prison. But are we the wardens or are we the prisoners, Isa? Are we the wardens or the prisoners? Uh, Who so watches see, the know? watchers? Ah, you're that kind of knowledgeable. Alrighty, let's go. You would throw one such as me aside so quickly and so readily. We have sacrificed we you. We, we have yeah, been beasts on. of burden to you, Freya. Butters, we appreciate all your hard work. We're also sacrificing we promise, ourselves. We promise we will build you the nicest stable we possibly can when we get back. This and is a lie. This is a lie. But I know my lot. I have no other purpose than to carry. For to carry is the burden of all horses. We are but kindling for the cosmic fire. We will never have a solo. We are simply background singers. Forgive me, masters. I have forgotten my place. Let us forge onward. So that we might return again, and so the Ouroboros of time might consume itself, and all might know peace for a brief second between eternity and forever. Onward! <laughs> and he's going to just start trotting away <laughs> towards Cantor. Dude, I think he might be our leader. At least we're moving you, again. Yeah, I just, you know, I really hope he can return to blissful ignorance when this is all over. I don't think so. I think Lisa, don't stuck. say that, please. I, I, I think you are stuck with a horse burden with the knowledge of the cosmos. Wow. Damn it. He was saying a lot of eerie things, like the cosmic fire and being background singers. I don't like it. Uh, I'm sure, you know, give it a couple of weeks, he'll forget. Time to go. Uh, so, Cantor speedrun any percent? Uh, Cantor speedrun yeah, any percent? Speed yeah, speedrun any percent. Yeah. Gotcha. Unless, Colin, it'll end in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the edge. It is now 12 miles out, but it is on the complete fritz. As you watch here, <clears throat> as everything seems to be expanding, breaking down, parts of the land turning to dust and reforming into buildings, trees, momentary people, as even the sky itself seems to be falling in places like it is made out of tile you going okay. inside 
Yeah, yep. we're going inside. Yippee! Going to the wagon? Yep. Yeah. Decanter? Yep. And Decanter. Yeah. Yeah. And um to time it so that we get to the graveyard, you know. At twelve forty five. That's when we're gonna get twelve forty five. Gotcha. And you can absolutely time it so that you make it to the graveyard and to that point at exactly twelve forty five. He's he's and I will. Circle. He's like four. <laughs> what? Four. four. Jackpot four. <laughs> Jackpot four. Uh, four. Uh, as you wish, do you know the rules? Four. I okay. And he rolls the die. It's a four. Oh uh, oh nice. shit. Whoa. Uh, and are you reaching out your hands for the jackpot? <laughs> yeah. As the red orb kind of spins down towards you, the skeleton looks around. Oh shit, uh, I didn't think this entirely through. And as it touches your hands, the powers animating him fail as all the skeletons just <laughs> and fall down. Oh, uh, well, he was nice. He was. Now to the lake. Does it sort of just follow like a little a little orb or do I have to carry it? You have to like carry it. It's like a small orb the size of a melon. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll the, you have to and get the orb the from the thing in the lake. And then we yep. have from the monster in the lake, and then we have to I assume the king also has an orb. Probably. Yeah. Um, um, as I recall, uh, Freyr has telekinesis. Oh, yes, yeah. I can try to pull it out of its mouth. Well, bait um, out the first one, you get the second one, the orb out of the second one, then we run. Yeah, that sounds good. Go to the king afterwards. All right. Well, um, who's funny? <laughs> The seeds are funny. All right, uh, let's go. Okay. Gotcha. So, yeah, are you running to the cabin then? Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Then, as you go and head there, at this point, uh, Craig is going to kind of open the door. Or are you not even talking to him? Are you just rushing right by? Just straight to the leg. We're gonna, gonna run by, we're, gonna, we're gonna run by Craig's house and Urk is just gonna shout, We're adventurers, we're gonna help kill the monster. Huh? <laughs> as, Thank you, bye! As you run. <laughs> uh, at this point, though, you reach the pond. Okay. Um. Alright, this time I'm gonna try and talk to the other monster, alright? Throw something yeah, in. I'm gonna move move over here because this is where the thing appeared before. Like right there. Uh, I can go ahead and. Oh. I'll toss the fish because I'm gonna talk to the monster. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Then, as you go ahead and toss the fish, the water is going to explode once again after a moment as the creature just basically breaks the surface with this great roar. It's your turn, Urk, as you are first in initiative. Urk is going to talk, uh, attempt to speak with animals again to the monster. Uh, hello, um, what's your name? I'm Arena! Arena, are you Craig's uh, wife? Yes, where is he? He's in the cabin over there. I... Cannot leave this water for long. Bring me my husband. Okay. Um, he threw out my he... liquor. Uh, will you wait here for us to go grab uh, your husband? I shall. All right, cool. And then Urkus is ready. Somebody get Craig. For a let's get Craig here. Let's have a little conversation. <laughs> All right, so are you guys going to get Craig? We're going to go get yep. Craig. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> then as you go and get Craig, he kind of opens the door. Uh, hello? I hold up my noble seal. Your wife wants to talk to you. 
Oh, I don't. I don't really like that idea. We won't let anything happen to you. Okay. And make a spirit check. Not good at this. Oh, one success. Alright, um, I mean, you are noble. Okay, and Craig will head down to the pond with you as the massive sea creature is waiting there. And Iker. the creature is going to turn to you. Bring him closer to me. Hey, you can't eat him. We're going to have a little talk, all right? I want have, to eat have, him. Have you ever heard of marriage counseling? <laughs> yes, we went once. All right, let's. We're gonna try this. The marriage guys. counselor threw us out. That's fine. Listen, I'm a priest. I can help. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. Um. So I, since I don't think you can, you speak to him. No. He. All right. Then I will translate. threw me to the monster below. All right. I will translate then, and then um. We'll uh, we'll go from there. Hmm. So um. Tell him that I hate him and I want to eat him. Craig, your uh, wife has said that you threw her to the monster below. And that she is very angry about this. Can you can you understand that feeling, Craig? Yeah, yeah, I, I can understand that feeling. It's, it's just that she's so terrible all the time. And and what, what what brings on these feelings, Craig? Like, let, let's go deeper into that. Well, you know, one time we were at a, a restaurant, and this poor waitress, I mean, she got the order wrong. And then, uh, yeah, my, my wife, uh, yeah, she got her fired. Okay, okay. And then she burned down her house. Okay. And then she stole her cat. <laughs> and she made chili out of that cat. Then she fed the girl <laughs> chili made from her own cat. Holy shit. Okay. So she did <laughs> she did that last week. I journaled about it. Oh my oh, god. Good. The journaling is good, Craig. Uh, now, and then Urk is going to turn back to uh, <laughs> the sea monster. Now you understand that, you know, how your actions can be perceived by others, right? What do you, you mean know? by that? So, you know, sometimes we, we think, you know, we're doing stuff and we act, right? And, you know, we always uh, uh, view ourselves as, you know, the, the right guy. Because, you know, we, we want to be right. Right? I'm always right. Exactly. That's what my marriage ring meant. See, here's, here's the thing, right? Um, can you understand that maybe your actions might have scared him? What actions specifically did he tell you about? Uh, so I, I, he he mentioned a waitress. She forgot the gravy for my biscuits. Right, right, and that and that is a problem. But do you think? Would you say that your action was a proportional response? I feel like I undershot it a bit, to be quite honest. Okay, now. <laughs> That is, you know, I get it, right? That's that's how we're raised, right? I, my mom would be so disappointed in me right now. I can't even recognize mom? myself. I've grown so weak. Uh, so weak, yes. Um, and see, would you say that you, you feared your mom's disappointment? Oh, shit. She was a tough woman. Exactly. I think, and you can see how a lot of your, you know, responses to things can come from that fear of, like, being disappointed, right? I mean, no, I, I just really wanted to fuck up that girl's life, but maybe there are some other underlying <laughs> issues that, that stem from that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And see, now, 
I, you know, we're going to find you like a good marriage counselor and we're going to work through these things and see the important thing about like this is that we're going to find you one that's not going to throw you out, that's not going to judge you and who's really going to help you work through it. I'm willing to if Craig is. And then we're just going to turn to Craig. Now, I've spoken to your wife and she says she's willing to try marriage counseling again. And I, we're going to find you a marriage counselor that's going to work for, you know, both of you and not going to kick you out this time. My brother and Zell, she's insane. Listen, Craig, <laughs> I think that this, this is something you're going to have to work with, right? Because divorce is expensive, you mentioned, right? Yeah, but she's trapped in the pond now. Uh, yes, but y you want to fish. So you're going to have to work with this. If you don't want, if you if you want to do the things that you enjoy, like fishing, you're going to have to come to a to some sort of agreement, and that's what marriage counseling could do for you. And there could be individual counseling in that, and I don't think that's wrong. But Craig, you're going to need to, you know, even if, you know, what you said is true, you're going to have to, you know, step it is. up here and you're. It is. Craig, you're going to have to step up here and you're going to have to. Really take initiative here because if you don't who will i mean i i i don't really want to take this initiative i'm kind of like if you, uh, man like what happens if she gets out well we're not uh, from what i can tell that's not going to happen anytime soon right yeah i guess so you have not you have nothing to hurt from trying Oh, right? man. Right? Because you're kind of stuck with each other. So. Yeah, I guess so. So, can we, can we, can, can you agree to a marriage counseling? At least, you know, just trying it, you know? Like, and if truly, truly something horrible goes wrong, you know, like, I, I can't blame you. I, I can't stop you. And maybe, maybe, you know, divorce is in the future, but, you know, you, you got to try. Because if you don't try, then. She's worth it, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> I'll give it a try. And I'll turn back to the sea monster. He says he's willing to give it a try. Okay. Perfect. All right. I don't have any money to pay you. That's fine. Um, we're actually uh, trying to get the... Uh, we're, well, uh, we're trying to get the orb from the other sea monster. Okay, I can get that. And you watch as this massive sea monster like disappears, oh, no. <laughs> and and you can see this pond seems like it's like five feet deep. You're like, what in the shit? Where is she going? But there's a few moments, and then you watch as the other smaller sea monster is thrown up and out of the pond as it splatters to the ground, stone cold dead. Knew it. I I was. Oh God. Is that good? Uh, yeah, uh, that's perfect. It's okay. They had some eggs down there. I ate them. I hope you didn't need those. Uh, nope, nope. Uh, thank you so much. And thank they you also for had a, a few family <laughs> portraits. I mailed oh. those to their relatives already. Oh, well, that well, was that kind was of you. And that was kind. Yes, I wrote, um, ha ha, I murdered your friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, well, thank you um, for the orb, um, and I wish you both the best of luck in marriage counseling. And if you know if you need, ever need to find me, um, I'm usually in Laurel, but you know I can make some couple trips out here to make sure see things are going well, right? Okay. I'm going to go think about all the things I will tell this counselor to prove that I am right. And you watch as this sea monster sinks back down into the pond. That right, is Craig. absolutely insane. All right, all right Craig. I think. Into the game. Craig, I think you're doing great. And then I'm going to grab the orb and we're going to go find the king. <laughs> okay. Oh, goodness. So, is it king time? King, king time. time. Who's, who's funny? I like that we only heard half of um, all that conversation. I, I volunteer myself as tribute. I mean... Yep, go ahead. We do, like, okay. Listen, if, as, long as, we, as long as we can do it... As long as you can do it, it's fine. You have to figure out what's going on here. Then, as you continue your speed run, you are 
taken to you know, the edge of the golden castle as you are led inside. And as you are, you enter this great throne room as the king is there. Ah, so one of you is going to apply for the position of jester? Prayer, I believe you said you want to. Uh, yes, that would be me. Very well. You have one minute, else you will be consumed by beavers. <laughs> okay. Time starts now. It has started. Okay. Uh, Ease up, paper, now! I grab one of Alden's arms. Oh, what are you oh doing? shit, you, I guess you I'm... grab the other arm? <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about the plan. I'm sorry, Alden. Over in front of Alden, I grab a bag of seed and just start cramming it into it. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew you were one of the beavers. <laughs> <laughs> I, and then, and then, and then Freyr just very slowly and sweating bullets stares at the king intensely while his friend gags on seed. Just <laughs> with a mess gaze. Issa oh, puts his arm on Alden's back and makes him bow with Issa. That is absolutely fantastic. Always suffer for comedy. Good job. You will be my new jester. Uh, you start tomorrow, and here, I shall gift you with one of my crown jewels. And he reaches into a pocket and pulls out that rift of instability. Well, Freya, you did a great job. Go ahead and take the take the uh, gift, and we'll see you tomorrow, King. Yes. Very well. Okay, we do just that. I accept the gift, and we will... <laughs> Yeah, and I say we'll come back tomorrow, and we head out. Gotcha. And as you say this, you look kind of in the distance, and you can see that large kind of like a red light is only growing. As all around, like bits and parts of Cantor are beginning to warp and change even more. And as this energy continues to fill this space waves of instability start to like basically wash over this place as some of the people walking through turn to statues or dust parts of the ground lifting up and turning to soot the rest of you kind of huddle close as you see the rift continuing to churn and churn and churn however as you stand close together, your own rifts of instability combined with some alligator gumbo is helping to preserve you as you all look in the distance. Naylor Ramos takes in a breath as he looks out amongst the crowd. Now, what you've just heard thus far is the background information regarding the research into these red spiral events. However, like I'm sure all of you are waiting for, there is potential hypothesis that connects red spiral events to the most legendary and obscure magics in the Rings of Merapis. I began this exploration by attempting to find and document red spiral events in the past. Me and my colleagues across the Shy Caliphate have been able to corroborate 17 red spiral events that have happened throughout the past thousand years. They are all incredibly small with total radii ranging usually less than 100 feet. However, given uh, paleontological and archaeological research, we have determined that the red spirals have one predictable factor. 
across the simulated models that we have constructed upon these events, we found that any red spiral event has an 8% chance to cascade into an angel egg event. Therefore, looking at these trials, we were able to pinpoint at least four angel egg events that we believe directly correlate with the coming of a red spiral. Um, looking at our research, we were even able to prove, and you can see this on the final two pages of your pamphlet, that with 12 consecutive red spiral events, there is more than an 88% chance to create an angel egg event. The linking of these two data points is, of course, extremely interesting, and we would like to begin to... And at this point, the POV of the person who's been watching this lecture shifts as they slowly get up and start to leave the lecture hall. They have all the information they need at this moment. But now we pick up with all of you. Back in Cantor. <clears throat> you have just left the castle. You have all three motes of instability. And in the distance, that crackling pale red light is still growing as the pulses of energy start to leak off of it. What are you guys doing? Ooh. I mean, um, that's our goal. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Everyone ready? As yeah. As um, will ever be. And, uh, uh, stay safe. I don't think we're going to get any more readers after this. No, it's definitely safe, yeah. not. Well, it's been an honor. Let's fucking do this. Then... As all of you and your horses make your way to this pulsing red rift, it bathes the area in a deep crimson light. You feel the tremors of magic coming through at the instability palpable as all of you now stand before this large undulating ball of red energy. What are you doing? Do we see any of the people fighting that we were told about? Looking or... inside, it's hard to actually see into the interior. There are wisps like black smoke can hear a noise, see bits of material moving throughout, but anything that can be seen with the naked eye, no. Well. Into the breach. Yeah. Um, nothing else in the area aside from the usual red spiral absurdity. Make a physical check Freyer. okay that is not my strong suit uh one success one success as you look there is actually a path leading into the red spiral event um very nice marble stones inlaid into the ground um, with what could theoretically be assumed to be maybe flowers having once been planted along the edge. The flowers have now all twisted and warped in their design and their makeup. This was likely leading to somewhere. What exactly, you don't know. Mm. Okay. 
Well, I I'm not. Did Mama Law? Oh, no, uh, did Mama ahead. Law say something about us having to combine the modes of instability to get in? Um, um I mean, Colin, correct me if I'm wrong. Did they already combine? They have not. No, they haven't. Uh, I mean, probably that's worth trying. Um, do yeah. Do it after we're in? I, I well, think we were supposed to combine them in order to get it to stabilize enough for us to get in. Yeah, I think placing, I think we we're supposed to place these shards into this rift in order to create the opening we need. And yeah. probably going down that walkway is our best bet. Seems to yeah. head right in. Try and combine them. If we kind of just hold them near each other, do they uh, like magnetize together almost? The like they want to be together, the splinters? They seem to be drawn together as you would hold them together they begin to spread red crackling lightning and energy between each mm. other almost like a reaction is accelerating all right let's do it let's bring them together as we approach the instability yep. yeah sounds like a good idea all right then as you bring these three instability rifts together as you approach the barrier simultaneously you press the three against that red wall and for a moment there is almost like a shattering effect as a doorway a gate opens in front of you and then as all of you begin to pass through you enter the red churn of this space as all around you it is like this red tornado of energy as chunks of land fly through the interior of this space buildings animals people too it is all a chaotic frenzy however as you look ahead the path continues looping, spinning, diving as it makes its way towards this beautiful golden temple that is floating at the center of this rift as massive crackling sparks of red lightning flow off of it and as you watch Piper another pulse <laughs> comes out of this temple and as it ripples over the landscape you can see a cow becomes what appears to be a 30 foot tall statue of Ateus made out of what appears to be solid granite you can see houses shift and become water at the very touch of this wave it seems like the intensity of the event is worsening Ooh. We had better hurry. <clears throat> yeah. The temple seems to be the center. Mm -hmm. Does this seem like it's changing? The, the the forms things are changing are based on us? Like, with Urk's thing being a Teus, um, uh, Freyr being a Hydromancer? Maybe. Make a mental check. Okay. I am... Not good at those, but I'll give it a shot. Uh, zero successes. You've got no clue, for sure. This is a place that, to you, Piper, makes no sense. Okay. Well, let's keep moving. Mm -hmm. That might be the place for that. What was it called? The Vitality Gate was? Uh, yeah, you're right. When we're moving, is it like walking? Or are we kind of willing ourselves forward? Or You're walking down the path. Um, mm. 
but it is not necessarily normal as the variable length you move with each step kind of alternates. One step takes you two feet, the next ten, the next takes you back three as you're trying to walk through this chaotic soup. Mm. However, as you all continue to walk, Alden, can you please make for me a physical check? Um, is this to see things or just to make a physical check? This is to see things. Okay, then I have extra dice for that. Cool. Yippee! Uh, yippee! yippee. Three successes. Three successes. Then, as you begin to walk, you look over, and you see that Piper doesn't have a shadow anymore. Mm-hmm. Do any of us have shadows, or is it just Piper? Looking around... None of you have shadows. Oh. Oh. In fact, you think there are more of you than there should be at this moment. As all of you begin to look around and slowly begin to notice the extra people here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what did they look like? As you look, Friar, you can see yourself very clearly um, at this point, kind of behind you, it would seem. Mm -hmm. It's very strange. And at this point, as all of you are here in this space, you can see these duplicates begin to turn their eyes on all of you. I'm going to need all of you to roll for order as the duplicates begin to move in. That's great. I love fighting Whoa! That's a first for me. That, yeah, that's oh, wow. crazy. That's wild. That's wild. Here, then. Going to. Oh, that's the worst for me. Alright, Alden? Seven. Seven. Issa? Uh, three. Three. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Urk? Uh, six. Six. Piper? Quick start's funny. I got an 18. That is very funny. <laughs> then, top of the round. Oh, hmm? oh going into this combat, can I just have my um, pocket dimension open? Sure, you could absolutely have your pocket dimension open. Nice, okay. That's just where I get my water from for my attacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes, magic in this place. Yep, so yeah. if that's the case, as you open your pocket dimension next to you, Freyr, you watch as the pocket dimension itself begins to manifest into form and shape. Let me oh, roll great. for the living magic. Oh, yeah. mm. Only a three. Okay, cool. So beans. we'll go last, so that's fine, but Piper, you're up first. Great. Okay. Um... 
Let's see. Uh, Are these not set up yeah, in an okay. initiative counter right now? They're not. Okay. Great. Um. Okay, and they're they're clearly appearing hostile towards us, right? Yeah, they seem to be moving in hostily as all of you kind of started to look around. Okay. Um, fighting spirit on Alden. Uh, his damage rating will increase by one. Okay. Um, Thank you. I'll sidle up to myself. Oh. Oh, is that is this not a barrier I can pass through? Hmm. No oh, it, it gave me an error. Okay, it it's giving me a interesting. I think it just hates me. It was giving me a token collide error. Anyway, uh, slashy slashy uh, with my chakra, um, with uh, assassinate, um, if I may. Cool. Um, then go uh, ahead and roll. You would have detriment oh. one. Oh. Oh no. Detriment one. I'm realizing something, but it's too late yeah. to take anything back. Oh no. This is it's bad. It's fine. I did this to myself. Who no, who's the real one? <laughs> um That's a lot of benefit. Oh, I was having a I was having a completely different train of thought. Um that is one success. <laughs> one success? Um that would get through then. How much damage? Uh, damage rating of three because of fighting spirit. Three? Gotcha. Then as you slash, your target skitters back trying to dodge out of the way of your attack and just barely does. Great. Okay. Um, and then let's see. Uh, fighting spirit, does that cost a background action or is that um, a free action? Fighting spirit? Uh, your, yeah. Your combat ability? Combat ability? Okay. That, your, that's a background action. They're all background actions. I think there was um, one that... What, uh, Unless it's like a passive. Is... Yeah, that's a, that's a passive. But no, fighting okay, spirit gotcha. has always been a background action. I don't... Uh, okay. Um, gotcha. That is the end of my turn then. Gotcha, then. Freyer, you're up next. Okay, um, I'm going to use my background action for command to give myself- to give everybody benefit one on the living magic next to me. Okay. Because, I'm assuming- is the living magic, like, hostile to me? <laughs> Who knows, man? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um... Okay, you know, I'm going to retract that and just leave it alone for now. It's done. It's done. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's good or bad, though. You don't have to attack. <laughs> yeah. Just put it on it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to attack the other me. Okay. You have okay, do it. detriment one, then. Okay, so it's not necessarily an ally, but it might not be bad. Okay. Um, then I will go ahead and take an attack. Okay. With my glaive. Sounds good. No, it does not work. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm getting a hero point, though. You do, as the target of your attack definitely scoots out of the way of your attack. Okay. Uh, oof, okay. Um, if you're, you're me, we can just stop, right? Mm. Uh, <laughs> any response? Um, you can see the you is going to begin to extend a hand towards you and you can see that the hand has like these jagged claws. Ooh. Oh. Okay. End of turn. End of turn. Cool. Then after you, it would be the z the them, 
and the them are going to be doing things. Hmm. Yes, they're going to be doing very good things. Some of the... What are... What's going to be the optimal strategy? That's probably very optimal, what I'm doing now. I love being optimal. Wouldn't you say, Peter? Yes, yes, optimal. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I'm... Yeah, this, this will be very nice. Okay. That. And firstly, we're going to start off with... Yeah, we're going to start off with a, an attack at... We're going to attack Piper now. So, Piper at you, this is going to be, let's see here. Twelve points of damage. Twelve points, that is rather rude, but I can take that on stamina. Gotcha. And then we're going to do an attack on Issa next. 12 damage to you, Issa. Okay, is it... Mm, do we know what type of damage it is? Uh, this would be normal slashing. Okay, cool. Then gonna make an attack against Alden next. Mm. For another 12. To me? To you, yeah. To yeah, Alden. Okay. That's fine, stamina. And um, then an attack against Freyr. 12 to you, Freyr at detriment 1. Okay. Interesting. Um, and for my hyper adaptive armor. Is it minus two successes because it's normal damage? Yeah. Okay, so it's just four, correct? Just four, yep. Okay. And then... So I'll take on stamina. Yeah, and then last attack is going to be against Urk. Okay. The claws come at you for only four damage. I'll take that on stamina. Cool. Then as all the shadowy kind of figures move forward as they begin to attack with claws and even sometimes just like shucking them through the air, throwing them off their body. That is going to be their turn. Alden, you're up. Mm, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Um, okay. Why not? So... I saw this Piper move over and attack this Issa, right? What are you talking about? Okay, I didn't see anything and that doesn't matter. Um, hmm. Which person did the attack come from? That like, it hit me? Against you? I mean, yeah. it looks like it came from Piper. Okay, from this one then. Mm hmm. Mm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. This is confusing and I don't like it. Um. Mm. Might be a lot of detriment. <laughs> it might. Mm. Um, you know what? I kind of want to see how much detriment it is. So, first, can I run this way? That way? How? Yes. Yeah, you could. Do I get any detriment? <laughs> you would. Okay. Can I know how much? <laughs> uh, from there, what you were 
that would be detriment two. Okay. Detriment two. So these two are uh, I don't like this. Okay. Whatever. Um command on this piper. Okay. Uh, for benefit one, and then I'm just gonna take uh, an attack with it. But a detriment two is not great. Yeah. Whatever. Uh... Nope, misses. Lovely. Then as you fire and miss, you gain a hero point as your target is able to shift and dodge out of the way. Cool. Um, then I'm going to move myself over here some more, and that's my turn. Moving yourself over there some more. Okay, yeah, go for it. That's it. Gotcha, gotcha. Then next, Urk, you're up. Okay. This is weird. I don't know what you're but talking about. It's weird. It's weird. In the red spiral, though. No. Yeah, it's Surely weird. Not. It's weird. So, um... For my hyper armor, armor, uh, I'm choosing normal damage. Sounds good. Um, there appears to be someone right next to me. But who is it? <laughs> who is it? Why? Why is that happening now, Colin? What? Okay. Um. Are you good? I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm just... My eyes are lying to me. I don't know. It sounds like he's losing his mind. Not gonna lie. It, um, it kind of does. The fog is coming. The fog is coming. Girl. No. Wait. What's um, happening here? Yeah, the no. Fog. It just happened for us, too. Oh, see? I told you. They start to glow. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're, you're pulsing. <laughs> I am. Well, I'm going to swing at the person who appears to be next to me with my dagger. Okay. Um. <clears throat> One success. A for hit? Two damage. Two damage? They will spend stamina then. As your target is going to deflect your attack and look a little frightened, a little scared. Okay. They seem very tired. Very tired. I'm going to go ahead and uh -huh. use my background ability on what I think is Issa. Okay. I'll call I'll call it evens. Evens for Issa, you said? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's an even. Boy. Even. They get a neck, an automatic success on their next roll. Lovely. And then... Um... <laughs> Water's I don't know breaking where down. I, am. I don't know where I am, so... Um, You're where you need to be. Or are what if you? I could be, what, what if I could be exactly 40 feet in the air, Colin? <laughs> you know, that's a great point. <laughs> I'm taking off into the air. I love that for you. And I'm just gonna somehow try and get my bearings. My eyes are lied to. Maybe my ears won't. Okay. Hold up. Well, if that's Urk's turn, then Issa, you're up. <laughs> so I have a quick question. I might have you, a quick do you answer. Do you want to go first, Jonah? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, for no at all, I can I use that on myself? No, I have to use it on others. Okay. Okay. Um. Well. I'll use it on what I think is Irk. Okay. 
so I, I see that guy. Um, and then I'll hit, I'll hit this guy in front of me. That guy in front of you? Okay. Can I attack the guy in front of me? Is that okay? You could attack the thing in front of you. Okay. Well, uh, with my dagger. Yeah, of course. This magic is weird. Uh, what is my brain doing right now? Yeah. Uh, nothing. Nothing. As you swing at this entity, you miss as it quickly backpedals to avoid your attack. That's really annoying of you. It really is. Um, I'll stay there, I guess. Okay. Um, hyper adaptive armor, what is it to change that? Uh, background. Okay, okay. Word. No worries, son. I won my turn. Okay. Then it would now be the turn of the living magic as it is going to. Hmm. It's going to go ahead and look towards Urk. And actually, no. Urk is being a good lad. You know what? Alden is just not being great, so it's going to target Alden. Brother, I'm not doing anything bad. I. You know what? The living magic might disagree. It's okay. You don't take any damage as it summons up what appears to be this like a vacuous space that's a part of itself almost like a portal that it's weaponizing into a saw blade and it's trying to fire it at you alden how are you dodging out of the way matrix style and then he falls on his butt fair <laughs> and then you know what i think the little guy is gonna move a little bit away just for for giggles and that will be that will be his turn then top the round piper you're up again yahoo um <laughs> what you doing piper just ran. <laughs> uh i'm sorry you said hyper adaptive armor is background action mm-hmm Okay, um, may I do that for normal damage then? Sure. Background action. Cool. And then action, attack the frayer that appears to be next to me. Okay. What? Frayer, gotcha, gotcha. Oh no. Uh, that is zero successes. Zero, you'll gain a hero point then as... You attack, but miss Freyer entirely. <clears throat> Great. Uh, that'll be my turn. I'll stick where I am. Cool, cool, cool. Sticking where you are. Then, Freyer, you're up. Alan, can I... Can I do a mental check to see like the potential differences between everybody that's present. Like the frayer that I see in front of me, you said has like buzz, but maybe that's like Aarakocra like buzz. So can I check to see the differences between everybody to see if I can start distinguishing? Sure, make a mental check then. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna use two hero points. Okay. Okay, so I got two successes. Two successes, and as you look around trying to understand this place, you feel kind of a, a jolting of energy and a little bit of a, a shimmering pull. Still your turn, though. What? What? Shimmering pull? You're in water! Oh. <laughs> okay. Owen, what, is, what the hell is happening? Oh my 
god. Okay. Um. And uh, okay. Was that like my action or background That's action? That's your to background do that action. Check? That was my background. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to attack this one. That one? I mean, sure, if if you want to. I mean, all honesty, I don't understand what's happening anymore. I mean, <laughs> your character is your own, my man. You go for it. Uh, can I do an action to do the same thing again? If you would like. Yeah, I think I'd rather spend time trying to figure this out more than five. All right, then you can go ahead and make a mental check. Okay. Uh, I will eat them. Sure, use my other hero point for this. Uh, one success. One success? Cool. Then you feel the pull again. Pull, pulling. <laughs> okay. But is that your turn? Uh, it, am I? So, like, prayer is experiencing what I'm seeing here, right? Maybe. Oh God, damn. Uh, Welcome uh, to the Nexus. Uh, guys, everything's flipping around. I can't even tell anymore. Um, and that'll be my turn. Okay, that'll be your turn. Then we will start. Mm -hmm. You know, one attack at Piper, one attack at Freya, one attack at Issa. That feels the most fair as they're going to be attacking in. So, at Piper... <laughs> That's a little wrong. This is the right one. Uh, that would be, what? Only eight damage Ouch. getting to you, Piper? Uh, eight damage will be taken on Stampa. Okay. Then, Issa, you don't have adaption, right? Uh, not right now, no. Oh, no. 16! Normal slashing to you, Issa. That's my armor block. Cool. And then Freyr. Uh, 12 damage to you, Freyr. Um, minus 2, so just 4 damage. Yeah, just 4 damage. Because normal. That's right. Okay. Stamina. Stamina got you then. Hmm. I think then next up gotta be two attacks at big man Alden. Because he's a big I'm man. Not, I'm not big. I'm actually very small. <laughs> oh, there's actually be an extra D6 there. It's alright. We can put it on next one. So 12 for the first. Attack mm. Alden. Cool. And then next one would be oh the first one would actually be sixteen, the second one would be twelve, but you know. Okay. Uh, the first one will go on an armor block. The second one will go on stamina. Cool, cool, cool. Um, then that's gonna be the turn of the entities. Alden. You're up now. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. Me no likey. Uh. Which way was the temple again? That way. Cool. Bye. <laughs> I'm sprinting this way. Do I get three detriment? Uh. You would. Yeah. Cool. Uh. <laughs> why did I go that far? I only went forty feet. Or sorry, yeah, right there. 
Okay, I got yeah, four good. feet of movement. I was like, <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um. Okay. Um. You know. Okay. First. Uh. Background action obscure. Mm hmm. So that I get my shield rating. Um. And then. Mm. I don't got a lot of mental. How far away approximately is the temple? <laughs> A while. Okay, and who had the instability core, or did those go away? Those went away. You used them to okay. get in. Okay. Um, then I'll... Mm. I'll take an attack at the magic. Okay. We'll see if that does it. Attack the magic. Cool. Actually, I lied. I can't do that if I have three detriment. Um, then is there? There's a dodge action type thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just do that. <laughs> cool. Then you, in your current state, will attempt to dodge. Cool. That's my turn. All right, Urk, you're up. Cool. Eyes lying to me. Okay. Uh What Urk is gonna do is he's gonna try and fly down to what he believes is Alden and talk to him. Okay. As you need to fly down. Uh, hello, you're you're Alden, right? Fly down and talk to me. I mean he can certainly try, yeah. Is that what you're doing? I'm trying. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, make a mental check. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and use a hero point on that. Okay. Two successes. Two successes, gotcha. Then as you fly down to Alden, your words are able to get through. I okay. hear. <laughs> or what who he thinks is Alden hears. Yep. What are you saying, Irk? I'm you're Alden, right? You are Alden. What I hear, right? That's what you hear. Uh, I'll say yes. Uh, okay. Are you Urk? I am. I am. Um, yeah, something weird is going on here. Um, Very. I. If I Urk turns around, that's not what I saw. I think we're all experiencing different forms of reality. Yes. But if we can manage to convince, talk to each other, convince each other to mental through this we might be able to converge onto the same point in reality and then okay maybe stand a chance or get out of here one of the two okay um and then i'm gonna go ahead and attempt to use my Background action on Alden. Okay. I'll call evens again. Evens on Alden. Sure, sure, sure. Evens. Fantastic. Alden, you get an extra success on your next roll. I believe it's your next paper diamonds roll. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then 
Do I still have my action, or was attempting to talk to Alden my action? I think the the talking was the action, yeah. Cool. Then that'll be my turn. Cool. Athena, you're up. Whoa. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, that's fun. Okay. Um, I don't understand. Um, where is the um, temple for me? Don't you know? It's, it's right down the path. Okay. Yeah, this is different. Well, we're going that way. Is adaptive 40 or 50 feet? Uh, 40. 40, okay. Aw, oh, token collide. Mm hmm. You're colliding. Forever? Why the fuck? I don't want to collide. I would like to stop. Seems like okay. you're being mirrored. Hmm. <laughs> it really is, yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess I just can't go anywhere. <laughs> Try moving backward. I don't want to move backward. Aw, oh, now you're on top of him. What the fuck? Alright, I'm using my background action to change my uh, armor to normal. Okay. Can I try to make sense of where my my friends are? I mean, who's to really say? You can make a mental check if you want. I, I would like to do that, yes. Okay. Um, is that something I can add my roleplay ability to or no? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So that is... Ooh, we'll do. I'm gonna reroll one. If that's okay. Mhm. Mm Go for it. Uh, two successes. Two successes. Yeah, very cool. Um, that case, then, as you try and look around and get your bearings a little bit better, you feel a pull and a shimmer in the air. So, oh. um, is all my movement gone now? No. You've barely moved. Weird. Alright. Well. I so saw. Stay there. Gotcha. So is that your turn? Yeah. Alright. In that case, then, it will be the living magic, and the living magic will attack into Issa. going to attempt to hit you with one of its strange portals for eight uh, magical slashing damage, Isa. Stamina. Stamina? Okay. Yeah. In that case, that will be its turn. Top of the cool round Piper, you're up. Right. Oh, that. I see. Where is the temple for me? <clears throat> you silly billies. Don't you know? It's to the right. There. Okay. Um. I think. I'll go ahead and start trying to head that. Mm. That could be a problem. I'll go ahead and I'm going to start heading that way. Um, and I think I'll see fire surrounded and I'm hmm. 
probably a background uh, action uh, fighting spirit that Alden I think is my ally and then I think I'll throw my chakram at the one I think is not my ally okay Another zero successes. Lovely. As you throw your chakram and it just goes wide, missing. Extremely fair. Do I get a hero point for that? You would. Okay. Um, that was action and background action. That'll be my turn, I think. Okay. Then Freyr, you're up. Okay, um, the, was the glowing light on, well, I see it for Urk, is that something I can still see? Like, is that something Freyr could see? Yeah, you're, you're looking at it right now. Okay. Um... Okay. First, I'll try to talk to who I think is Issa. Okay. Um. Um. Okay, I hope you're Issa. Um, everything's switching. Um, I'm, I, I think we need to just leave, head to the temple wherever that is, uh, but I think that light around Earth is... I'm gonna treat it like it's a beacon, honestly. And then I'll head over to the light. Cool. You jump? Is yeah, that... I'm just gonna... I'm... How far of a drop is it, though? Um, about... 20 feet if you're trying to make the jump. Okay. Oh my lord. Uh, um. Jesus. Uh. Um, <laughs> Earth, can you grab me? Uh, background action. <laughs> I don't know. Colin is evil. I, I'm uh, not evil. Okay, I'm going to try to, um, can I do, like, a mental check to focus in on that glow? It's the only thing that's been somewhat consistent. Sure. Okay. As you jump? I'm gonna stay up on this ledge. <laughs> gotcha, you're, you're on the ledge then. Yeah, just... Um, yeah. I don't want to jump yet. Uh, two successes. Two successes? Yeah, you know, that's fair as you focus on the ledge and try to bring yourself into some alignment. You find yourself on the ledge. <laughs> uh, uh, what the hell happened? <laughs> what? Is that your turn? Okay. I think it was very clear. You're on the ledge. You're on the ledge. Oh I don't. That's, that's my turn. That's my turn. It is. That that is your turn. Uh, now it's time for the turns of other cool people. And you know what? I think Issa's gonna get rolled up upon. And yeah, really want. What to... if I give myself a little kiss? I think uh... A little smoocha? Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll see. They're gonna take a <laughs> swing at you at detriment one. So hey, that's that works. That well, it might work. It might work in your favor. It all kind of depends on you know the environment, the changing of the seasons. There's a lot of factors that are involved for optimal play. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that that's would, a health block. 
That's a health block. It would be unless eight. it's like, eight. yeah, it's a health block. Yep. You, you don't have armor blocks. I just used it. Oh. Uh, Go ahead and roll two d six. Yeah. Mm, okay. What um what type of adaptive armor did you choose to get? The normal one. It's. It's one type. They, they, uh, there is, you can get light, normal, or heavy. I don't know, Colin just said it had one type. I don't know, I don't know what you're saying you to chose, me. You chose medium as default, because you did not choose when okay. you made it, but yeah. So, gotcha. It, it, I, so, that's just one armor block though, right? Yeah, it's only one armor block. You gain detriment one on, um your damage rolls as you feel yourself struck with a series of claws. Now, though, I mean, people got to be rolled up on. That's going to go there, and that's going to go there. Mm -hmm. I think next it's going to be Urk and Alden who are going to get the, the attacks. Please don't. Against Urk. It's going to be 12 damage. Reduced by, by two successes. Yep, so four damage. Take on stamina. And then next at Alden. For four. No damage because reduced. of the yep. Then, hmm. <clears throat> then we got to, you know, got to go after the, the people who aren't nice. Freyer and Piper, so... Attack at Freyer. For 24. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Jesus. Okay, uh, 24. Six, eight, eight, 18. Or do you, are you uh, reducing it by your resistance by, too? Yeah. So 12. Oh, oh. I was looking at the three, not the four. Uh, Twelve, I can take on stamina. Cool. And then attack um, at Piper. Four, eight. Uh, resistance, two. So I think Zero. nothing. Yep. Then you're good. And you know what? That, actually, there you're going to do a little bit more shift in, a little bit more move in, if you will, for Again, optimal positioning. Optimal <laughs> positioning is... It, it's truly what we love to see. And like that. And that will be their turns. Alden, it's your go. Okay. <sighs> um... All right. Can I <clears throat> shout? Well, oh, first off, background action obscure. Okay. Uh, and then can I shout to Freyer, or who I think is Freyer over here, trying to um, get his attention and see if it's actually him? Sure. Is that a mental check? Yeah. Okay, and uh, your ability doesn't apply to checks, does it, Irk? That's my um no, not to check saves okay. or damage rolls. Cool. And That's... you have detriment three on this, so. Oh well, then it fails. Yeah. So. But you got it out oh, well, of the way. Got rid of the de yeah, got it rid of the detriment three. Uh, yeah, that's that's. I'm mm, I'm going to stay here. You're going to. I... You're trying to stay put? Yes. Okay. Because I know Urk is right next to me. <laughs> I. Yeah, that is true. I... I think Urk is right next to me, but I'm pretty sure Urk is right next to me. Of course. Then that's your turn. So, Urk, it's your turn. Um, cool. I'm going to go ahead and. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, I'm going to see if I can't try and pull Freyer by shouting to him towards 
what I think I'm seeing versus as to going to what he th what I think he's seeing. Cool. Then make a mental check. Cool, cool. One success. One success, then you shout, and Freyr, you hear Urk shouting and turn around. You're purple now. I am purple now. <laughs> I, I was purple, purple before. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I see y'all. Mm -hmm. Got the rest. Okay. As a background action, I'm going to do the same a thing I did for Alden for Piper. Okay. I'll call evens again. Evens again. Very cool. Evens for Piper. It's even. Let's go. Yay. Thank for you, you. Piper. In whatever form you wish that to take. <clears throat> but yeah. I appreciate it. I'm also going to stay put. Cool, cool, cool. Is that your turn? Yep. Gotcha. Then, Issa, you're up. Oh, fucking God. Did I hear any of what was going on over here? Um, a little bit, yeah. All right. I'm going to start heading that way. Five. Uh, <laughs> Thirty. Uh, what what is falling in wonder again? Uh, it is five points of damage for every ten feet fallen. Points of damage for every eight fallen. Um, I'm gonna yell at them. I don't think I can fall that far, but if one of you can catch me, it would be better. Yes, I can hold my action to jump. Gotcha. If one of them. Holding your action to jump. Yeah. Then it will be the living magic's turn now. And, hmm, it's probably going to go ahead and take a shot at yeah, Alden again. It seems like a. Why? It's a good strategy. I don't know what. Leave me talking. alone. And do magic roll. <laughs> Still a miss though. It hasn't hit anything <laughs> as it sends a portal at you and goes wide. Top of the round though, Piper. How you doing? I can see Isa shouting to what looks like just an empty edge, right? Mm-hmm. Can I make a mental check to try to determine what the hell he's seeing? Sure, make a mental check. God damn it. Um, you know what? I got two hero points. I'll burn them both. Okay. Whoa. Hey, <laughs> Holy shit! Yay! <laughs> gotcha. Ooh, first of the night. <laughs> then, as you kind of focus in, you kind of blink a few times, and then you think you feel this kind of pull as you may or may not see what Issa's seeing. All right. That would be your background action. That is my background action. Okay. Um. Let's see. I would like to be with my friends. Um. Let's see. I can move there. Um. Oh, actually, I have 50. I can. 10 more feet like that. And then. I think I'll action dash to try to get up to my friends, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um... Oh, am I... 
physically not able to do that with my shadow guy? Mm-hmm. Well, that's unpleasant. Um... <coughs> yikes. I guess I'll move... Where can I get? I guess I'm stuck there for now, actually. That's a pickle. That's a pickle. Is that your turn? Cold action dash. Uh, yeah, that'll have to be my turn. Freyer, you're up. Okay. Oh, and uh, and um, I didn't want to like break the flow earlier. Um, for the um, for a medium hyper adaptive armor. It would be an additional two armor blocks and One. five stamina. One armor block, five stamina. What, um, from what I saw, hyper adaptive armor already comes with one armor block. And from what we discussed, it's additive. Oh, then yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it is so two. Yeah. It, it is, it is two um, okay. armor blocks and five stamina. All right. Uh, moving here. And then up here with my friends. And I'm going to use my action to do what Ark did for me. And just say, like, Isa, turn around. We're over here. All right, make a mental check. Uh, that is two successes. Cool. As uh -oh. Isa, you turn around and you can see Freyer yelling at you. Okay. Uh, and, um, uh, okay, uh, if we're all together, uh, is it time to just go? And I'll end my turn. Okay. There. Oh, yeah. Then it will be the turns of all the other entities as they have things to do. Because, you know... Can they, like, not do those things? I yeah, mean... Good. Perhaps, but, like, where's the fun in that? <laughs> they they just want to do fun things. And, you know what? I think doing fun things is indeed quite fun. So... We'll start off with... I mean, it's gotta be two attacks at Piper... I mean, that's just fun. So, first attack at good old Piper. 16 minus 8, so 8. Okay, um... And then 4 eight behind is that. is going to be on stamina. 4, so 12 altogether? Yep. Okay, stamina. Now some attacks into Urk. Woo. Yerk. For four. Stamina. And zero. Well, yeah. Just stamina then. And then one at Issa. That would actually be one less. Um, for no damage at Issa. No. And that would be their turns. Alden, you're up. Okay. We're gonna try. And he's gonna shout over to Piper. Piper, come on. We gotta go. Look over here. Okay, make a mental, <laughs> mental check. check. <laughs> Feel like a dog off the leash at the park. <laughs> um, I'm gonna use one hero point to reroll one of these. It's funny because huh. Catherine's dog is named Piper. Yes. Oh. <laughs> You've been hit um, by an actual real life experience. That's two successes. <laughs> As you begin to kind of clap and call the Piper, Piper, you turn around. We're all here. Right. <laughs> We're all experiencing. Uh, background action. Um, 
Okay. I believe we are all he here. So, do we risk the combat or do we try and run? I mean, do you think you can take these guys? No, no, I can try. All right, let's test something. Um, I'm going to shoot at the, the frayer next to Issa. Okay. And see what happens. Gotcha. And I get a friend because Issa's there? Yep. Cool. Oh, that's very good. Three successes at seven each, so 21. Yep. You watch as this strange frayer explodes into a cloud of red sparks and dust. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna shout out Sikkim and then it's my turn. <laughs> okay, then Urk, you're up. <laughs> well, I'm going to attack the fake Urk right below me, who's so mean and impersonating me. Cool, you have detriment one on the attack, but go for that it. That is true, but I also have two friends. That's true. One like that. How much Four. damage? Um, two damage! Woo! We'll take Yay. that on stamina as this Urk kind of dodges out of the way. And then... Praise Ateus! So true. <laughs> I'm going to so give, I'm gonna give uh, Alden... I'm going to do my background action on Alden again. Okay. Um, I'm calling evens. You're calling evens? Okay. We'll see then. We'll see. Ah, uh, unfortunate. No extra bonus for you. But we know we can kill them, so that'll be the end of my turn. Okay, Issa, you're up, and on a ledge. Oh, damn it. <laughs> I'm here. What status effect is on this thing? Uh, you gain benefit one against it. Okay, I'm Still? gonna mm -hmm. try and hit it uh, with my dagger. That's I have detriment one, and I have one friend, so it's just a straight roll. Yep. With whatever. Two successes for four damage. The living magic explodes in this burst of energy as you cut through it. And I can't, um, I can't offhand unless I had, like, another dagger, right? Correct. Okay. So. Move up here. Um, I'll give Piper my background action. Okay. Which is reroll two dice. Um, okay, which way are we going? I'll end my turn. All right, then... With that, Living Magic is gone, so Piper, top of the round, it's you. Great. I'll go ahead and um, I'll give my background action to Urk, and then I'll attack into the Nexus Urk. Gotcha. I got two buddies. Good old Nexus Urk. Um, just for funsies, I'm gonna reroll two of those. Of course, of course. Four successes, um, for three apiece, so that's, what, 12 damage? 12 damage? Then yeah, Nexus Urk is destroyed. Great. I'll settle up here um will I do that yeah whatever that's fine yeah that'll be my turn okay then Freyer you're up okay I'm gonna move up to here I'm gonna use my background action on Nexus Alden for benefit one okay and then attack with my glaive into Nexus Alden gotcha 
slash r. I got two friends, so 46 CF greater than 3. That's gonna be 8 damage. Yeah, he's fucking dead as you take off Nexus Alden's head. Ooh. Uh, oh, jeez. <laughs> I... Okay. And uh, that is the end of my turn. Okay. Then it will be the Nexus crew. They are going to run up and take an attack at Freyr and an attack at Urk. First against Freyr. For four damage against you, Freyr. Okay, uh, I'll take that on stamina. Then Urk. Four damage to you, Urk. And that will be their turns, Alden. What you doing, Alden? You're muted, Jonah. Uh, was it my benefit on Piper? I can't remember. In some way, it was a, your benefit okay. on Piper. In other ways, it was not your benefit on Piper. So, would it not, or <laughs> would it stack? <laughs> Only one way to find out. You know what? Doesn't matter. We're putting it on Issa, so benefit one on Issa. And then I'm taking a shot at Piper. Okay. Uh, and that's one, two, three friends. Bye bye, Piper. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four successes at seven each, 28. Yep, that Piper is destroyed. <laughs> and fun fact if you would have put the benefit on that too, it would have caused some instability and you would have just killed that one instantly. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's just a then... fun fact, though. At yeah. least I think it's fun. That's pretty fun. Uh -huh. I thank you, uh, Ryan. That's... <laughs> that's my turn. And uh, it's Urk's turn, as one lone Issa still <laughs> remains. Well, I'm going to attack her with my quarterstaff. Benefit one. I've got one friend, but I've got benefit one, so we'll see. Two successes for six damage. That's enough. How do you want to do this? Urk is going to look back at the real Issa. Sorry about this. And he's going to swing the quarter stuff like a baseball bat. Love The it. real Issa right goes... <laughs> Knocking it Sorry, straight off the kidding. edge. And with that, there's kind of a another warbling effect in the air as all of you begin to look around at each other combat over oh huh. that's interesting hello interesting. okay um my brain hurts can no, you just prayer is glowing <laughs> things are weird let's get moving to the temple I, maybe we should link arms or something no matter quite frankly if it'll Isa? make you feel better at the very least Isa, i would like to arm all right <laughs> gotcha. i don't think it would hurt us to all do that oh my god that's when we mm -hmm. look down and like our arms are physically connected like we don't have hands they're just oh one my arm god off. why did you say that it's fine let's just let's just get moving let's link arms and <laughs> keep moving <laughs> okay, so you keep moving towards the temple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then, as you begin to approach, you begin to see there is another kind of thicker layer of red energy around this temple. And as all of you get within 20 or 30 feet, Beyond this veil, you can feel tremors of magic. And there are sounds and cries interspersed with long periods of silence. Something may be going on within. Maybe it's yet to happen. Maybe it already has. Well, it's been an honor working with all of you. Yeah, you guys are great. And 
the one of us that isn't here anymore? I guess. I'll remember her. Yeah. Long enough. Right. I don't know. Right. Pretend the madness. Then, as you all push your way inside, mm -hmm. you witness a scape filled with the crackling of lightning and energy as you make your way down this path. And then the path ends as you are now standing in the ruins of what appears to be a bombed out temple of some sort. It's all empty except for a few things. The first would be the statues. They are made of what appears to be gold and stand about this place in various action poses. There are four in total, lifelike in their features and dimensions. Incredible craftsmanship for these solid gold statues. And at the heart of this temple, with her back turned to you as a woman, with this kind of short red jacket with black hair, short but yet kind of sticking out in all directions, looking away from you. And she is humming as she stands over this crackling red rift at the center of this temple, the nexus of the red spiral. What are you guys doing? Question about the statues. Do they seem like they're like a... Are they genuinely like crafted statues or do they seem like a Midas touch thing? Like maybe they were not always statues. They seem like it might be a Midas touch thing. Interesting. <clears throat> are they recognizable figures? To you, no. To any of us? No. Okay. Do any of us recognize the woman in the center? With her back turned, no. You don't necessarily. Issa looks to the group and Mime's talking with his hand. With kind of a questioning face. Mark is going to shrug and move sort of closer to try and inspect one of the statues. Gotcha. Are these statues kind of around her? Like... I, they're around the center in a way. Like, they're mm -hmm. most of them are looking towards the center. However, the okay. gif woman seems to be looking more towards the entrance. And uh, she is holding up fingers like she was attempting to cast a spell and the tattoos you see Issa all around her body are representative of different low magic glyphs for the controlling of power and energy Do, do we happen to still have any of Mama Law's food? No. Damn. Well, Urk is going to walk up to, I guess, one of the statues, probably uh, this guy's, and just take a look. Gotcha beautifully made statue very exact very precise pure gold mm -hmm. um 
None of us use low magic. Okay. We were told how many people tried to see what was going on in the red spiral through divining. Were we told how many people, like, physically went in it before us? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, has the woman appeared to have registered our presence, or does she seem fully unaware of us? Hard to say. You haven't really been too stealthy, but she's still humming away doing her work, whatever that is. Okay. Uh, yeah, Freya's just going to like look to the group and just nod their head over towards the lady and just be like, "We gotta. I think I think we just gotta go and take care of this." <laughs> Issa will unlink arms and kind of, I guess, circle out a little bit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, and then with, like, a nod towards the whole group for confirmation that, yeah, we're gonna engage now. Nod. Well, nod. Do we want, do we want to... Yeah, I would say yeah. talk. All right. Okay. Yeah, I was I was assuming engagement yeah. talk. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I was I was making sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's, um, he's pulling out uh, a gun. Uh, uh, <laughs> excuse me, ma'am. Oh, hello. And the thing turns oh. around. Oh my god. Oh. Hello there, darlings. Hello. Um, who are you? Oh, you silly thing. I am the most superior being in all of the cosmic stack. And she gives this wide smile at you that seems almost permanently plastered onto the face. <laughs> Do any of us know who it is now? You might, Issa. Mm. Wow. Um. It's nice to meet you, I suppose. You suppose? Oh no. It is the greatest moment of your life. Right, to, my, my apologies. To stand in the presence of perfection. Well, many of your lowly ilk never even get close to such a thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that you have finally made your way here. I was starting to wonder if this cycle you would not... So, you were expecting us? Oh, yes. Yes, just like the others. In the other dimensions. Hmm. Okay. How many groups have you dealt with so far? Oh, well, this would be twelve by my count. Thirteen, if you count them. And she smiles over at the player characters of the Severed Saint campaign. Mm. Gotcha. <clears throat> well, I don't suppose that... Um, well... This is all you're doing, I guess? Oh, in a way, yes. It is truly a marvel and a great success. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I was starting to get a little bit bored with the creation of dimensions filled with inferior creatures like yourselves. Uh, having to wait for all of you to catch up. It's a tad bit sad. But it seems like this will be the last. Right, uh, what... What happens after this? Well... I suppose... For you, you will receive the highest honor. Mm -hmm. The highest mm -hmm. honor according to... Tanter, or according to you? Oh! Or... Well... Canter doesn't matter. It never did. It's a land filled with inferiors. And while you are inferior, you are gifting yourself to my form. Uh... Well, perhaps I might spare one. I do need someone to take care of the angel egg. Uh, and uh, uh, what's the angel egg? Oh, I always forget about this part. And you watch as Yurith the Evolving Grin raises a talon and all of you feel a shock of information enter your minds. The Naylor Ramos lecture that has started the session of, you know, each session we've played in this mini campaign now gets beamed directly into all of your heads. Ooh, we have the information. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Okay. Do I know that guy? Do I recognize him at all? Naylor Ramos? Yeah. Um, he is a big deal in the academic magic community, so you would at least have heard mm. of him. Honestly, kind of cool that you got to sit in on a lecture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Issa looks a little giddy for a second. Um, okay. And your angel egg this time is... Oh, not this time. It has taken many attempts to get all of you to finally be perfect. But I suppose it is in your nature to be sad, incomplete, generally not worth existing but through the many trials we have finally created one angel egg to make it through and you can see Yurith slowly turns to you Freyr and the smile grows wider where is Butters? no no <laughs> and you realize oh. the horse who gained knowledge randomly without any connection to anything else just a spontaneous act of the universe your horse butters Freyr is the subject of an angel egg event what oh what Oh, poor Butters. Did you really teach that thing about capitalism? And mortgages? Teach? Oh no, I would not stoop to that level for such a insignificant animal. Whatever right. happened, that was simply by chance. However, okay. Butters is necessary to grow and 
finally do something worthy with its life. Uh, um, uh, where did we leave out all of our horses? Butter. We assumed we left them outside. <laughs> yep. Yeah, outside of this event. Okay. So, yeah. now that you made your angel egg, are you going to stop this uh, red spiral? Oh, maybe. I don't really care. Hmm. Well, since you don't care, um, may we stop it? Oh, well. Maybe in another time, but first, I will need you to take me to Butters. Mm. Mm. So, Colin, if I'm understanding this correctly, this single viral event that's crossed over 12, maybe 13 different dimensions is what resulted in the singular angel event that is Butters. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And if, yeah. uh, and I, I, I'm getting the impression if even if we worried to get rid of Butters, that just means she would keep this red spiral event going until, you know, eventually it destroyed everything. Likely. Okay. I, uh, do apologize for my stupidity and lowliness, but as an academic, I'm very interested in what you're saying. What do you plan for this angel egg? Oh, well, you wouldn't understand. You're just too stupid, Issa. You could never- Can't even try? Oh no, it would be like explaining physics to a flea. You have no chance in comprehending the machinations within my mind. I mean... Surely there must be other people that do, though? Oh, no. See, once again, you don't understand. I am the greatest of all beings in the cosmic stack. Only I can understand. Perhaps, with you being so great, I mean, surely you must be a wonderful teacher. Oh, only the best teacher, yes. Perhaps a good enough teacher to teach a flea physics? Ah. Uh, a challenge, yes. In that case, for you, Piper, I will speak with only the smallest and most comprehensible of words. The angel egg is greatly imbued with the powers of magic in this world. With it, I can find how to travel to the tree within paradise. I assume tree of paradise doesn't mean anything. Tree within paradise, but no. T tree within paradise, yeah. Oh, uh, I, I see. But now, we are delaying Freyr. And she begins to walk towards you, Freyr. Your animal. <laughs> Bring me to it. Um. Um. Okay, okay. Um. I. Um. Would. Think it. Um. Uh. Beneath you to have to walk all that way, I will 
go and bring butters to you. Are you being honest? Um, in a way. Make a spirit check. Uh, anyone got hero points? I don't have know one. If it's gonna matter, but I, buy, I yeah. don't think so. One success. You can see as Yerith cocks her head to the side. Oh, well, you are a spiteful one, but it is okay, Freyr. Your magic will be put to far better use with me. Here, and she will begin to walk ever closer and extend a taloned hand towards you. Oh no, I'm backing up. Uh, no, I, um... No? I'm... Did you just tell me no? Mm, I am your superior! I... Do you wish to look upon the bodies of the last individuals who thought that they could tell me no? No! I think what Freyr means is that he does not want to soil your excellence. You think uh, that I don't understand what he means? I comprehend it all. You mongrel. I... I apologize for the insult to your intelligence. I was going on what I, Yerith an interior, to understood. Freyr. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have Ooh. all that lecture in our mind, right? Correct. Would I know? Would we know exactly how much magic is need to be able, or energy we need to be poured into the red spiral to stop it? A lot more than you probably have right now. You would need to get help, likely. Like you are not mm -hmm. high enough level for this. Yeah, I think we have for that. It's two choices: either A bring these people back or somehow butters can help if they're so connected to magic or somehow but i think probably getting these people back is the key then 10 um, feet of you frayer okay oh, oh uh, uh, um, uh, 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 uh a challenge a challenge um for a being as perfect as yourself um surely Things must be so dull all the time for you. Um, so, uh, we and the four individuals who are stone statues at the moment. They're gold, they you imbecile. Do you need me to recount the chemical makeup of their bodies? Um, no, uh, but if you return those people uh back to their normal state um we can provide you with uh a most entertaining fight and if in your inevitable victory i will take you to butters as a final huzzah to your greatness and perfection truly well then i do always like it when you fight so i shall show you my perfection and you can see yurith waves her hand and slowly all the statues begin to turn back to their original forms as they slump down dead she already killed them Mm -hmm. and turn them into statues for her. Now, I suppose the fight begins, yes, as she kind of begins to 
move forward, her claws starting to vibrate with magic and energy, leaving behind trails of violet vapor in the air. What are you guys doing? Okay. Um. Are you fighting? Um. Okay. Okay. I'm. What are you doing, Burk? Burk is gonna offer up a prayer to Ateus and to the howling winds. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. She is within a foot of you now, Freyer. Okay. Um. Oh my god. She's gonna. Issa, go. And I'm going to try and defend myself. Try and defend yourself. Okay. Issa, what are you doing? I'm gonna try and leave and kill that fucking horse. Okay. Issa's leaving. Is anyone else going with Issa or staying to fight? Uh. Alden's booking it. <laughs> Alden's booking it with Issa? Piper? Yeah. I will book it after Alden. Alright, and. Urk? Urk will fly while he's praying. Flying away or to fight? <clears throat> oh. Away. Okay. In that case, then, we will be entering a skill challenge. And with this, you need to meet the number of successes, else Yurith will start picking people off. We will start with Freyr. What are you doing to try and defend your mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. as Yurith moves forward? I'm going to... I'm, uh, okay. Um... I am going to use God, magic is going to bite me in the ass, probably. But I guess it's worth a shot. I'm going to try and use my hydromancy to, I guess, push or block her way as much as possible as I back up after everybody else and run. Okay. In that case, this is going to be sacrificial because this is a titan vessel. But you mm -hmm. can make a mental or spirit roll at benefit two for this. Your choice. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do mental. Okay. And so that's um, uh, a benefit to CS greater than two. Mm hmm. Uh, that's three successes. Three successes. Then, as you reach out of hand, your hydromancy sending waves of magic rippling in all directions, mm. Yurith blinks behind you, teleporting, as you keep on sending a wall of water at her. And one talon just nicks you, and you turn to solid gold instantly. Okay. But... As this is happening, all of you are running, you hear the sounds of Freyr's magic go silent. Who's up next? I'll go next. I'm going to use uh, mental, if I can, to keep us on a path that makes sense and mm. keep moving. Mm. I'll link my arms with the people who aren't flying mm. cool. as we run. Then make That's a mental cool. check, yeah. Uh, can I use my roleplay ability as well? You can. Uh, so that's... I will re-roll one. So that's all I can do. Mm. Shit. Two. Then you are able to keep everyone mostly together, Issa, as you're charging <laughs> through this red spiral event. <laughs> However, the way does not make sense. Everything is warping even more. <laughs> and as you hear the cackling laugh of Yurith making her way behind you, 
you just feel like she's gaining. Who's next? Okay. Um. I would like to try something. Uh, could I make a physical check for trying to spot a path that will either hide us the most from her or impede her the most? Impede? Sure. Go ahead and make a physical check. Okay. I'm assuming hiding is not possible. She's the greatest being in all the cosmic stack. Yeah, okay. Yeah, bro. <laughs> He's Come on, so weren't you paying awesome. attention? Yeah, yeah, didn't you read her entry? Don't make me tap the sign. And this is, um, can I add my eagle eyes thing? Eagle eyes? Spotting? No. Well. Two uh, successes, I'll use a hero point to reroll the last one. Uh, three successes. Three? Okay. Then, as you make your way through trying to spot paths, you are able to do so, finding one with mm -hmm. a great number of obstacles and barriers mm -hmm. that you're hoping will impede Yurith. Could I make a physical check to act kind of more according to reflex, kind of keeping us all... Um, helping us all adapt to like the quickly warping paths um, so no one falls or gets separated or anything sure make that physical that check I would say this okay. is probably detriment one but you can still go for it okay Um, unless someone feels like contributing hero points, although it wouldn't have, do much, that is. I have one. Does anyone have any others? No. Other than Ryan, because Ryan needs to keep his for his. Okay. I got Nope. Okay. <clears throat> Alright then. As you try and leap and dodge and hold people together, you, at this moment, break through the red spiral as you're running through Cantor as chaos is everywhere. But Yurith is behind you as you watch as Cantor itself starts to just turn to mm. solid gold behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Urk, you're up as you're flying above as you can see the chaos. Mm. There's a wide open stretch you have to run through. Okay. I'm going to look to my friends. I'm going to look to Issa. Issa, Warren Laurel. And... <clears throat> can I fly at Yerith and use, try and use high magic to create a giant instability that will slow her down? Yeah, go for it. That could be mental or spirit up to you. Benefit too. Do mental. Then two... Three successes. Three successes. Then, as you dive bomb mm. Yurith, you send this wave of instability with the red spiral event that temporarily stuns her. Then you watch as she reaches out, and you feel her almost invade your mind for a second. As Urk, what are you trying to accomplish in those last moments? Urk is gonna feel those calling winds that he's heard and he's just going to try and release whatever that was, whatever power Ateus gave him, and try and end the red spiral. Gotcha. As you unleash the calling winds attempting to slow down Yurith, she reaches out with her power in turn and as her psionic abilities take hold, you hold her back until the rest of you who are running hear a pop as Urk, you fall as the mental overload was too much for your brain. Those who are still alive, though, mm. which would be this moment, Piper, Alden, and Issa. 
We need five successes now to get across the field. To make the many miles distance. Urk has bought you a lot of time here. And due to his sacrifice, he's given you an extra success. So you need four. For every fail, Yurith will get one of you. From here on out. So, who's up first? Um, we can't use a skill we've already used. Correct. Well, okay. Um, okay. So. Oh. If I wanted to use something like Freeze 2, would that be a mental roll? Yeah. Okay. Um. Can I just start throwing shit at her? <laughs> like, from my back? Are you wanting to get that close to her? And just start She's... throwing shit? I mean, more She's just... Yeah, I was thinking I don't... more putting stuff in her way. Oh, I don't... Rather than, like, fucking it at her. You're, you're running across fields now, so... Yeah, alright. I'm... <sighs> Can I use physical to, like force people forward and, like, keep pushing them from behind. Yep, make a physical check. Mm. As you That's it. attempt to force people forward, they're all going as fast as they can. And with this, as you're trying to like, get people forward, you look back trying to grab hold of Alden as Alden, you are taken out by a side swipe from Yurith as you go flying. It's only Issa and Piper left now. It just had me one of us gets Alden's turn. Well, now, Piper, you're up. Yeah, um... Fuck. I guess... Could I try mental just to kind of use any landmarks we can just to take the, the fastest route to Butters, where we remember leaving him? Sure. Make a mental check. Okay. One success. One success. Then you are able to to partially remember the route, but Yurith is now still gaining. Odds or evens, Caleb? Evens. With this, as you're running, you look back at Issa, and as you begin to enter kind of like this final stretch and straight away, Issa, you feel yourself getting nicked by a talon, a claw as Yurith has caught back up again, and Issa turns completely to gold. Am I... If I knew she was getting close, could I just fucking throw myself on her? Like, throw myself back into her? So maybe the weight of the gold would... I would allow that, sure. You could okay. make a physical check with a self-sacrifice at... I'll call it benefit three because Alden, I'm assuming as well, would have Is thrown that himself back into this. Greater than two or... Greater than one. Greater than one. For physical. Gotcha. Uh, two successes. Then as you sacrifice yourself... It's down to you now, Piper. 
You need one success. Great. Um, all I got left is spirit, so I guess... Can I try to keep myself together with a fucking titan chasing me? Powering oh. through the loss of literally all of your party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> One success. One success. Then at the moment mm -hmm. you break through outside of the the red spiral event as you can see butters and all the other horses out here. Kill butters, kill butters, I'm sorry, right, right, yeah, kill butters. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to fucking kill butters. <laughs> all right, as you are making your way towards butters, Yurith is behind you. Butters is just standing there looking at you. What are you using to kill butters? <laughs> sorry, butters, hold very still. Um, and fuck, I, I guess I'll try to, once I'm close enough, maybe throw my chakram, um, just trying to kind of slit any kind of major artery, or if I can get close enough to just slice, I'll do it that way, but that's all I have on me. Yeah, you throw it's, your yeah. weapon in the air, and as it tumbles end over end, a fish <laughs> hits butters. Just a large trout. As it slides down, as the horse kind of whinnies a bit. Shit. Fuck. Okay. 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 Um. Hey. Why'd you throw that fish? Or it was a weapon, but it's now a fish at a horse. You can see that there's a, just a guy standing maybe 15 feet away from you next to the horses. You see that he was like petting mead. Hi, um, kill that horse, please, please, please. Uh, oh, at, world at stake, please. At, at this point, you kind of look back and you can see Yurith has stopped in their tracks. <sighs> Fine, we'll meet later. And Yurith will disappear. What? You, I mean, um, I, I don't... Just, why? This horse is... They're, they're an angel egg, man. Why did she... Yeah, um, she wanted the horse probably bad to have her... Why did she stop because you were here? I don't know, I'm... There, that's a red spiral event, right? Yeah, um, who, who are you? I'm... I'm mysterious. I'm unknown. Snaps his fingers, the red spiral event stops. Huh? Oh, At uh, least the shimmer just like dies back down and collapses back into Cantor itself. Why did... Why are you able to do that? Please just don't say you're mysterious again. I mean, I don't know. I, I was going to go try a new fajita place. Want to come eat some fajitas? I even know what a fajita is. No. What's a fajita? I mean, it, it, it's pretty good. It, it's like food. Like it's got meat. And it's got uh, little tortillas. It's got like a bunch of stuff in there. Oh, okay, but, and um, uh, this should clear itself up, by the way. I mean... The dimensions, they're slowly correcting themselves. Um, you know, they'll they will fold back in on each other and, and stuff. So it should be good. Uh, my friends, can you bring them back? Uh, no, 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 I cannot. So that's just, that that's it for them? Yeah, that's kind of how death works a lot of the times. I mean, sorry for your loss. Um, it sucks. Massive understatement. 
All right, um, I'm gonna go get fajitas. Uh, can I take the horse? He pats butters. I fucking guess you have that handled. Um, can I come with you? I don't really want to be in the planes all by myself right now. Uh, I. It kind of ruins my mystique just a bit, you know? All right, yeah, I mean, I'm you've, sure had, a, you've had a hard day. Thank you. You'll like fajitas. All right, tally ho! The man will begin marching off into the distance, leading butters. Yes, I'm following him. Okay. Then, it is here where we will end the red spiral. Damn. Um, what? I feel like I, I have an inkling in my mind. In your mind. In my oh, mind. Kinda... Oh my god! My favorite guy! Oh, mm -hmm. that kind of stinks. Finally! <laughs>